good afternoon good morning good any time you are i want to say a very big welcome to you guys our fans our loved one the one that want to make a good impression on the planet Earth. that want to make sure that things goes well uh the only thing we could do is to do our bits and make sure the world is fit to be living by everybody not just one set of people but everybody in this world we want to make sure that the planet Earth is fit enough and uh for everyone uh that want to live there uh self-determination is what we call it and um, we want to make sure that everybody have the right to assistance everybody has a like a right to life and everybody will be make sure we will make sure that everybody is kept alive good afternoon this is heritage television is african politics and is as part of our week in review we brought our uh, this uh Topic today that says movement of the Al Almaji. We call it Exodus in one way. Exodus actually means movement of the people. I have some few people in the panel today, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, depending on where you're watching from on the planet of the hearts. Uh, so it's what determine how I say hello to you. Whether it's gonna be good morning, it's gonna be good afternoon, or it's gonna be good evening. But no matter what time you are, the good thing is that we can enjoy the program together because that's what we stand for. Good afternoon, once, once again. Today, I'm going to be showing you who and who are on my panel. One is still missing because we have a little bit of it. But there's nobody missing again. Wow. I was saying someone is missing. Uh, but nobody's missing again. Nobody is. Mm -hmm. All your functions and uh, for the uh, camera for the I'm try and take that, that one down. Reserved, is a and feedback from another system. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have the pleasure in introducing my group today to you, and I'm gonna start from my immediate. He looked right, look left. I don't know what to say. <laughs> The one on my immediate left, which is Frank Bello. I think that one happened because Frank is always a naughty one. Frank, good afternoon there. How are you doing here? Can you say what's our guest, please? Yes, um, I just want to welcome everybody into the show and all the panelists, those um, new faces that um, everyone will be meeting today on Heritage TV. I salute you all. I'm Jonathan Truly, your devil's advocate from Udu Republic. Thank you. Well, I didn't call you devil advocate. You call yourself what you want to be. Everybody <laughs> has is attached to whatever they want to call themselves. The next thing I want to introduce is Omonike, who is our guest from faraway land. I don't even know how to pronounce where she comes from, but she's going to have to say it by her own mouth. Yeah? Uh, welcome to the program, sis. Uh, I think I'm having some. Few. Okay, welcome to the program, sister. I'm going to try and reduce our bandwidth so that Thank she can much. hear me. Okay, you can hear me now. All right, welcome to the program. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. And the next one I want to introduce is my brother that was thinking is late, but for one reason or the other, is I call him Bionic Man. Uh, uh, you turn your okay, sister down your a sister little bit. Down not you, not your sir, not, not your sir, engineer. Not your, Mr. Badero is the Mr. one that I'm having one feedback one from the system. Uh, from. Uh, uh, you turn your system uh, down a little, little bit. And I'm going to try and reduce your bandwidth as well. I might probably be able to correct that one from here because I found out something in the last few days that says. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Okay. You still, okay. still giving feedback. Giving feedback. Let's, try Let's try and see. Let's try and see. That's the one. Okay. Okay. I think it's fighting it now. Okay. Hello, engineer for me. I can hear ah, you. Sure, sure. Okay, I'm going to go to engineer quickly because it might be better to go to engineer straight away. Engineer, at the bio, am I right? 
Yes, I'm all right. Yeah. Okay. Could you introduce yourself to our audience, please? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Adit Thomas, for Thanks. sending me the invitation today to share uh, my little knowledge and my experience that I know about the history of Yoruba land and then the way forward to return back to our future home, Odudua. My name is Engineer Adebayo Adamolekun. I'm originally from Ikere Ikiti, uh, in Old Ondo State. I still refer to myself as Old Ondo State, but today they say I'm now in Ikiti State. <laughs> so, okay. what a pleasure, no? Thank you so much. And I thank uh, Bra Frank Bello as well for all your work which you have been doing. And uh, my belief is that uh, we'll get to our definition because everything is set down on the right path. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you very much for that. I'm going to go back to my brother, but there's still some few issues to correct there. Uh, Mr. Badero, if you can hear me, you need to Hello. Thank you come you. and go back in again because your, your, your phone is frozen. Uh, could you please come out and go back in and I will come back to you in some few minutes after it's been adjusted. Okay, without much problem and uh, probating and saying what is not and thinking about what is not, we're going to go straight to the question of the day. Movement of the Almagiris, 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 whatever you call them, uh, movement of some few people from one side of the world to another side of the world. The one that makes us come onto this program today is the one that some people are moving from the northern part of Nigeria uh, to the eastern part of Nigeria. And the movement is not a problem. It's just the timing, because it's still Nigeria. You can move around your country anytime you like. Because as you all are aware, the country is actually in a interstate lockdown. You cannot move from one state to the other. But let's watch this video and see what it entails. Let's watch it. My people, I greet you. Is I don't know what is going on, but something is really going on. I don't know what is going on, but I tell you, something is really going on. Because yesterday, in the night, Governor Wike arrested people, full and headsmen, hiding inside a trailer with foodstuffs heading to River State. Now, this afternoon, at Jaku Junction, in our state. state. Plenty heads, man. A lot of them, I don't know their number, I don't want to put the wrong number, but you can see it on the video. There are a lot of them. Look at them in the top. We are hiding inside a 40 feet container. Hiding inside a 40 feet container. Can you tell me, what are these for? 500 men hiding inside a 40 feet container and heading to the south. What are these men hiding inside a 40 feet container and heading to the south? I beg every southerner, I beg every southerner, wherever you are, a dog state, Delta state, Gambia state, Eagle state, Rivers, Bayes, Elkwaiko, Coast River, wherever you are, be at a last. Like I said, I don't know what is going on, but something is definitely going on. It cannot be by mistake. It's not just last night that Gono Wike personally arrested people hiding inside the trailer. And this afternoon, in a state at the Jaku Junction in Aouchi, more than 500 Fulani headsmen are hiding inside a 40 feet container heading south. So that means that there is a coordinated effort to make sure that these people get themselves to the south, irrespective of the lockdown that the so-called government announced. So how can these people be heading the east when they know that there is a lockdown, when they know that there is a um, restriction of movement from point A to point B, and when there is corona pandemic, that the first law says stay where you are because this virus does not move it is transported by people 
the same way Ganduja is using uh, Alamajiri boys to be sharing Corona all over Nigeria. Now they are using Flanny heads, man. What are you doing in the South? So if you have that, what are you doing in the South? Everything they said, youth leader, community leader, be you whatever you are, stay at the Talat, something is happening, but I tell you, I don't know what that is. But if something is happening, yes, something okay, is happening. Okay, can you do it for me? Okay, uh, it's a little bit of a daunting tax because we watched that video there. We saw the video there, and uh, the problem is maybe they are up to 500. Maybe they are not up to 500. But well, let's look at some background information to what happened and uh, why I don't think our program is crying wolf. Uh, let's go to Frank Bello. And we start analyzing this bit by bit. First of all, there's a lockdown in the country, Frank. Yes, um, I'm going to start um, with the fraudulent um, NCDC, which alternatively I give a new name. Well, it's a new name. I'm giving them Nigeria Corona Development Company because NCDC, we call it corporation but probably yes i think corporation is, is the right yeah thank you very much uh, mr thomas now i have a problem here and the big problem that we have in our hand is that we're looking at the problems that's been created by the northern leaders for years for years right all the way from independence to the present state now again 2020 these northern leaders never thought in a million years that this problem will happen to the extent that their own people will be one of the main casualties of this corona virus last year we had the Ruga, we had Fulani headsmen promising to unleash mayhem, promising to grab all our lands in southern Nigeria, promising they will kill each and every one of us. We had a situation whereby spokesman to the supposed Muhammadu Buhari in Asorok said to landowners in southern nigeria to give up their land to ruga settlement or go underneath the land we have a situation in our hand that right now with covid 19 in 2020 are a consultative forum the acf that promised they will rule till thy kingdom come in nigeria and now incapacitated and they are doing nothing and they're now sending down all their alamanjuries that they fail to educate properly down south we have a situation now that the northern leaders are unable to control the spread of coronavirus and now we have that horrible situation that we are about to be infected and then our population and the crisis in coronavirus will increase drastically because the 15 Chinese medical doctors imported to the country by the Fulani Caliphate in the north, they've already infected those Alamangiris coming down south so that they can wipe us all out in both Biafra land and in Odudua Republic. This must stop. And I have said to you, I commend. The governor of our state, Wiki, who in the middle of the night will go on patrol to make sure that River State, are, all the borders leading to River State, is secured. Now, I'm going to hand over to you, Thomas, perhaps other members of the guests and our guests on in the studio will have a different view and a different angle to which I am seeing the current 
exodus, the mass movement of the Almanjiri that, well, I won't use that word on air because if, I'm, if I should use that word, you know the whole world will be in fire. Nigeria will be on fire. Over to you at the studios. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to go to Engineer Adebayo quickly on that issue there. Engineer Adebayo, enlighten us on what yes, you sir. know so far about this issue. Um, on the issue of uh, al Majiri, you know, what he called them, you know, from northern part of uh, Nigeria, no? You know, this is part of the reason. I think we lost your voice there. Uh, okay, I'm going to go back to the people, other people in the studio. Let's go to Sister Monica first and then come back to Engineer Debayo in a minute. Sister Monica, what do you think? Sister Monica, I think our system is. I think we're well. Yeah, we, we, we're having connection problems. Okay, this shouldn't be a problem. I think if you can hear me, Sister Monica and Engineer Debayo, will you please? Try and reboot your system, and then we will take it from there. But in the meantime, we're going to continue with what we started because we need to get rid of this discussion with this discussion and find out what is actually going on. Okay, the Chinese doctor. Let's talk about this one, uh, Frank. Yes. The the Chinese doctor, if you remember were invited in on the invitation of the Fulani government the of thing with the Almagiris is that um, they have always been we're, we're, people who move around yes we, we, we're having are we have are we picking I can up, picking hear up? You. yes I second. think you okay. want to move on okay yes. go ahead sis go ahead sis yeah the interruption I don't know okay Let's go to Engineer Debayo back, yeah, because I think she is fully back. Go ahead, Engineer Debayo. Yeah, yeah, I'm really sorry, sir. I think my system, you know, it kind of somebody is calling again, it just, I mean, yeah. just uh, block it. I'm really call sorry for during that time. Yeah. It will freeze yeah. it, uh, watch it for security reasons so that yeah. they don't infiltrate our system. That is why we yeah. put the control there so that you cannot have a call, other people listening okay. to your conversation and uh, all and right, mess about with what you're doing. So that is why yeah. we did it that way because you know when you log into a powerful system like this, we don't want yeah. anybody else to to, to in, infiltrate it and pass exactly, exactly. destructive things into our PC or our whatever. Let me go back yeah. to my sister quickly because I think she's fully back. I can see her moving there. Sister Monica, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, here yes, now, fully. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. Let's let's because yes. they said ladies first. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna go to her first. Yeah. I'm so sorry, engineer. Okay, <laughs> what do you know about this movement? Yeah, you are trying to say naturally people are allowed to move around. Yes. So what's different? What's up in them moving around? Yes, Why? but the thing with the Almagiris is they are comfortable in the north. That is where they have always... Um, because I schooled in the north, I remember there have been lots of riots and stuff. That is because of them. And the Almagiris, in recent years, the politicians have brought in people from Mali, from Niger, to come infiltrate the country and vote as a bona fide Nigerian citizen, even though they're not. But the matter is we have to look at it from the person. Death is a coming to north. Definitely is paying them to come south, to, to leave the north north with comfort zone to come to the south where they had mostly nobody because almagiris are like street urchins they're people who have a base and have often but most of them do not really have a base so they just go from street to street as long as they can eat they're okay so if they're moving all the way from kano to lake then there is a problem for the people of the south and should be more what is going to happen. We need to be very, very aware. 
Okay, my sister's voice is breaking rapidly. Uh, I'm going to try and fix that one as well. You know, my uh, some people call me Bob the Builder, so I tend to know how to fix things quite quite well. So, but that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, engineer of Panuga, if you can hear me, please send hi to me on WhatsApp. I'm going to try and bring you in as soon as possible. Engineer of Panuga, if you can hear me. Uh, if you're on the show, send a message to me. Adam, 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 Adam I, I know, I know, I know that one. There's Engineer of Panuga online as well. So I'm going okay. to go to Engineer Adebayo as well, quickly. Engineer Adebayo, what do you know about this Almagiris? Yeah, just uh, sorry for the interruption. I mean, what I really know about that one is just... Uh, is the same problem we'll be complaining and talking about since all these years. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, that's great, that's great. Sound very good, yeah. And uh, it's because of the system that the nation is practicing. That is why there is no time we talk about one problem or the other. We have to go back to our foundation. It's because of the 40, the, 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 the uh, our, foundation is faulty that is why all these problems happening and in any nation or any sphere of life if you want to solve a problem you don't solve a problem from at the top for instance based on my experience as an engineer there is what we call root cause analysis if you had a problem there may be several causes but there will be a main cause it's just like um, relating it to a tree who has a tap root and has a vibrous root. You understand? Sometimes you might be looking at the tentacles, the, vib uh, the fibrous root, and think that's the cause of the problem. Meanwhile, the main problem actually is the tap root. All the issue that Al Majiri, they are moving from the north or even during the time of hedgemen and things like that, is because of the uh, uh, devilish foundation that we have, which is the 1999 Nigerian constitution. This is the reason why all this is not happening. But notwithstanding, even though the foundation is faulty, and that's one of the reasons why we are here, why we are hosting programs like this, that we need to return back to where we are coming from. Because in life, according to Yoruba language, I will say it in Yoruba, then in English, for sake of those those are watching all those sound Yoruba language, I put it in English language. If a young child fell down, maybe there's an obstacle along the way, that child looks forward. But if an adult falls down, he looks at it, what makes him to fall down? What is the causes of that? And that is the reason why we are here today. But I will fast forward to the issue of al Majiri. It's very simple. I expect the Southern governor like I was listening to one of the panelists yesterday, was talking about the decision that Governor Wiki of River State took, that he himself was involved. I expect every Southern governor to take the same initiatives, barricade their border, ensure that these people cannot come in and retreat into your state. No, you know, sometimes we, uh, when I did do more research on the issue and the causes of a problem in Nigeria, Area. I normally blame the Hausa, I blame the Fulani, I blame several other people. But when, when I started to look at inside, like Yoruba will say, Tikwile Bakpani to Deole, but meaning if the enemy within does not, not kill you, the one side cannot kill you. So we look at yeah. the inside, of course, we Yoruba people or the south and from south, south, and southeast and southwest, they know that if they come in, then they will be able to infiltrate us and do whatever they like. These people, they have a long-term plan on what they want to do. So gradually, they are sending those kids, those children, putting them in lorries and coming. This is the reason why you, we, the, I expect every Western governors and Southern governor to barricade mm -hmm. their border. Because sometimes we used to say, oh, the, 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 the capital is in Abuja, the federal capital, the president should do something. The state governor has a power as well. You are the chief commander, the security officer, number one of your state. I remember when uh, 
when Buari was saying, Wike does not have to act like that. Wike told him, I am the governor of River State, even though you are the president of Nigeria. There is a level of authority and power that a state governor has, and he can demand, de demand it any time. So I expect our state governor to act fast. There is nothing anybody in Abuja can do. And if any of your state from your state is not ready to cooperate, then you take care of such a person. So over to you in the studio. Thanks so much, sir. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, you have to fight for your state yourself. You have to protect your house. Uh, it doesn't matter whether the police are coming or the police are not coming. If your house is not secure, the thief can come in there anytime and boggle you. Uh -huh. What happened to the Chinese doctor that was in, that were imported to Nigeria? Let's hear from Frank Bello because someone was telling me today in a phone conversation from Nigeria that all the Chinese doctors are actually in the north. And the Chinese sent some equipment to Nigeria. They find out the equipment were infected. So why will the doctors that came to Nigeria not be infected? Frank Bello. Yes, you remember when the Chinese, the 15 Chinese doctors arrived in Nigeria on the invitation of the Fulani government of Nigeria. They arrived with all their infected um, gadgets in the same plane, in the cargo section of the plane. And you will equally recollect that the Nigerian Medical Association objected vehemently to those Chinese doctors coming to help us in Nigeria. In, in fact, despite the fact that Nigeria did not have, as at that time, had, as at that time, uh, enough medical experts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, we analyzed uh, the total number of doctors in that country that will manage this crisis as 22,000 in all. So now, 15 medical doctors arrived in Nigeria and none of them are in the south, but they've been transported directly to the north. Now, could this be one of the reasons why people are dying in their thousands and the Nigeria Corona Development Corporation is not even recording those deaths in Kano, uh, despite the fact that these people in Kano uh, who died are horridly buried. Now, the burial that took place in Kano, what about all the mass mass grave that's been dug up and people were just being dumped uh, in Kano? What is the root cause of this? Alamangiris. Could this be that all those medical doctors from China, they've infected all these Alamangiris in the north, knowing fully well that the Alamangiri children, they don't have parents, they don't have Fathers, mothers, they roam the streets. Uh, none of their leaders are particularly after them. They use all these Alamangiris when election is just round the corner. They use all these Alamangiris when election is there and the Alamangiris now keep printing thumbs so that they can win the election. They use the Alamangiris because the full Nigerians that they've got the population. They use the Alamangiris because they import Alamangiris from the Nigerian Republic, from, from Libya, from Mali to Nigeria to combat and to rig elections in Nigeria. Uh, well, I won't be surprised. Most of those Alamangiris that are being transported to the South are they necessarily those Alamangiris that, are, that were born and bred in northern Nigeria? Or are we looking at Alamangiris that were imported in to the country by Mahadu. well supposed Muhammadu Buhari and the Fulani government of Nigeria that are ready to kill we southerners in both the eastern region and the western region. I'll hand it back to you in the studio. Uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you for coming back so quickly. Hopefully, I'm going to have that screen that is currently black out. I'm going to have it uh, with the right image in a minute. Let me go back to my sister. Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I have to. Uh, the last time I went to the man first, the reason I went to the man is because I can see some smoke in, in our audio. So I know, yes, I've been corrected online because we run a system here that 
we don't do things by ourselves. We run a democratic system here that the people in the studio, as the people online, ask the right to demand what they want. And uh, they've been very effective about telling us exactly what they're looking for. And we're following this. Uh, because this, if we're going to organize, uh, arrange the country and we want it to be democratic, we have to start from our own house. You can't say you want Nigeria later on or Dua or be friendly nation to be organized, democratic, and you're still doing authoritative system of, of thing. So I'm sorry for telling the gentleman to go first, but I can see some smoking out. Let's go back to you, Sister Omnike. Uh, you live in the not in the past, and you've seen so many things. You witnessed so many atrocities. Uh, because you speak out there, and you can tell the difference between Yoruba or Yor and Yoruba Eko. And the same thing, you can tell the difference between uh, Awusa of the jail and uh, Awusa of Nigeria because there are a few elements of difference there. Let's say Ma, because she can actually analyze things. You know, instead of me trying to put some words into her mouth. Right. Okay. The truth of the matter is because Nigeria is not they, um, but it's not only Nigeria's house. Uh, there are the northern part of, of Ghana, also. Um, most of all around us are north. So that means when they speak, it is totally different from the way Nigerians speak, also, which is the detonation, things like that, are a bit different. But apart from that, I found that the, the our Marjorie situation. Nigeria. The reason their kind of seems I I feel is worse with the COVID nineteen is that the first thing is they're not educated. The fact that they're not educated means the way somebody who is to take take the fact that okay COVID nineteen is around and it is real is different from somebody who's not educated who doesn't have a clue what's happening. Look at all the, that um. But, um, I think it was a funeral of one of the um, certain, um, one of the uh, rulers in, I think it's kind of the round that there were so many people. There was no social distancing. There was absolutely nothing. It just showed that they didn't, it, 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 they didn't really have the world. But the truth of the matter is, in England, where social distancing, you don't want to be too close to somebody. If somebody sneezes, you move away because you know it is real. But it's as if they don't even have a clue. I seem to be dying. It seems that Kano is going to be. Uh, and I that most people, do, um, the Kano people, do not want their state to be one that has a most number of COVID nineteen. But there is. will kill those apart from Mano because they have a clue what is happening and them wanting to move to Lagos is another thing entirely which is somebody's paying them to move to Lagos and I remember in the north there was a time where I was in hospital and this must be over 40 years ago when I was in sec I was in school I was in sec and I remember there was a riot and what was the cause of the riot? It was because um, uh, the hosp um, the people who normally refused, and then there was a lot of commotion. And the thing with the Amadjir is because they have a base, that means they, in, a, in a few hours, they tell each other and people get their hundreds, in their thousands, easily. So it makes it difficult for people who want to, who are able to even do anything for them. To even not the kind of people you can help because the only thing they need is food. As long as they have food, they're not really they work. They don't want to do anything else. And that's the reason why our president can be saying that, oh, the youth are, don't want to do anything. The youth in the South, a lot of them are going to school. They work and all sorts of things to make their lives better. There are marjories in the north, all 
they want to do, as long as they can feed. And a lot of rich people feed them every day from their houses. They cook a loads of food and they give them every day for them to be working. They will be able to eat anyway. And we don't want these kind of people coming to this and destabilizing what the plans of the South. I really appreciate your contribution there. Because sometimes if you don't know the history of things, you, you don't actually know how to deal with it. Uh, my brother actually said earlier on that when a child falls, they, they said they look at the front. When an adult falls, they look at the back. I'm going to introduce someone else to you. Uh, should I say introduce her or should I her actually introduce herself? Sister, welcome to the show. Can you tell us the name and where are you from? Thank you very much. My name is Omoye. I'm, I'm from Nigeria, but I'm based in Poland. I'm talking to you right from Poland. And um, research, I'm a sociologist. So that's all about me. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry about the dates, uh, um, joining of this program because I actually was having some tech issues. So I have to join at this time. Thank you much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, did you say you're, you're doing sociology? Yes, sociology. Wow. Yes. wow. Yesterday we have someone who's sociology and they were killing us with this kind of smile you're giving us today. I hope it's not <laughs> going to happen again today. You're not going to be killing us and <laughs> with this smile of yours. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't know you're why I'm having a little bit of problem with bandwidth today, but I'm trying to fix it. So, guys, please bear with me. We will be there no matter what happens. This program is going to go on scape. Nothing will happen to it. Even if I have to leave the screen and, and let Frank Bello take over the whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, you, what do you know about this Almagri problem in Nigeria? And what is likely the cause of this? Star Omoy Yeni. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Okay. Um, you know about you're right. I mean, as as um, so Monica said, um, this is, uh, I think from, from, from the aspect that I can understand very well, it's a social issue, it's um, a cultural and um, it's an issue that uh, we cannot erase or we cannot you know, erode at this time. For us to understand this issue, you need to understand the atmosphere, the environment in which these people come from. These are mads, they are northern people, and um, they understand that they live as they are. They are not people that you expect them to um, live for acquiring any wealth or any um, or any material things. They live as they were, as they are. They live um, the way they were. They are even as being poor. They believe that uh, um, they have to be taken care of by somebody else, which is part of their cultural and um, I wouldn't say really religious, but I would just try to say a part of cultural issues and dimensions to which people should understand that uh, whatever you push them is where they will go. And um, taking into consideration the situation at hand with uh, COVID-19 in place, they don't understand the whole situation. I, I, I wouldn't say this is that the only people who do not understand. Even down south, we see um, some people, uh, even not even wearing masks, all still do not believe that it is real because they believe that uh, some part of the government or some part of the society is just um, making up some figures to 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 siphon money or to get uh, government funds uh, with the situation. And um, recently, in a video that I saw, um, I saw that uh, people were. There was this meaning of uh, on Chab Bridge, and, and um, people were wearing a mask without even wearing a mask. So coming back to the manjeries, and I mean this, this is that um, you can barely understand their own perception. You can barely understand where they're coming from and what their needs are. Whatever you tell them to do, is they will just do. They in groups, even if they don't know what is happening. So if one person is doing it, they all move in mass. They all do it the way the person wants them to do it. So, um, like other previous um, uh, commentators have already mentioned, that um, they, they don't get it. I wouldn't say they are not really uh, educated, or they are just following the bandwagon, just 
following because they can listen to news they can hear the radio with the short waves uh the, they can hear bbc they can have a wide radio they can even listen to what we are saying right now you never can tell but the thing is they do not accept that um whichever disease will come or it will take them anywhere so far one person has you know integrated them and told them that this is what you need to do and then they will follow suit so this is what I would like us to understand, first of all, that the cultural perspe uh, perspective of this society, of these people, where they come from, would not allow certain things to manifest. For example, if you tell someone who, who doesn't believe in taking medicines, you will never take medicine. If you, if you, if you don't believe in uh, preventive medications or preventive health care, there is no way you can subscribe to it. So these are behavioral issues that we need to understand that People from that society um, only listen to um, whoever is being in control of their lives, whoever is giving them money or food, and they can only just, you know, follow suit. Some of them don't even know what they are doing. But at the same time, religious leaders, uh, community leaders in that society have a huge role to play that uh, they should um, help in re reorientating them and, you know, you know, educating them more about the whole situation and that um, that's the best way to cope this pandemic. I mean, this is my own opinion. This is my own view about this whole situation. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's a clean, clear view because if someone does not know the hell from the tail, that is when they will tell you to go and kill yourself and you go and kill yourself. If you know your head from the tail, nobody can tell you to go and kill yourself. You tell the person, are you not? You go and die first. Someone sent me a message that they said Femi Additional is flagging this program. Femi Additional can, I don't think he has time to flag this kind of program. He can have time to get people to do that, do it. People might do it on his behalf, but they can flag it from now till tomorrow. We're not terrorists. We're a proper organization. We're not individual. We're a company. This is a company. This is a registered company. We're not only registered with, uh, with the government. We register with Facebook. We register with uh, with uh, Ofcom, so nobody can flag this program. They can try and flag it; it doesn't matter. We're not causing trouble. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're not abusing people. And if even if there's freedom of expression, as we're not terrorists, we're not threatening anybody. We're not using some foul language, so it doesn't matter. They can do anything. They can flag it from now till next year. It doesn't matter. We are going to hear our view, and I'm gonna go to. My brother who's giving me a bit of smile there because sometimes smile means the person has got something tangible oh, to say. Let's go for it. Go for uh, it. Mm -hmm. Engineer Adebayo. Thank you so much. And thank you for my sister from Poland. Hope you are doing great. My wife is from your neighboring country, Ukraine, there. Oh, wow. So they are very close. <laughs> That's actually very nice. Uh, thank you, Sir, Mr. Ade Thomas. No? Yeah. You see, just like the uh, uh, the statement I make at the beginning of this program. You know, sometimes, like my sister just said, the last uh, panel speaker, she said uh, some of our religious leaders thinking we can change people's mindset, we can change their way of life. This is one of the reasons we are craving for us to go back to our home. You see, I'm privileged to know I'm not such a hood person like that. I'm in my late 40s anyway, but I was able to witness some certain things when I was growing up. I know people who are in our political sphere, in I mean Yoruba and Western Nigeria then, Awolowo, Adekunle Ajashi, uh, Bola Ige, uh, Latif Jakonde, and many, many other people like that. Uh, my father, was attending the same school with uh, the former governor of Ondo State then, which is today Kitina Ondo State, uh, Chief Adekunle Ajashin. And there's one thing, my dad, you know, when they go for their meeting in Owo, you know, that AG meeting we later, as action group, later become UPN, they, they go to Owo. Sometimes my father will come very late in the night. And then maybe in the morning, especially when it's weekend, he will share something with us. My dad will tell us, oh, this uh, Fulani, these Hausa people, they don't have know anything. But I was a little boy. I was around probably 12, 13 years old then. I would be telling my dad. I said, why? He said, oh, just go and give them a kara. When you give them a kara, that's Yoruba 
you know, native dress. He said, that is all. They don't know anything. But as, and that's something I said to my dad then, you know, being from a background, he, he was a teacher. So it's a very, very disappearing parent, you know, with my mom as well. So he said, just leave them. They don't know what they are doing. Then I said to my dad, I said, one day, these people, they will get sense. He said, no, they don't want to go to school. They don't want to do anything. Then, as of that time, really, I don't too much know much about other parts. Even to be very sincere, if I may have time to explain about myself, uh, grew up in Ikiti, in uh, Ikere Ikiti, attended primary school, all my teachers were Yoruba, attended secondary school, all my teachers were Yoruba, I never stepped into southeast of Nigeria before. I never been to northwest or northeast before. So all my life, I'm within the circumference of Yoruba land. And one thing my dad used to tell us is they don't want to go to school. They don't want to go to school, which is to someone like us from the west, to the Yoruba, for me, that is very strange because in Yoruba land, you know, they will be, there is a song we sing in primary school. I was speaking, I was singing the Yoruba. I don't know, maybe the English speaker, I don't know. I don't know. You say, Batare Adun Koko Ka Tiuba Ka Wire. Your well. If you read your book, your show will yeah. stand well. Yeah. Batare Adun Koko Ka. That's one of the reasons why education is very vital. So what we are seeing today is not new. It has not changed. And it will never change. If all those who call themselves our leaders today, you know, we are Yoruba people, we are West blessed, we respect leaders, we honor our fathers, we don't disrespect them, we don't abuse them, we don't use abusive language because we know our culture. We have our own religion before Christianity and Islam came. And I'm, I'm privileged to work in it. So these people, this is their nature. And if we look at the... Uh, the, if you look at the Nigerian constitution that they dish out to us, was written by them. Most people, if you ask some Yoruba today who are within the age of 25 to 30, they don't know anything about our culture. They don't know even our way of life. Some of them are condemning our world, condemning our great leaders before, who stood and make things work for us. But today, what are we doing? We are thinking we're going to change them. There is nobody can change them. It's a fact. Even though I'm a leader in the church, as a Christian, but let me tell you one thing, we need to return back to our home first and start afresh. That is one of the reasons we are having this point. And as long as we don't, yes, how you want to change them? How do you want to change them? Do you know when I was growing up, if my dad tells me you do something wrong at home or my mom, I will talk, I will go and tell your teacher in the school, you'll be begging your parents because you know what your teacher will do. But the people in the north, they don't care. They are not going anywhere. I left Nigeria since 1993, went to Germany. From Germany, I was there probably four years, go to Ukraine. I lived in former Soviet for 10 good years. I moved down to Ireland. I'm 17 years plus here now. I've only one time since that 1993 come across one Northerner. And where did I meet him? He was working at Nigeria Embassy as a diplomatic officer in Ukraine, Kiev. But you meet Igbo person, you meet Yoruba person, you meet a job person, you will meet South South everybody, but you never see a Northerner. Is that not telling us something? So the constitution gave them the privilege what they are doing. Because let me let me let me bring this. I have the privilege to meet to meet a man who built Singapore. You know, there are some of our leaders who will tell you that uh, oh, we cannot we cannot separate. Let me tell you one thing. Lin Kuan Yi was the one who used his own hand to sign an agreement that is going to amalgamate with Malaysia. But it didn't last more than two, three years when there was problem. There was religious rioting. There was a lot of problem. So what did he do? It was that same person who said, okay, enough is enough. We have to go our own way. So nothing is difficult. So some of our leaders who still believe that, oh, we can change them. You cannot change them. We are different. Like my background, how can I say I'm from Nigeria? I can't speak Igbo language. I can't speak Ijo language. I can't speak Hausa language. I can't speak uh, Fulani language. And they say I'm in the same country. I'm not in the same country. 
I don't, I can't eat their food. I don't know anything about them. They don't know anything about me. How are we one? We are not different. And I'm privileged okay, to be living in Ireland today. It, I'm going to take it off you. I'm sorry for that. I didn't stay. Thank you so much, sir. Before we start. Thank you so much. Are you telling sorry, me you sir. can't eat Usiu? I've never <laughs> ate before. Ah. <sighs> Brother, and I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't mean I hate evil people, I will never hate any no, human being. No, 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 so this just is, look at my history. Me, me, and and you face, me and you, we're gonna enter no. the same trouser with this one. If okay, you finish the this, program sir. today, if you don't go yeah. to the shop and buy you say, and eat it, let me see. No, we don't even, we don't even have an island, we don't have an island. Lagos State, Lagos State, Tamanque Nieko, that was my London. It doesn't mean I'm primitive. Yeah. Everything is in Yoruba <laughs> land. That was my London. I will carry my portmanteau, which uh, English people or European call as traveling back. My mom will pack. I want to go and visit my uncle. That was my London. And that is where Lagos was, not the Lagos of today. I know my route, and we have to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. But still, I'm still going to advise you if you have not eaten. Maybe you should send me your address. I have to post one to you in, in Ireland. All right. I'm, I'm open. I'm fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the good thing about it, if you eat it once, you will always want to eat it. Maybe you will start importing yeah. it from Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you very much, Engineer mm -hmm. and Dubai. Much Thank you so much, sir. Your, Thank you so much, sir. Very good explanation. You see, this is the problem with our land today. Our land has been taken over by the, the people that doesn't even know us, that we don't even know. And the problem there is that they are not only our problem. Some of these problems we have today are our own make. We make the problem, we manufacture the problem by ourselves, and we have to try and deal with it ourselves. Guys, online, thank you for joining. If you have not shared the program, you need to share it. We need to educate people. We need to let people know exactly what is going wrong when things is going wrong. Share. This is our own weapon. This is the only way we can tell our own people to open their eyes and do what is right and follow what is right and be on the right side of the law. You cannot break the law or do evil things and think one day we will not catch up with you. Can I tell you one thing? Guys, online, you need to share this program. This is how it started in Rwanda. Because they didn't educate people enough that is why it get out of hand. Even if it's only 100 people in that cow transportation car uh, vehicle, why would they put human being in a vehicle? It's even against the law. It's not even right. These people that put this almanjiri in that vehicle, this is why you have some people, you would tell some people to go and commit uh, suicide bomber and they will go because you don't have anything to live for if you have something to live for nobody will tell you to go and kill somebody or kill yourself and you will listen to that person you don't want to do that you don't want to go to jail I'm sure all these people here today they don't want to go to jail what for why will I go to jail for any reason why will I go and commit a crime it's not right it's not good it's not humane and I've seen some motorcycles in Lagos State before they were banned. That the police will stop them. They go inside underneath the seat. They find AK-47 there. And when they were banned, most of these motorcycles were put back in a truck. Went back up north. We need to be careful. We need to open our eyes. We need to open our, our system. We need to do the right thing. And I've been crying wolf about this. I've been making noise about it for some time. Some people are listening and some people don't want to know. Some people will hug you blindly. Some people will hug you rightly. And some people don't even know what they're talking about and they still want to argue with you. I want to thank you guys for coming today. It's been lovely having you because we are actually educating some few people. Guys, thank you for driving that figure up. Uh, I think the figure has started going up now. We just need to drive it up more. I've only seen 51 shares. Maybe I need to refresh my system to make sure I get the right figure because I'm going to start naming names who are washing and who are not sharing. Because when you have when you keep getting water from a bucket from a from a big pot 
and you're not replenishing it. Some people are doing it. Soon, the water will run out. So everybody has to put water into the bucket. Uh, and then it means every time you go there, we st yeah, we still get 72 shares and we're 133. Who are the people online watching this program for free and they're not sharing? You need to move your bomb bomb and let's get it done. Guys, thank you again. Let's go to my sister, Omonike. I hope your audio will be good now because I'm getting a little bit frustrated with that audio. Uh, sister Monique, <coughs> what do you think we can do? You hear Abusa? You must have heard them planning some few things in the past. How did they fold their plans? How did they nullify their plan? How did they get them to drop the stupidity and follow the right way? Not everybody wants to die. I don't think all Amanjiri are bad. I don't think all of them... You just need to educate them. And some of this program are actually educate them. The only problem is that they won't even speak English. Uh, Yoruba people will say they didn't understand, come, let me kill you. They don't understand that. But that's not what we're talking about. How can we educate these people? What is the best way, Sister Monica? Like what I just said, the chance of changing people are very slim. The reason I'm saying that is I went to school in the north. I went to federal government college. And I remembered that um, time I was in school there was a quota system at the time that meant that um only so many people from undo states from undo states only people from or young many people from different states what the school was in kano it meant that Kano had a, a quarter the cattle but the, the truth of the is most of the times they couldn't feel the because because there weren't enough people who wanted to come to so it meant that people from who Muslim names would change their state to a northern state that they would be able to enter coming to school. So a lot of, I remember a lot of people in the north, but a lot of the, the filter for the north wasn't being filled at all. So it wasn't because they didn't they didn't want them to go. Go to school. They were begging them to come to school. The quarters weren't being filled. But uh, Southerners, there was too much people who wanted to go to school. I'm not really sure there is not much we can change anyone because looking at their lifestyle means that you're giving me food. If you ask me to jump, I will say how high. Which is a to other parts of Nigeria. Somebody has paid them to come to the South because they have an agenda. And just like people who do the uh, side bombing. So I've spoken to them enough for them to think, okay, it's the thing. When I, when I can sell, I'm able to get so many virgins. Well, that's not true. But because we th they think that that is the way, if they follow anything, as long as you're feeding them. It's okay, uh, let's look at the perspective of somebody who went to school, who is being made, I don't know, 50,000 Naira. And then somebody comes and says, oh, okay, I'll give you 100,000, go and kill somebody. There is a chance that the person, no, I don't want to go and kill somebody because you know that if they catch you, you're going to go to jail. You look at repercussions that come from doing ever is wrong. But in this, it, it is totally different. Nigeria has had that problem for so many years. I was talking about two years ago when I was in school and the Amajiri problem had always been. I remember a few years last year when um, the Emir of Kano, Sanusi, was telling the people of that, if you don't, if you don't, educate your children there will be a problem to you and he was trying to do was to make sure the norms are educated well that's part of the reason they removed him is because he wasn't saying what they wanted to hear they don't want spending loads of money educating 
people who really do not want to be educated. You have places in the south where people who are in their thirties are ready to go to school, even learn something. In the north, there's not much chance of that because they have lived that way for so many years. So the, the chance of them changing now are so slim. It is just as I said, it, it, is it possible for, for you to be somebody who has been doing something for 50 years? Just like the English people say, it is very, very to teach an old, old new tricks. The situation of that situation of the Almagiris. It is difficult to, even though, like my sister said before, they would hear the radio. They would hear about social distancing. They would see the TV. But an emir died and they were in droves that went to that place. There was absolutely no, it was just, it was worse than um, the, um, the chief Abakari. of staff that died. Yes, uh, uh, um, that guy. Because his burial, well, there weren't too many people, but there was still no social distancing. Even though I'm sure a lot of the people who went there were educated. But you can imagine uh, in Kano dying. I saw the video. There were thousands squished together. So I can't even imagine. Okay, I'm going to take it off her quickly because our audio is doing what it likes to do most. Uh, Frank Bello. Yes. Can we do? Is there anything, or is it too late to do anything? Are they all over our land? Are these people going to come and change to what I call ends men later on? Yeah, you will, you will recollect, um, uh, Mr. Moderator, that um, engineer Adebayo Ademoleku said the enemies of Ududua Republic is within Yoruba land. And we already know those enemies. I don't have to go into the into those. I don't have to repeat their names. We know them. And let me assure you, we will ruthlessly deal with those enemies. I will assure you. Now, the problem that we have to look at very, very closely, because Mr. Kintemi, I mean, Nikki Akintemi did note it that they've got radio. They listen to their radio. Yes, they have the radio. They listen to the radio. But what we have to establish, these Almanjiris that are being transported down south, are they the original Almanjiris that were born in the north? or the Almanjiris that the APC imported into the country from Niger, from Mali, from Libya, to help them in that 2019 fraudulent election that brought them back to power. Now, let's look at it a bit deeper. Have we got a situation whereby those Almanjiris that were packed in a 40-foot trailer loaded with cows to Lagos, who paid for the transportation of those Almanjiris that were put together with the cows in the 40-foot truck? Somebody must have paid the truck driver to get those Almanjiris down south. We have to establish, can this be a hidden agenda by their governors in the north? Knowing fully well that, oh, they are not our problems. We brought these Almanjiris from Niger Republic and from the rest of uh, uh, Fulani, 
uh, countries to come take hold, take control of their God-given country. Somebody must have paid because the truck drivers will not suddenly wake up to say, oh, let me transport free of charge. This alamangeries, not one, not two. We're talking about hundreds of them loaded together in a cow down south. Who is that person? Could this be a collusion between some of their governors in the north? Have they met secretly that we are not aware of their secret meeting in the north? To decide amongst themselves that, oh, all these Almanjiris that we imported during the election, we don't want them anymore. There could be problems to us. Let's get them south. The truck driver is not going to do it for free. We have to investigate. We have to look very, very seriously into that. Now, Mr. Kitemi said, quota system in our educational system and we if you if you if you probably check back from my live stream yesterday on facebook i played a tape between an oba in okayla in ocean state who built a school a secondary school and who's taking that responsibility to educate his own children in his own kingdom and was not really waiting for any Ruga or Fulani government to come in and destroy his own territory, his own kingdom with a very small, tiny resources, feeding the children. The parents of those children, they don't pay anything. It was that institution, the college, fully funded by good people. And we've got the same situation in the same Ruga country, the Fulani country, that many people think, oh, I'm a proud Nigeria. Mm. Continue to deceive yourself. They've spent over 500 billion naira to feed. 710 pupils, Alamanjiri children, in the last year. But we've got somebody in Okela, just one man. The uniform, the school bag, everything donated free, up to the children's shoes. Their ties, their socks, they look smart. Look, that goes. A long way to prove that we are not one we can never be one and we don't want to be one because southern nigeria is totally different from the north it's, we're totally different we've got different culture we've get we've got different religion we don't speak the same language now let's look at it holistically now we're still going back into education. The same leaders, some of those governors, all those Fulani governors in Arewa Republic, their children, their families, their wives, they are all living in Banana Island here in the South. But the same Northerners claimed to tell the whole world that Alamanjiri is part and parcel of their culture. But in 2020, as they've used them, now this year, because COVID-19 is now having to expose them, to which they claim they've got the population, and they're now having to export all their Alamanjiris to the north, to the south. So they've kept their own children in a cozy, posh, and expensive banana island. And the Alamanjiris that they claimed was part and parcel of their culture. 
Why can't they look after them now? Why on earth are those vagabonds up in the north who marooned themselves as politicians now pushing Alamanjiris down to us in the south? I think the time to break Nigeria up is now. And it is time that every southern leaders must now act. Every southern leaders from both the east and the west must have to emulate Governor Wiki in River State. Any leader who does not emulate Wiki in River State, we will pen that leader down in the southwest and by the special grace of God, when we realize our Odudua Republic, when it comes to light through our able leader, Professor Banji Akitoye, we will deal with them. Over to you at the studio. Uh, Frank Bello, I really appreciate that. Quickly, I'm going to bring somebody in. I have about three people I'm going to bring in from online. Uh, one of them is... Uh, I probably won't say their name anyway. They, can, they have their own mouth. Why should I help them? In, I've been saying my own thing. They're not helping me to say my thing. So why should I help them to say their name? Okay. The first person I want to bring in is this gentleman who I have here now. He, he speaks Ausa. So I'm going to let him speak Ausa. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hold, on, hold on one second. Uh, callers, all other callers, this is not the time to call. I'm, I'm only inviting people in for now to 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 speak. Uh, when the time comes to call, I will announce it and I'll put the details online. Uh, go ahead, young man. I want you to tell me who, uh, who you are, uh, your connection with the Northern Nigeria, and go. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, this is um, Tajudin Adigan. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a Yoruba man, core. But very unfortunate to be born in Kano. But thank God I found myself and I found my way uh, and, you know, back to where I should be. But one thing I want to remind each and every one of us here today is that um, Almajiri system, because we just see Almajiri, we only seen those children coming to the, north, uh, to the south and we start to talk about it now. They have been coming for a very long time, gentlemen and ladies. It is only because now that we Yoruba is beginning to wake up. I will tell you one. The moment you talk about al it is highly, deeply rooted. Go and check the meaning of al -Majiri. It came from their religion. Yeah? And the moment you say you want to stop it, it's like you want to stop Islam in their world and they will never ever ever agree to that from number one i agree with mr uh, uh, the engineer there i mean pardon me your name but i totally agree better. with you it is no way we can change these people one i want you to understand that we also have this Almajiri in nigeria in yoruba land from time all this um mc Loma, all these nuri boys that you see in this aguru the boys eh? They have taken over for a very long time. You don't know who they are. That is why you see many boys in Nigeria, all of them. Do you think more, most of them are Yorubas? They are full of knees, houses. But they, they were brought up in Lagos. That's why you see all these Agboro boys. But you don't see, you only call them Agboro. But who do you think they are? They are, but these are the Yoruba Amajirates running around. They are ready to die. They are ready to be used by the politicians. They are ready because the one in the north, what they use in, um, uh, in, in, in getting them into that system is that, oh, if you die now, uh, seven virgin is there waiting for you in heaven. So they don't even think they will regret anything when they ask them to go and bomb anywhere. So for us to be seeing them, because all those ones you're seeing in the, in, 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 in the truck coming, they are not even the threat to us. But the one that we have already got in Yoruba land, that we seeing as a Yoruba, they are not Yorubas. Many of them are Fulanese. Many of them are houses. They drop them in there. 
And for us to actually get them out now, we have a lot of work in our hand. Gentlemen and ladies, Almajiri has already in our Yoruba land, but we call him them a real Yoruba name, but you will not know that their blood appear outside Fulani. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, young man. I have another lady I'm going to bring in very soon. Uh, the reason I want to do it that way is for us some few people to actually educate us on what is happening and how is it going so that we know exactly what we're doing. I hope you guys can hear me well. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Ah, okay. Kama is real. Uh, thank you for adopting. Uh, Professor Banja Kintoye, that one said. Rhoda Wilson, wow. I'm so honored to have you. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you guys, you're doing a good work. Thank you for supporting us because that employee was well spoke, well spoke, sir. Thank you, well said. Thank you, Mr. Frank Bello. The time for a break up is now. Uh, you, you see, we you might want a big break up but you have to have more reasons more people have to believe why there must be a breakup this is why we need to make this one go even further further the further it goes the better it is the further it goes the better it is i don't know why the internet is buffering but it's buffering and it's buffering badly but that is not a problem because it's just wasting the time it has to work by force by fire the the grace of our ancestor would be upon all the machines and everybody listening and uh Amen. jesus christ is our sensor <laughs> if you want to know <laughs> and uh muhammad is our ancestor if you want to know so uh i'm trying to finalize the next audience but before the next audience i'm going to try and uh bring from below let me speak to this gentleman who's calling Uncle, I will let you know when the times to call has come. What happened is that I have some few people lined up already that I need to call so that they can get involved with this program. It's only because we have only got four points to connect uh, online. Uh, maybe as time goes on, when we have some few more funding, we will get more points so that we can have more people because I know a lot of people want to get involved with this program. But we can only do that when we have the facilities but don't worry bit by bit the facilities will surely come who should i go to who wants to talk let me see your hands up who wants to speak next I'm not if, hand you, hand if you put your hands up i will give it to you okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. No, no, we're not going to do this first. She actually put her hands up first. So she, let's 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 hear from you, Auntie. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Thank you very much, um, Frank Bello. I would just like to um, maybe give a clue or like um, an answer to your question or to the rhetoric when you said, who, who paid the driver of the truck to bring them in? And just as the last caller mentioned that um, these people have already been here, uh, that's not, it's not a lie. It's actually true because um, uh, about Late last year, when the Okada riders uh, were banned in Lagos, we saw um, over 100 of these Okada riders in a truck meant for cows, the same way as you have these Abuman where, you know, were stopped by the police and by the customs that they were actually, you know, trying to come into Lagos in mass. So they've been here and you cannot answer the questions who paid the driver of this truck. And it's just like, we relating it to um, global migration issues when you have people dying uh, at the Mediterranean Sea and ask who owns the boats, who owns the ship, who owns the, the transport system that brings these people here. These are traffickers. I mean, if you want to understand this properly, you should also see it from the perspective that somebody is on the ground and um, we can never find the person who is going to, who did this or who, who um who is in charge or who has paid the driver if you ask the driver you may say i don't even know the people on the on the on the on the truck i don't know them or i'll just told to just drive and that is the answer you can get from this such kind of person and um also having said that as uh, the other person has also mentioned that um, almanjiris have been in yoruba land i remember as a child 
uh, we have these people from Niger. They were fair-looking Arab um, children who would come and start to sing um, Auntie Maramab, give us some money and all that. And then they, you know, the government at that time, you know, sent them back to the north. And those who remained were told to sell sweets, to go to school, to start to do something or have a trade or try to empower them to do something. But, you know, having um, this uh, belief that this is the way they are and this is how they would live, it had to change. I accept that, that it had to change. But we should also understand that um, coming down to the south, maybe um, somebody told them that was a, um, there's a way we can educate you better or there is a way to uh, find solution to some of the problems. Nobody's going to take care of you in the north or probably these are people already infected with coronavirus and uh, we still do not have answers to that. And I also support the fact that our leaders in Yoruba land need to act fast. We really need to do something fast in, in, in the south, in the southwest, because and also nowadays um, it's hard to tell who is the true Yoruba leader, because um, these are people who have politicized everything uh, at the expense of the true value, the true essence of what we what we should cherish nowadays. And everybody's all for himself, empowering themselves, amassing wealth for themselves and their families. And um, let me use the word mekunu. They wouldn't take care of the needs of the common man, Mekunu, the people who are uh, the, the people who are suffering at the grassroots level, and if you also find in, in in the in the southern part also, we still have people who are suffering and who can even sell their soul to do all sorts of things. As the previous caller mentioned, that um, you have the Agbaros there and they are being used for political um, political issues, political toggery, and all during elections, and you can't hide those things. You can't. Um, deny the fact that uh, these people are in existence and these people are ready is just when the time comes you will see where each and every one of us belongs to if those people would actually fight for the cause of yoruba land or fight for who paid them so we need to understand um from this perspective also um this is just the comment that i would like to, to give thank you very much for that contribution you know what I'm gonna do because engineer Adebayo is gonna leave us very soon. I want to, I want to shake him. I want to shake him like that. Get everything off his pocket before he goes. <laughs> I want to get every breath, every words out of him before oh. he finally disappear into thin air because he has so much. He knows so much, and I don't want him to forget anything. So the only way we could do that is actually maybe we we open his his mouth wide and put a vacuum cleaner <laughs> in there, or a microphone in there. So it speaks volume, uh -huh. it speaks everything within it. Engineer Adebayo, I'm going to give you some few seconds. Say everything you want to tell us and I will let you go because it's my honor having you today. And I'm glad and I hope Thank when you so next much. time you're coming, we, we, we call you, you will be here. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And... Um, Thank you for what my sister had just said and the other sister from Poland as well. We are all on track. Um, one thing I want our viewers to realize is, um, like I'm living in Ireland today, uh, there is a culture that is peculiar or in similarity with the Irish culture, and that is Yoruba culture. I've lived in this country 17 good years. And if you look at the uh, history of the human race, the only race that defeated the British, meaning nations that British colonized, the only nation that defeated the English people is only the Irish people. And I've studied their history, how they managed to do it. And I was fortunate enough to meet uh, an Irishman who worked closely, the man is in his late 90s now, with Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And by the way, to all our Yoruba viewers and our panelists, Today marks the 33 year that Chief of Afemi Awolo passed on to glory. Remember, he passed on on May 9th. What a great man. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, my brother. Okay. Today is the, yeah, I won't finish. I'm just, okay, uh, today is the, yeah, because he passed on on, on the, on, on the 8th, 19, uh, May 1987. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I have the privilege to meet the founder. I will show on the screen. Have we all said that? 
that is the founder, the first premier minister of Singapore, Lin Kuan Yi. My library is full with a lot of his books. This very particular man used to come down to Yoruba land and take advice from Chief Obafemi Awolowo. So if the person that was taking advice from Chief Obafemi Awolowo was able to build Singapore, Republic of Singapore, a nation that their land, nothing you can grow in it. Their land was so bad, even up to, as I'm talking now, they import 98% of their food from the rest of the world. But this man will come down to Yoruba land and get advice on how to build a nation. Why? Because he saw something in Chief of Afemi Awolowo. Am I with you? Hello? You're here with us. You're, we can ah, hear you. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if such a man, and let me tell, let me state this. I don't think any Western country today can compete with Singapore. But this was a man who will go down to Yoruba, I mean to Ikene, and seek advice get lectures from him and go back to Singapore and put them into use. There is something when he was talking, he said Shifa Wolowo made this statement and that uh, he's in one of his quotes, but he normally refers to Shifa Wolowo that he was the one that gave him. He said that a constitution should always be custom made. He said it's like you want to design a suit to fit a man. You have to do the measurement. So a constitution of a nation must fit the culture of the people, must fit the value system of the people, must fit their way of life, their belief system. So every constitution of any nation is always custom built. But that's not what we have today. Why? Because we have people who have misplaced priority. Rather than telling people, oh, the houses are the cause of the problem, let me give another example. There was a, a, a German missionary. Her name is Hannah Martins Hendera. He wrote a book, 17 years in the Yoruba country. Anybody can search for it and buy it online. When you read that book, you will know how our governing systems, our executive, our legislature, everything. He said, I've never seen a nation. He's talking of Yoruba country who is well organized administratively even though some of our young Yoruba today, they don't know some of those things. So those who are uh, still campaigning that, oh, they want one Nigeria, it can never happen. It's just a time wasting. And I'm very grateful to God. I want to, you know, when you come to such a, a program like this, you should be able to tell people the truth. Yoruba programs say, if two brothers enter the same room and talk to each other, Maybe they have some misunderstanding. If they come out and they are smelling and they are smiling, they haven't tell each other the truth. You, the day I decided and I make up my mind, I'm a spiritual person. I prayed about it and I know what the Lord said. He said, I am not a globalist. I am a nationalist. Then he goes for that. He said, the landmark of nations must not be shifted. So the landmark of Yoruba nation must not be shifted. We are a different people from the rest of Nigeria, from the rest of the world. We are unique people. If the Irish cannot live with the British, how do you expect me to live with other people? This is not about hatred. This is just reality. There is no point beating about the bush. It's like you put uh, a football at the center of a field and then you are kicking it around, kicking it around. That's what they have been doing since 1960 today, wasting time. And I want to give hope to all Yoruba people to know this. God has said we are going out of that country. And if you, if you want me to prove to you or give you an indication, it's so simple. You remember uh, Akintola, the area on Okakanfo, was chosen politically. How did it end? MK Wabiola was chosen as the on Okakanfo. How did it end? But the day Ghani Adams, was chosen it was according to prescribed order it was chosen spiritually 
And always remember, before Christianity came, even though I'm a leader in the church, before Islam came, we have a belief system. There is something that we believed before our colonial master comes. So things have not changed. Now that we are doing things spiritually, and, and for you to know we are on the track, we have a Yoruba leader in the person of Professor Bangi Akintoye. So our compass is going in the right direction. There is no time wasting and saying, oh, whether it will work, whether it will not work. We forget about it. Spiritually, the job is done. And in the, in the physical, it's going to happen. Nothing can stop it. All what we need to do is let us focus. And we don't need to come to such maybe whatever opportunity each and every one of us has. Maybe you go to any of the social media or television station and be telling people, I'm a person who always believed when God has spoken to me. I believe it and always, always remember those of us who are originally from old Ondo State, when we say we are with you, you can put it in the bank. Believe it. You can put it. We are ready to go at any length, whatever it will cost. We don't bow down until we get to our destination. So we are going back to where we belong. And then let me make a reference. Those, there are still some Yorubas who still believe, oh, Nigerian can be good. Let me tell you one thing. I sat for NDA exam just to bootstrap to support the point my sister on the right hand, hand said. I sat for NDA exam three good times in former Ondo State. The cutoff for any applicant from Ondo State is 350. The first time I got 285, I didn't get admission. The second time I got 350, then I was able to get to the medical stage. Then I couldn't continue further. So I was cut off. Then the third time I got another 350. That time I was able to pass through the medical stage, then up to the final stage. The final interview stage is about seven stages. They said, you go and bring a letter. And then let me say this. Any of the non-town state, their cutoff is 100 mark over 400. But because I am from all those states, Yoruba land, my cutoff was 350. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Then they say, okay, you go back to your state and get a major general. I couldn't find a single major general from all those states. So when you get a major general from your state, they have to give you a letter of recommendation that we know Mr. Adebayo Adamaleku from so so and so so address the career equity. This is how his parents are. I know him and I'm recommending him. So that letter will now enable me to go to the final stage of interview. So how are you going to convince me? Even though I'm a mechanical engineer today, I wanted to go to a uh, Nigerian Air Force in Saria and study piloting. They said no because I'm from Ondo. They say no way. Then I now apply the following year to NDA. You understand what I mean? So there's no point beating about the booth telling people we are one Nigeria. We can never be one Nigeria. Let me tell you one thing. I have lived in Ireland 17 years. You understand? Irish cannot live in the same country with British. If that works out, then how do you expect me? And then let me give you another example. Thank God I have a sister who lives in the north. My own senior brother, he lives in London. Bora Thomas, I mean, Mr. Ade Thomas, I will give you his address. I will give you his phone number. Or Bora Frank. He, was, he studied refrigeration and air conditioning in Yidani. He was doing very well in the Badon. Then he now told my dad, he said, oh, I want to go to Kano. Oh, he's, I have a lot of jobs. My dad's okay, no problem. But you know, you don't understand that language. Oh, my brother said, don't worry, don't worry, that will be fine. My brother moved to, he packed all his back and everything and moved down to Kano State. When he got get to Kano State, he was phoning me. I mean, he was phoning my, at that time, we are, anyone who is from uh, old Yoruba, uh, Western region, those phones that they will put key. So when phone is ringing, you need to call my dad and open the key and then before you can phone call. And I take call, he said, oh, can I talk to my dad? And I talk to my dad. He was now explaining. He told my dad, he said, that if you don't speak their language, then not only that, he said he rented a shop because he had money, rented a shop, get fridge and all those things, uh, uh, air condition that he can be repairing. Do you know what they said to him? They said because he is from a Christian family and he's a Yoruba man, nobody will bring fridge or air condition to repair, to repair in his shop. My brother has to change his name to Ahmed. He's living in London. He speaks outside very well. I will give you his phone number. Then you can confirm. He didn't stay many years. He has to change his name to Ahmed. Then he has to study that language. If not so, nobody will bring any free to repair in his shop. Is that one Nigeria? Somebody is shouting. You see some young Yoruba who did not know our history. They will be telling us, oh, why Nigeria can be good. Then let me talk to the religious leader. 
they might be hearing me or if you have one of their family those who will tell us oh you know christian we need to preach to everybody yes i came from anybody's knowing in Kerekiti. that is the only town in yoruba land where two of us wear crown in yoruba land you can confirm it my grandfather that is my mom's dad is an olukere of Kerekiti. i knew how the rich are being done i know how the festival has been done i'm involved fully before i become christian so you cannot deceive me so when they are telling you, telling us that, they, oh, you know how the churches, or maybe she had the and someone, we respect our elders. They should not worry about that. Everybody will be in their place when the time comes. There is no any problem about that. You understand? We were not Christian at the beginning, and we were not Muslim at the beginning. You understand? We had an only, and God was happy. You know, I tell people, why did God don't bomb me in America? Why did God don't create me and bomb me in Japan? He put me in Yoruba land. It's for a purpose. And with Yoruba right. language. Right. You understand? Right. So he didn't make a mistake. Today, I'm here working for the European, using my brain for them, doing everything when I can easily go back to Yoruba land and do something great and define my country. We are, we are talented people. We are great people. And then let me tell our uh, Biafran brothers and the South South or whatever everybody called those from Middle Bay, there is nobody that cannot develop. Don't let anybody fool you. The most important thing in life is human resources. You take yes. a diligent study. I've researched about Singapore. The same template of Singapore is what Rwanda president is using in Rwanda. The same template. Go and study those two countries. They had nothing, but they developed their human capital. I have one of the questions I will post to our Yoruba leader when it comes. That what is our governors doing? That we are here in diaspora. They cannot bring us home to develop Yoruba land. Anyway, we are on track. Don't, don't, don't say, oh, whether it's possible. Forget about it. You cannot change our majority. You cannot change whatever about them. They know what they are doing. They don't like education. When I was going to school in Ikere Ekiti, old own those state, you understand me? Awolowa does not come with entourage. Chief Adekuni uh, Ajashi, he doesn't come with security. He will check our hand like this. He will come to my father's house. Look at the yes. way the, the, the talks, they call themselves politicians. Right. Is that the way? And each, each town and local government, they have a clinic. You understand what I mean? No? Registered nurse. Then in Nado Ekiti, then you have a general hospital. So doctor comes once to those clinics if there is a very peculiar case. And then they transfer you to the general hospital. Is that the way it is? Water is running 24 hours. We will take bucket. We call it pain in Yoruba language. We will go and draw water. But, but pipe bomb water even today they'll be telling us oh you are yoruba you are very poor you are dead and then to those who are telling yoruba we are coward let me give a note of warning those who think yoruba are what are coward we are not let me say this a man who has power does not brag and a man who knows how to use power is always quiet and when yoruba mm. want to fight a war of seven years or of seven days sorry he will take seven years to prepare. So when we keep quiet, there are some people who will tell us, oh, Professor Ban, yeah, they tell you, he told us he won regional government. Don't worry. Go and read away Yoruba. Tobacco <laughs> away Yoruba. Then you know our way of life. You understand? You don't know us. I don't want my Igbo brothers to be angry. Let me tell you one thing. My own immediate junior brother, you can go to your Facebook now and type it. His name is Peter. Olushola Adam Aleku is a pastor in deeper life in Lagos. His wife is Rosemary. He's an evil person. I don't have a rap against Bo. But we spoke as a family. And I told her, when we get Yoruba nation, your husband will apply for a working permit and a residential permit for you in living in Lagos. That's nothing wrong yes. about that. <laughs> and yes. if my brother yes. wants to go with his wife to the Afra nation, then his wife has to what apply for working permit and resident permit for him i live in ukraine 10 years my wife is ukrainian my wife has to apply for a working permit for me and a resident permit so all those bullshit people say and say oh we've married long time what has married got to do with building a nation what has it got to do it got out nothing to do with it that is just a that just put it that secondary put that apart let's go to basic let us go to basic my own senior brother is an architect is in benin let me say this to people when he's, he finished, he's an architect, his first degree. He did his master's with what? With a, a scholarship. And when he finished, he was given 504 saloon car. In the same Yoruba land. 
How do we find ourselves in this position that we are running to even, we are even running to China? We say we are bringing China when Yoruba has one of the best doctors. During former Soviet Union, 80% of Yoruba who are medical doctors, they study in my wife's country, Ukraine. One of the best doctors in the world. We are now rotting to China, Chinese people, and bring them. What a shame. And bring fake. We should all come together. And one thing is, people should no longer preach hatred. I want to talk to young Yoruba. I want to make a point, sir, before I go. You see, there are generations of Yorubas who cause their father. They call themselves, oh, they are sophisticated Yorubas. They live in abroad. And there are those who don't bless their mother. There are also a generation who think they are so pure in their own heart. But they are not looking at the fitness that is within them. They condemn Awolowo. They condemn Ajashi. They condemn all these things. Let me tell you one thing. Lee Kuan Yu used to make remark. He said, I prefer an old shoe than a new, a new shoe. You know why? He said, I can stretch it. It is authentic. We have to go back to our root. It okay, is very, very brother, important. No, go a back. very big thing. No, uh, moderator, no going back. We are getting Odudua. Nothing will stop it. God has said it. It will happen. If you don't believe it, save this video. You will see it. It will come to pass. Don't worry about that. We have the machineries. There are Yorubas who are producing the best software in US. Yes. We have them all over the place. Don't worry about that. We are not saying we are going to become, oh, Japan in one day. Don't worry. But we start from the ground. Then we build. Just let me give you something. You look at the map, the geographical location of Singapore. Wow. And then look at the geographical location of Yoruba land. It is 100% the same. Wow. So I'm giving you a clue to tell you where we are going. We are not stupid people. Thank you so much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you know from Belo and my sister from Poland and the other sister. Thank you so much, so much. We are going home. We are going to build our land. We are unstoppable. Thank you so much. Yeah. You, you know what I will say about this man? Don't go yet, sir. I'm going to say Escalabata to you. You know what that means? You said it all. I, I have never seen people clapping for anybody this much since we started this program. I've never seen one single side to you since you start giving your random uh, some. And you know what? Today has been the best day. We've only got one side since we started because everybody love what you were saying. They, they appall you. They, I, I'll give you a standing innovation. If this is a UN gathering, everybody will be standing. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before you thank go, you so much. I want to say a very big thank you for you, uh, to you for coming. To thank you so much. Thank you. I will thank personally you so much. invite you to next week Wednesday program. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have you on that program? Thank you so much. But there are some few things Thank you, you have so to do for me before you go. You I will do that. I will, I will come live. Everybody <laughs> on your Facebook page to Thanks, like sir, our sir. page. Thanks so much. There's sir. a reason I'm inviting you. Next okay, week sir. we only need four people, right? Yes, sir. And I've got yes, into four now. Thank uh, you, sir. I take you in through the back door. Oh, thank you so much. I think yes, Professor sir. Banji Akintoye will be here next Wednesday. My goodness. I my goodness. My and goodness. Your final speech <laughs> has end you that position. I'm not thank saying yes. So yeah, but I think, <laughs> if I'm right, thank you. he will be here next week, Wednesday. And thank you so everything much. will go well for you. Please thank you so uh, much, follow Anna. our Facebook page. Invite. I will see thank when you. you do that. Right? Um, we have a GoFundMe page as well. I'm going to send that one to yes, you. Sir. Yeah. You should support. Thank you because so much. Because what we're trying to okay, do I is actually do make sure that everybody in Yoruba land can listen to yeah. this on their radio. Yes, sir. Without yes, putting yes, any yes. boot on the floor in Nigeria. Because we don't want to put anybody in danger. Yes, you are right, sir. But we still Thank want them so to be able to listen to this. If they want to go from house to house breaking their radio, that's left mm. to them. Yeah. Mm. But we will put mm. this Thank you so much in nigeria thank you very much thank you, that thank is, you so uh, much now. it's a pleasure no? at the bio at Damoleko. uh he lives in ireland he's been wonderful giving us all the summing up i've ever the best sum up i've ever had okay. on this program i want to say a very big thank you team for that i'm gonna proceed thank quickly i'm gonna bring another gentleman uh, another lady in who i've been 
nothing to to give us some few thing i want to see whether she can actually beat this but i don't think anybody can beat this man's uh sum up this man's sum up was fantastic i'm gonna give it to frank for some few minutes and when i give it to frank for some few minutes then i will come back to you in some few seconds thank you frank take over yes um, thank you very much uh, mr moderator i think um uh, I have to give kudos to engineer Adebayo Adamaleko. Well done. Now the whole world can see the um, fire and the vengeance from Undo State, Undo State people. Well, the old Undo State, it does not matter whether uh, you are an Undo again person or a Kriolo Yemekmolo, a Kitio or look uh, i will i will even stretch it up to elisha we are no nonsense people we don't look we don't tolerate rubbish perhaps out of all the yoruba combined states the six states that made up the well the federation the new nation coming up the six states perhaps on those states are the most upright people of all the state because number one there's a there's a cliche that says that if you go into a uh, one house in ekiti you will find you you will find to discover that each and every household in ekiti they've got about six or ten professors in them uh, it is true we are very learned people in those state very intellectual uh, we know our rights and nobody, I repeat, nobody can just come, tramp and think you can step on an Undo state citizen. It's not going to happen because we will tell you to your face that you are nobody and we will claim our rights. Now, I think um, uh, I learned a few stuff. In fact, I forgot that um, today happens to be the 33rd year that um, uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo passed away. I made it known also on my show and on this live stream. A lot of people thought the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo died just like that. No, the fraudulent location nine that you all know asked Baba Awulowo to commit suicide. He was asked to behave like a man. Let's knock everything out. Let's spit fire. Let's educate people who don't know. They thought the late Chief Obafemi Awulowo died just like that. No. Another Yoruba man betrayed. The late sage in his struggle to carve out Ududua Republic decades ago. And when that leakage got to the government in power, rather than charge the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo for another treasonable felony charges that could put the entire nation on fire. He was told politely to behave like a man. And can you imagine what a good number in our numerology that today mark the 33rd year that the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo died. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Adebayo Adamolekun, for that remembrance. I forgot. Thank you so much. I'll hand over back to you at the studio. Yeah. Uh, thank you very really... much for coming back to me. That was a good idea. That was a good thing. I have someone else online, which I'm going to bring in so quickly. And this young lady, uh, the first time I spoke to her, I don't even know she can actually speak Yoruba. And I was saying to myself, why is she involved in this struggle? She we call them any girls. Yeah. Well later on I find out she's not any. She's actually a born and bred uh Udua 
a hot and cold-blooded lady. She's not a girl, she's a lady. Thank you for joining today. Can you please introduce yourself? Ah, before I go, I got a replacement, a fine-looking gentleman with glasses there. Yeah? His name is another engineer replaced another engineer. How did we get that one going? Go ahead, introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, no, uh, my name is... Not you, uh, yes, not you yet, yeah. The, the gentleman, okay. the engineer, yeah? Okay. Uh, hold on. I think you need to try again, engineer of Panuga. I think you need to try again. You need to come out and try again because I think you lost your voice. Someone must have sent you a text message or something like that. Okay, young lady, go ahead. Speak to us. Yeah, my, name's, uh, my name is um, Paula Taiwo and um, I live in England. And yes, I am actually um, an origin of um, the Ojojua Nation. And um, my view is that um, I actually agree with what um, the um, engineer said um, with regards to, um, well, basically all the points that he put up. But my point is this, is that he's quite right. We can't go back now. The Ojojua Nation has to come become a reality. Because we just can't continue this way. I mean, Nigeria, we've been struggling with this um, Nigeria for too long. And it's very obvious that there's no way it cannot work. Um, most, of the, most of the people that have been in power have been these uh, Fulani people. And as far as I'm concerned, as for, from what I can see, they have no idea in regards to governance. None whatsoever. I mean, when Obasanjo was in power, he did do something. He was at, he actually pushed Nigeria forward. The minute um, um, the Fulani people or the Hawusas or whatever took over, the whole thing just started going down here. It was coming up a bit when um, Abele took over, Jonathan took over. But the minute um, um, this Buhari took power, the whole thing's just gone downhill. It can't happen. It has to end now. And this is the time to take this. The only, um, what I also want to say is this, I think we can't do it alone. I think we should join with the Biafrans, not in terms of, of actually joining our nations, but as a form of collaboration. We could feed off one another. And as they say, there's, there are, there's, um, there's power in numbers. So the more we are and the more we can actually come together and sort of feed off one another, obviously, um, it's going to be obvious to the North that the, that the game, they have just lost this game. So if we can join together with the Biafrans, feed off one another, you know, we could hold conferences together. We could either go in, um, because I know that um, Chief um, Akitoya has joined this UP, UP, UNPO. Biafra is also on that list. So, you know, we could go in as a unit, but... But even though we're going in as different countries, I think we, we, we can we can we can drive the um, the actual idea of secession, um, um, yeah, in a much more stronger way that way. So those are my points. Oh, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Yeah. I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna give it back to engineer, another engineer taking over from another engineer, engineer of Panuga. Introduce yourself and what you have for us quickly. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I've been enjoying your lovely program. To be honest, uh, today's uh, discussion is really, really good. My name is Engineer Panoga. I'm a public uh, political analyst. Uh, I, I, I'm involved in many, many international um, issues. Uh, I'm so happy to be part of this uh, great program, talking about the Odudu uh, Republic, disengaging from Nigeria, working with with France, all these things, these are very good things because when you look at it very well, it has been ongoing for so long. I mean, let's be honest. Why are we so resilient? I mean, why are we so complacent? As a European, European people are very, I think that we are very intelligent people, but it has shown that there is something going on with us that is now beginning to show that we are not very strong people who are very uh uh in terms of willful i mean how did we get to this level whereby hooligans are, are the one ruling us 
Even let us forget about Nigeria. Let's put your bar okay, as I a. Think, I think this man must be a pastor or a politician. Uh, when you give them the microphone, they just go on and on and on. And on. <laughs> they don't tend to stop. So don't point out yet because some people have been on the on the show well before you. So I'm gonna give it okay. to another lady that needs to leave because I promised seven o'clock. Another lady that needs to leave. I need to shake this lady as well. But unfortunately, I won't be able to turn her upside down because when I turn her upside down, her skirt is gonna fall down, and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna be gentle with her. You know, they said be gentle with ladies, lady. Give us your thought before you leave us. Okay. Um, I have looked at the f fact that um, though we're talking about Marjorie and all the other uh, situations, but look at the of Nigeria from the time when Nigeria was fought us um, by Lord Lugard and all the rest of them. We could see that uh, our cultures are so totally different. But it is not just the cultures. You'll find that our cultures are so totally different. Just like um, uh, the or the who just left said, is the people, if you look at the ways of um, the Irish and the ways of the English people, they're totally different. So they're not to each other, but they're totally different. So if you're different, why would somebody ask you to do something a girl. It just seems as if Nigeria was the part of the Yoruba, the Ibs, and all the rest of us. And all these new cultures have been for so long, and they think their father's heritage. There's no reason for us to be ruled by people who don't have the capacity or the know how. They don't have credentials to rule Nigeria. If, like, we're Education, your households have at least a few people who have a degree, two degrees, a lot of people are in country schools and they rule the country. That's that they don't know how to rule the country. The people who are ruling it are those who are better than them, who have the degrees and the know hows. A few of those who they have put on their side. But the truth, we need things to change. We cannot continue the way it has been for so many years. Nigeria is, um, how old now? We're, we're 60? Since 90, so we're, we're 60. And like they say, a fool of 60 is a fool forever. If we've done this for 60 years in and it hasn't worked. Why on earth are we going to continue for another 60 years? I personally, the time for us to do something is now. Get the ball rolling. Do what we have to do for us to know where we're going. We're not going anywhere. Just like somebody I heard said, he said that um, he was talking about the fact that African leaders are so old that we keep putting in wine the 60s 70s and 80s our leaders he said where are they taking us to the only place they're taking us to is the grave you have people like canada who have 40 something year old prime minister and um france who are 39 year old this young they're doing old ones who are almost in the grave they're to die really Half the time, um, our president doesn't know, ha have a clue what is happening. I remember um, some a while ago, I think um, what happened was the the people in Benue State were being killed, and I waited and waited for our president to come out and condemn what happened in Benue State by the by those um, people, the cattle herders. What happened? He never to condemn what happened then i waited for the vi prime um the vice president to do the same but i assume that if the president does it that means uh the president cannot do it because his boss has not allowed it. we cannot continue like this I have a vice president who is a lesser like like, uh, like your Rubai people say but we're here going about people who haven't got a clue 
they're going they're not taking nigeria anywhere and nigeria is just a, a stand still toward and no going only god is going to now anyway thank that you is very it. much yeah thank you we really appreciate you uh thank you I, I think the reason they're not clapping for you is because they were showing you love they, they realize you're a woman <laughs> The, the other time, because the man is a man, they were clapping. But because it's you now, I can see okay. a lot of love. Even <laughs> love and roses. I can see some roses. Uh, love rose. Uh, what's this one? Uh, what, what's this one showing? Love Max, whatever, whatever. Oh, someone is covering their eyes with love. Wow, fantastic. So you didn't put a sore taste in their mouth. Thank you for coming. I hope next time when we invite you, you're going to come and do justice to some of I what will. we are discussing I, I really appreciate you. Uh, I that was uh, my beautiful sister there who has done a lot of justice to what we're discussing today. I really appreciate her. And it is nice having her on the show. I'm going to quickly replace her with someone else. So she can go. She's free to go now. Thank you very much, sis. Um, before then, Engineer was trying to... Tell me, is a pastor or is something that knows how to hold under the microphone very well? But people have been telling me ladies first always. But I want to go to uh, my other lady, but our screen has just actually disappeared. So I'm going to go quickly back to engineer of Panuga, who has a lot to say. Shed more light on what we're discussing. Sir. Yes, um, I'm so, to be honest, I really love heritage. I love the work you are doing. Uh, if we have more and more people joining in, to be honest, this is going to go far. The um, Biafran uh, states have had a lot of representatives and their voice is already heard across the world. But the Yorubas are still dragging, They're, as usual. This is the same problem we had in the time of Awolowo. We are always dragging our feet. And today, we are the slave to Nigerian state now. We are the only ones that the Northerners are using now to bring Nigeria to their own favor. And it's obvious. It's not something I'm making up. It's something that is obvious when you get there. You go to the airport in Nigeria. It's all always outside people that are at the airport. You will go to any of the parasitas, the oil companies, NMPC. Just name any parasita in Nigeria. They are head of production the head of operation there is a house man is that not the, that's not nigeria even they got to the point or even almost making nigerian television authority which was not built by um, Ausa people which is not owned by Ausa people it's owned by nigeria but they put uh, their own thing on the on the on the on the screen as if they are the only one running nigeria this is their, their plan they've had for many many years they have never been able to achieve it during the time of uh Usman and they still have the agenda that one day they will conquer uh, Nigeria. A lot of people were working with them. The first person that was working with them before was uh, this man called uh, Gaddafi. Gaddafi was working with the Northerners in order to take over Nigeria. And he was given a lot of money. But when Gaddafi died, the whole uh, plan was cutted. Now, Afterwards, they were looking for other ways. The Arabs. The Arabs came in. They started funding Nigeria. Remember when Buhari first came into the power in 2011? He went straight down to uh, Saudi Arabia. And they had a, a kind of uh, agreement. It was a closed door meeting, somehow, somehow. But it came out eventually that the whole IC was trying to fund some projects in Nigeria. They took that money and some of the agreements they made in that in their memorandum of understanding was not well founded. Nobody knew exactly what was signed between Nigeria and the OIC. So this agenda of Islamizing Nigeria is a is is known to be true. It is a fact. So where do we start? As well, you Yoruba people, what is wrong with us? But we are not here to say anything is wrong with us we the young people i'm not i wouldn't call myself a young man i'm i'm over 50 now so we that are in the, in the mainstream of the middle age 
we have a, a uh, uh, something to give. Now is the time. During the time of Aula, it was not even our age when he stood against the Europeans and the British to get our independence that you and I are enjoying today. So what's wrong with us? What made us to become complacent? Is it the education we got that made us to lose focus on our identity? Even our oppressors have now become Yorubas themselves. You, our, our oppressors have now been Obas, kings, all these uh, leaders. Now politicians, we have, there has never been any election in Yoruba state in the past since uh, this guy came in, uh, what's his name? Tinumbu, as the governor of Lagos state. We've never had any elections since then. All we do, all we do have is hooligans coming to rob people's votes and installing their governor and installing their local government chairman, installing their uh, their councillors. All these things are happening. We know it's true. That is why you have never seen any middle class person or any one who is very educated taking over the affairs of Nigeria. They've run away. They've they've silenced them with uh, cutlasses and guns and and uh, they are witches and wizards that they always think is chasing them up and down. There's a problem we have. There's a vacuum. The big vacuum has to be filled. And it has to be done now. If I have to come out of my shell to talk about Nigerian states, to talk about the, the emancipation and the voice of uh, the Yorubas in the state, in the country, what is wrong with our so-called uh, Omolowo, Omo, this and that, that they call themselves? Have we lost our mind? We are, you can be rich, but if you are under a control of a foreign government of a foreign uh, people you are a slave because they can come they can use anything against you they can use the law against you they can take and use anything to take everything away, away from you dangote has come to invest one of the most monumental uh, uh, business in the that has never been done in in lagos and he's already employing indians i mean what is going on who sold us land to him fashola Fashola was the one. Your own Fashola that you are always saying, oh, these, these people, they work together. They've collected money on behalf of everybody that you do, you and I do not even register with. Yoruba has to wake up. We don't have leaders. We have selfish maggots who are taking over. You are using our, our, our respect as a way to put fear in us. Our culture is very rich. It's very, very, very rich. But people are now taking advantage of that culture to now use it to enslave us. So we need to modify the uh, the culture. This is my first submission on this program as we carry on. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for that. I'm going to introduce another gentleman. Uh, this gent No, I'm not going to introduce him. He has his own mouth as well. Let's hear from the host mouth. Go ahead, sir. Introduce yourself. Speak oh, to our people. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Good um, evening, everyone. My name is um, Kamaru, and uh, I'm calling from Europe. And uh, I'm so happy to be on the program today. Uh, so, should I continue? Continue, sir. Continue, continue, sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to speak um, on uh, today's. Uh, uh, firstly, I want to greet everybody listening to me, Moki Bubarale. And uh, I greet uh, Heritage TV for giving me this uh, uh, platform to share my own view on the movement of the Almanjuri people into Yoruba land. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like us to, I will make, I will quickly make some points and it's going to be brief. It's going to be a kind of a PowerPoint. Firstly, uh, Tinubu, I listened to the other, uh, to the last speaker. Tinubu is not a problem of, Niger of the Yoruba people. Buhari is not our problem. And uh, the political hooligans, they are not the problem. The problem of the Yoruba people is the unitary system of government. The unitary system of government was, is a kind of um, uh, a machinery that was set up to enslave, to exploit, and to subjugate indigenous ethnic people in Nigeria. We have to understand this. 
If you bring Angel Michael to become the president of Nigeria, to become the governor of Nigeria in a unitary system of government, that Angel Michael is going to turn to Angel Lucifer. That is the truth. So, because if we, because there's a difference between African uh, society and African societies and European or Western or Asian societies. In Asian society and uh, European societies, they build institutions. They build workable institutions. These are institutions that, that there will be checks and balances for the system to function like a, like a war machine. But in an African society, we build individuals. And these individuals, they become more powerful than the states. And in sociological terms, they become oligarchs, they become, they become feudal overlords, they become, uh, they become powerful aristocrats. And when you have that kind of society, this is what is going to happen. Now, I would like to go straight into the, onto the reason why there is a movement of the Almanjiri into Yoruba space. Firstly, we have to understand that the northern part of Nigeria is collapsing. The north is in trouble, but they don't want people to talk about it. Not the north is in the state of disarray, because what we have in the north is feudalism. The north is a feudalized entity. And when, that is why the Nigerian, uh, when I see a lot of um, young minds, a lot of inter um, intellectuals trying to uh, talk about, let us have one Nigeria, let us have, let us a uh, good great leader. It cannot be possible because feudalism is already enshrined in the Northern society. And what are the products of feudalism? You have paupers, you have subjects instead of citizens, you have slaves, and you have what we call social stratification of the society. And when you have a social stratification of the society, you have the feudal or the lot, people at the highest level, you have the lower case, you have the middle class, but unfortunately in the, in the northern society, because we don't understand the north, that is why many of us are trying to explain what we don't understand, I'm sorry to say that. In the north, you have people that are extremely richer than Nigeria. I can say that anyway. They are, forget them good thing, extremely richer than Nigeria. These people don't have any job. They have no company. They have no institution. They did not invent anything. They did not have nothing whatsoever. But they are extremely powerful, extremely rich. And you have people that are extremely, extremely poor. Take, for instance, Adamawa. Adamawa has a poverty rate of around 80%. And apart from the state government of Adamawa, Atiku Abubakar is the, um, it's without due respect, is the highest employer of labor. That is a feudalized society. That is why poverty, you see them coming in mass into the West. And they need to come. It is the normal human, uh, um, human survival instinct. Because they know that they need to go to a place where they can actually establish themselves. Then secondly, Northern Nigeria, they have weaponized poverty. If anybody has lived in the North before, you actually, you will, you will weep. If you have lived in Kaduna, if you have lived in Zaria, Jigawa, Zamfara, you see millions, thousands of children living on food scraps from refuse bin. When I was, I've been fortunate to be there, and when I saw these things for close to a year or two, I said, I cannot live in this society. I was crying because what I saw there, I saw, well, how can these people be so heartless? When I tried to talk to some of my friends that were there, they told me it is their own business, it is their own lot, that I shouldn't try and even interfere. So, it is a, so when I saw that kind of thing, I knew that Nigeria's unity is actually negotiable because it is a time bomb. And we already seen what is happening now. Because the, the movement of these people into Yoruba land is a biological threat. Into the bigger south is a biological threat to the existence of other ethnic nationalities. Because 
as we speak, I'm going to be talking from the Yoruba and God, I know that is where I have my path. The Southwest has over 100 million people within its population, living there as I'm talking to you. Everybody, every, we have close to 200 million people in Nigeria. 100 million people are living in Yoruba land. Let's do the uh, statistics. Now, as we speak, trailers upon trailers are coming from across the north. You cannot stop them. It is one Nigeria, freedom of movement. Even though Nigeria is not a country, it is a country of nations. So they will come into your space. Now, this particular Yoruba land is operating under a unitary system of government where the resources allocated for it is based on the number of indigenous people naturally living in that space and based on the fraudulent 1999 constitution where the uh, local governments have been shared by military junta's to favor the north. So these people, let's call this to the chase. These people are coming to your land. Where are we going to get the money to find to take care of them? If they start spreading diseases to the indi to the see the indigenous people of Yoruba land, how are how are we going to survive this pandemic if it explodes? So this is this is this is what actually we're supposed to be talking about. Because if Nigeria was actually a truly federal state, or we were practicing the regional system of government, everybody will have its own internal policing mechanism or regional guards that would stop people from coming into other indigenous spaces. I listened to, they said, um, it's a news, where the uh, former, uh, the, the, the spokesman for the RAY youth leader was saying that if the Southeast, like the Southeast or maybe Southwest rejects and Northern lands from coming into the Southeast, there will be war. I think something is actually wrong with the mentality of, of an average Northern land because from the north, the north, the, the, the elite, the privileged few in the north, they've graduated from being from being subjects to citizens and from being citizens to the privileged class. But when I mean the privileged class, they believe that they are above the law, they believe that they are superior to other parts of Nigeria based on fraud not based on based on their religion based on their ethnicity so this is bound to happen in any in any uh, heterogeneous entity nigeria is not it's not it has happened in india before happened in sudan before happened, happened in indonesia before it is bound to happen anywhere so we we need to actually tell ourselves the truth about nigeria nigeria is not a nation it is a country of nation then lastly i want to talk about the yoruba people especially uh, the reason why non-yorubas apart from the almanjuri issue we are, there has been issues about the yoruba nation that many yoruba people are talking about a lot of people a lot of yoruba people have read that talking about it because there's an unregulated movement of non-yorubas into Yoruba space. How long are we going to continue? Are we going to continue doing this? This is not sustainable because one way or the other, you are, because those that design the unitary system of government, I just believe they design the system where there will be chaos. Because we all know people that are benefiting from this chaos. The more the chaos, the more they get powerful. That is why Yoruba people, especially Yoruba people, I'm not trying to tell them they must uh, be, they must be, Yoruba people need to be aggressive. Yoruba people need to redefine the Omoluwa B concept. The Omoluwa B concept is one of the most uh, advanced form of philosophical concepts because it's in Yoruba land you see Christians, Muslims, atheists, traditionalists living together in the same society then we need to redefine the omolua big concept because if you don't redefine the omolua big concept where we where we, we we have lines drawn where if you are coming to yoruba land this is the way you behave because as it is yoruba land has turned to a refugee center for everybody thank you very much for this opportunity
I think I will uh, stop my uh, presentation here, uh, my input here. Okay, this is a man that knows the rules. Sorry, I didn't st uh, stipulate the rule before. The rules is that when you're talking and I show this screen, it means you need to, to sum up. You need to sum up your presentation. Thank you for, for remembering that rule quickly. I really appreciate that. I'm going to bring somebody in again. Today is not a day of color, but a day of calling people, bring them in one by one so that we can hear more from them. Uh, I need to start shaking people, get the best out of people, whatever they want to say to me, I want to get the best. And I've been very privileged today that everything that I'm hearing from people has all been positive and clapping and clapping and clapping for these people. Gentlemen, you're on the show now. Tell us your name, where you're calling from. And tell us your opinion, sir. All right. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, my name is Morris, and I'm calling from U.S. instead of Texas. Uh, I'm a regular follower of uh, Frank Bello, Maya Good General. Oh, Maya uh, Good Frank Bello. Yes, sir. Uh, AY, AY, the AY, Citizen AY, my brothers. And, and Simon Eber. Wow, another one. Yes, sir. Um, honestly, I am from um, I'm from the Biafran uh, nation. Yeah. But I must appreciate you for what you are doing, my brother. Honestly, this is exactly what we have been waiting for and looking for, especially those of us that are in diaspora. Sincerely, the the power that be they have done a lot of hard work for a long time, and I'm. Thanking God that a lot of people are waking up now to the reality that Nigeria is not working and Nigeria can never work, not today, not tomorrow, not in a million years. And again, I want to make it clearly to the people that are agitating for restructuring. Restructuring can never work. Let it be known to people. What is my reason? My reason is that before restructuring can work, there has to be a vote in the parliament which is in the Senate and House of Rep. Uh, if you bring all our representatives together, the North will always produce majority that will, over, that will overturn our votes. Because once the restructuring is done, through federalism is done, it will just disenfranchise them from milking the South and to, to satisfy their, 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 wealth, their mong mongering wealth that I always look for. However, I am saying that without the Yorubas, without the Oduduwa nation, Nigeria cannot break. So everybody must get this to their skull. And that's why I say I'm very happy when I see what is going on now. Without the Yorubas, because why would, why would it happen like that? It would be easy for Nigeria to give up on the sovereignty once the Yorubas said I'm done. Because it will not be possible for them to cross Yoruba and cross the Biafran at the same time. Because they know that once, once they want to cross Biafra, they will get some support from Yoruba region, from the Oduduwa region, to cross the Biafra, whether we like it or not. And that's the truth. But once, well, once the Oduduwa say, I'm done, and Biafra say, I'm done, they will be left with no choice but to come back to the devil and we discuss the boundaries. Mm. That is the simple truth. Another one is this election is coming in 2023. By the time the agitation for Juju Oduduwa will begin to eat up now, I will, I will, I will guarantee you that the North will give up power to the Eurogas. They will give up to either it's to or whoever they might want to choose from the Eurogas. Why? Can I say something, sir? Can I say it's something late. to you there? Uh, whether they want to give power to the Oduduwa, I don't think Oduduwa want their power anymore. Right? <laughs> it is late. Completely too late now. I I am a, a strong believer of one Nigeria up until about two weeks, uh, two months now. And uh, when I had the meeting with uh, with the people that were actually that were doing this well before me, right? Mm -hmm. I was telling them to okay, you know what? We take it easy. We use diplomacy and we do things uh diplomacy way and that and that and that and you know what he said to me what the governor said to me the governor said to me the leader said to me uh mr thomas it's too late for that now because every <laughs> yoke has been broken yes and i said how 
and they okay. explained things to me and they said to me uh even before the UNPO team uh came out they said to me this is what they've done this is what they've done this is what they've got this is what they've got this is what they've got as we speak Nigerian airspace is closed there was a okay. powerful delegation that visited Nigeria some few days ago I'm not gonna mention names were very Great. powerful delegation that has written the that have put the rubber stamp the breakage so okay. there's no election forget about election election is is crap election is finished there's no election in 2023 anybody even including showore that's dreaming about carrying election in 2023 i don't think they know exactly what is coming but and they don't know should be enlightened know. because he knows he might just know and be pretending that he doesn't know because of the trouble they they they, 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 they trouble they, they're making with him. But no matter what trouble they make, they fail. They fail the whole world. They didn't fail themselves because I, I, I won't say they failed the whole world. I think they failed themselves because all the trouble they caused in the past is coming back to them in fourfold now. Brother, I'm going to let yes. you go now. Uh, I really want to say thank you very much for your contribution. And I hope next time we call you, you will answer us. Please inbox me. Just say I and your name on my inbox. Then I will forward some few things to you. And next time we want to have a program and we need someone from your region, which is always on Thursdays and Fridays, right? I will be able to reach out to you and bring you live on the program as well. Thank you very much, brother. And stay, no stay safe. Don't go out when the government thank says don't go out to <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Sharina. You Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Appreciate it. Yeah. That was a gentleman from uh, United States, the state of Texas. He said he's from. And uh, I like the way he put it. And I like the way he support it. Uh, I'm going to go to my sister. I, I think he, she has a lot. She's enjoying the show. And uh, she has a lot to offer on this show today. So, my sister, prepare for it. Here is it for you before. Uh, after you, then I'll go to uh, my brother from another mother who is in Europe. I'm just looking for my sister here. Where are you? Where are you? This is where she is. Come on. Okay. Oh. Pour out your <laughs> mind now. I, hope, I know you have too much now. You hear the right and left. You be the judge now. And let's hear what you want to say. <laughs> I, 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 um, thank you very much for having me. I've been enjoying all the discussions and everything. And let me, let me just say that um, this is actually my first time to join a national discourse, a national issue. I have been talking with my friends in my little space, but this is actually the first time I'm coming like very international to um, participate and to hear the views of Nigerians and everybody in, concerned Nigerians and concerned Yoruba people as I can hear and concerned people who, um, who agitate for, you know, the, um, should I say separation or uh, or should I say this this disintegration of Nigeria? No, I no, mean, we don't call it disintegration. We call it divorce. Divorce. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I think it's high time we we, we did this. That um, it's long way coming. This um, this marriage it has not worked for sixty years. It has not worked for over I mean, one thousand one hundred years. It has not worked. We've seen all the discrepancies. All the this unity in every every structure in terms of politicizing everything in terms of educational structure in terms of we southerners struggling to you know go to school educate ourselves and some people are you know sitting in the in the seat of power and you know staying and controlling everything right there i mean it's 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 now glaring to us that we've been sleeping i mean it's glaring to us that um We've uh, taken things for granted, things we thought we are one together, you know, fighting the cause of the nation. Uh, but now it's open that, um, you know, some people think uh, or the northerners think it is their birthright to, to, to control the affairs of the nation and, you know, to overlook at things that is happening to security, happening to health, happening to social issues and happening to, you know, the whole, um, the structure of Nigeria itself, you know. And um, I wouldn't say less, or I wouldn't say uh, I, I would I wouldn't agree less with what um, Kamora said and other um, participants what they what they um, you know mentioned. And um, I see um, just one thing: um, 
I see um, the need for people to be truthful and honest in this in this course because um, the same set of people, if we rely on our leaders, Yoruba leaders, or we choose the leaders we want at the forefront of this situation, uh, we would achieve what we want to. But if you choose your political leaders, um, those who are in, in, in control of power, those who are dining and whining with um, those in government and in governance right now, we won't get anywhere, to be honest. And um, this this is my only fear that uh, we was are we still going to trust the same set of people we are, we entrusted um, our democratic rule in twenty years ago the re re, re, re engineering of Nigerian structure the engineering of Nigerian political system are we still going to entrust you know this fight are we going to entrust them to do what we expect them to do or are we going to do it ourselves so how do we go about it we can discuss from now till eternity if we don't put in in, in place. The, 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 the infrastructure, the structure, the machinery that we actually want for this, then we still be dancing about the same boot, we're dancing about the same thing, talking and talking without, you know, doing nothing. And, and um, when um, engineer Damolek was saying that um, um, Nigeria, um, Yoruba people are called uh, cowards, I, I agree with him that saying that whoever is going to fight does not, you know, announce or we don't make noise, we're going to fight, to, fight for seven days, you're going to, you know, make preparations for seven years. I mean, this is actually true, but um, we, we cannot wait any longer. I mean, it's it's high time we, things have gone the right way that we want it to go. And if the next four years comes and we still remain in the same situation, I bet you the same set of people who campaign for the last uh, election, we still campaign again and we still feel entitled to um, the seat of power in controlling all the resources, in controlling everything, in controlling even what we have to decide. I mean, everything is divided. You can own education, can, although people can go to school, become professors, but you may not taste power. You may not taste uh, where power control is, the, the engine room is coming from. You know, this is, this is what we are made to believe that, you know, <laughs> the houses are the ones, you know, entitled to power, the military. And, you know, I, I used to tell people that, see, when, Yoruba people were going to Oxford, going to US, going to Harvard, going to every place to study and to do everything. Even if the 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 the, the amount of people, uh, amount of Northerners that went to study are not so as much as that, they go back home, and then they go to occupy those positions that they ought to occupy in the military. You find them becoming generals. You find them becoming colonels. You find them in high position of powers, and then we are studying. We take time to become professors, we take time to become doctors, you know, want to become lawyers, we want to become bankers, but come on, they are not bothered about those things. They can easily get anything they want, wherever they want and whenever they have it. But you know, the affairs of Nigeria is controlled by the North. Unless that is, you know, that chain is broken. I tell you, 2023 will come and we still have the same set of people in the same power. And the same Yoruba leaders we have entrusted are political system, economic system to, 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 to advise or to, you know, that we look up to as role models, as political leaders at the forefront, we still turn back and then do as the power will, I mean, as, as they want. So um, I think this is, you know, this is one thing we should have to, we, we have to, you know, look into and see how to restructure the system that we want to put forward. You know, the structure I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the, the nation as a well whole because how can we redeem the country? It's not the question we have to ask now. It's We've gone beyond the point of redemption. I mean, no, but no one can redeem Nigeria from the mess that we have right now. But the situation of things can actually be that um, every nation would come and, you know, put in place proper structure. I mean, if we have those things in, in place, why not? We can, we can agitate for our own Odudua nation. I mean, uh, put everything in proper place and then you know let everything be controlled by 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 the nations themselves not not um the country we call nigeria to be honest this is the only thing i see i only see how we want to re-engineer the nations itself your Dulua nation the biafran nation if the area wants to come up with their own nation they are free to do that and i mean then we can you know talk in terms of international trade international business international um, relations like someone said, okay, you will have to apply for visa or work permit to be able to go to another place. Why not? I mean, to boost the economy of the nation that we are trying to promote. So 
this is, this is the only submission that I have. I mean, from all the discussions, my only worry is about the structure itself. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I don't know. Frank, your people didn't turn up today, I think. Every, everything online today has been peaceful. What happened? <laughs> no gang we've, we've voting, no gang. No, no. Yeah, we, we, we've got a handful, but I think I think Simon Epa was on on the other side, mm -hmm. so we've got a shift from okay. Okay. this okay. side, side. Okay. yes so Can that's I go it. to engineer of panoga again because uh, i need to shake this man as well i like shaking people up and get all the nuts in his pocket all the screws and boards in his pocket uh, he's an engineer mm -hmm. all the screws and nuts and boards in his pocket i need to get it out of his pocket and and get it out of his mouth sir what do you have for us I think someone has called you along the line before. Someone has sent you a text, so I've lost your voice. I'm going to go to uh, my man in Europe. Uh, say something to us. Continue. Okay, I think I got Engineer Okpanuga back. Go ahead now. Sorry. Engineer Sorry. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, I'm so happy for all the discussions going on, and I'm listening very carefully. You know, even though uh, I've been very busy today, I'm enjoying the lovely sun. But I think uh, Heritage is a wonderful multimedia that we need to use successfully, extensively to promote this agenda of Ududua Nation. Listen, we don't need enough. We don't need anybody to have our own agenda if we are very honest about it. The issue is, it has been well established that Yorubas are never even uh, very, very, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, unity among themselves, they are not united even among themselves. Let's be very honest. We are always dividing among, among ourselves. But it's fine. Politically, let it be. We won't just want to be our own by our own. Let us deal with our own problem ourselves. If we have our own Ududua Nation. It is much easier to pinpoint those people within us who are bringing disaffection among us. Just like the way we undo some of our churches too. Our churches are standing because it's predominantly our people. So we know how to talk our language in a way that we understand our businesses and everything. So if we begin to now start creating that identity, and I mean identity, identity of Yoruba has to be very strong. You can see whenever they want to do anything in Britain, in Great Britain, I mean, when the Scottish want to come out, when they want to play against the, the British, they come with their flag. They are still one nation. But they come with their flag. That is their identity. We have to create our own identity. We are not saying we want to break away, but we are broken away in terms of how we ask for what belongs to us. The Northerners will never negotiate with you. They will. Ne they are never good negotiators anyway. They are just rulers. You understand? Even among the Yorubas, we are not here to even negotiate anything with anybody. We are here to just create our own identity. If we have a company, name it Odudua Company. If you have a, a school, name it Odudua School. In, if you have anything, name it Odudua this, Odudua that. That, if that goes around the whole of the Southwest, nobody can tell you you cannot name your company Odudua uh, Engineering Company, Odudua uh, a Private uh, Institution, Odudua this, Odudua that. Even if you have a car company, Odudua Car Company, you begin to spell that, send that across, send, create a, an identity for yourselves. These Northerners have destroyed Nigeria. They put themselves in military for the reason of militarizing Nigeria. But let me tell you, let me be honest with you. We don't have a democracy in Nigeria. We still have a military government using the remote control to control Nigeria and making it look as if it's your democracy. It's not a democracy. There has never been an election. That is where election that has no 
ID card for people to register their name correctly and we know the, how many people have registered. It's not an election. We've seen election in this country. We've seen election in America. We've seen election in places, but there is no election in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. All these figures they give to you, I've, I've, I have a lot of their figures, all their data with me. They are compiled. They were programmed to make it look as if people have voted. People have not voted one thing. How many people are voting? How many votes are counted? Where are they from? Nobody has any data of anybody. I'm telling you this. There is no vote in Nigeria in the, in the, since uh, uh, 1999 when uh, Obasanjo came. Obasanjo did not win any election. Obasanjo was imposed as a way to, um, to keep the Yoruba people quiet because of June 12th. So let, why are we trying to uh, disfigure the history? Why are we trying to rewrite history? We know the, the, the history of Nigeria. If I'm 50 and I don't know the history of Nigeria, then I'm an idiot. So everybody should go and read the history before they come and talk about anything about Nigeria. Nigeria is not a, it's not a country. It's a, like somebody said, it's a country of nations. No, everybody should hold their own area regionally and let us begin. We don't, we don't need the Tinubu to negotiate for you. You don't need anybody. If I have my money, I'm going there to establish my thing according to the way I want it to be. And we carry our groups along. Nobody will stop us. Listen, our Tinubu will never negotiate Yoruba identity for, the, for us because these people have already taken money against our will. These people have done a lot of things against our will. They are not ste stepping there out for you, any of you. They have created their own institution within Yoruba to destroy. If I go to Nigeria now and I speak against Tinubu, maybe within the next five days, I will be my house will be ransacked. Things will happen to me, even against your own Tinubu. You understand? I'm not trying to demon demonize anyone, but this is a fact. This is what's going on. There is a control going on in Nigeria that you need to go and fight it. The people that will negotiate the future of Nigeria are not in Nigeria alone. People from abroad has to go and be part of this. And we are ready. We are going to. We did it uh, two years ago or three years ago when we joined the, uh, the Take It Back group. We did it, but unfortunately, some people let us down. They did not allow us to penetrate very well because of their selfish interest. You know, anybody can say anything, but this is my opinion. We are going to do it again. Before 2023, things will change again. We are already uh, monopolizing a lot of Nigerians, professionals especially, to ensure that we change the demography of Nigeria okay, for I'm good. Gonna take it, off it is not quickly. working for us. I'm going to take it off quickly, but I'm going to give you a yellow card as well for that. You get a yellow card. I hope you won't get another yellow card. Uh, someone said something okay. earlier on that we did something and uh, some people tried to spend money. The IOC spent money on Nigeria. And then when we want to take it off them, we took it off them. Now the Chinas are spending... This is typical of Nigeria anyway. <laughs> the Chinas are spending money on Nigeria now. When Nigeria wants to use its, its crooked way of taking it off China, I'm sure they're going to do the same thing and take it off them. I know our, uh, the gentleman from Europe is going to be leaving us very soon. And I want to actually check him. He has so much in his pocket. Let's check him and get every money, every talk, every talk, every strategy, every wisdom that he has in his call. Let's check it off him before he disappears into chin hair. Gentleman from Europe, let's hear from you quickly again. Okay, thank you very much once again. Um, thank you so much, Heritage TV. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I want to say what Heritage TV is doing is a kind of uh, national conference, suffering conference, that the powers that be in Nigeria do not want to happen. So that is what is happening. And um, the self-determination right of the Yoruba people is unnegotiable. The Yoruba people are the biggest homogeneous group in Africa, yet we don't have a homeland that we can call our own. We have borders that we cannot protect. We have economy that we cannot dictate. Yoruba people cannot police ourselves. Why some people are telling us that their whole civilization will be, will be imposed on us. So I think we have no apology to defend Yoruba civilization, no matter what it is, no matter what anybody says. Um, secondly, Nigeria is, is, um, is like an empire. It's like a medieval empire ruled by emperors. 
That is the way Nigeria is. And if you see the way Nigeria is structured, Nigeria is structured in a way that favors the present Western imperialistic Western order, where the Semitic and Semitic Arab race are at the very top, and the Negro race, no matter how much we are, we are millions are at the bottom. This is what is happening. Don't let anybody deceive you. Those that are playing this game, they know what they are doing. It is a it is an open it is a way of keeping the Negro race at the bottom ladder. Another point I also want to give make is this: there is no way, there is no country, there is no society anywhere in the world where liberalism, theocracy, and democracy are coexisting within the same society. It cannot happen. Theocracy and democracy, they are strange bed fellows. You have 12 northern states that are having Sharia law. They have Sharia penal codes. Recently, an atheist was arrested in Kano. Forget it, maybe I think his name is Bala Mubarak or something. He was arrested for blasphemy in a country where they say we, the people of Federal Republic, where it where this the the, the we have where we believe we have secular secularism. I think this is a disaster. Certainly, what is happening in Nigeria is um, a clash of civilization. And with my own knowledge of uh, physics or chemistry, two atoms cannot coexist in the same orbit. It cannot happen. Two planets cannot be in the same orbit. One has to fall down for each other. For one, because what we see now is that the Yoruba civilization will be consumed by the feudal imperialistic agenda of the Fulanis. That is the truth. The Fulanis are very smart because they also need an homeland, a viable homeland for their people. And Nigeria is the what they need. Everything they need to build a superpower, a superpower nation is what they have in Nigeria. So, what are we now saying? When anybody shouting one name on Nigeria should be ready to be slaves for the rest of his life. You cannot take anything back. You cannot, revolution cannot happen. Nigeria is a heterogeneous nation. Revolution can only happen in Yoruba land. It can only happen in Igbo land. It can only happen in Aousa land. You cannot take it back. Nigeria was not created for you. Don't take anything back. It's a waste of time. I've said it over and over again. Then also, I also want to make this point. What we have in Nigeria is internal colonization. This way, okay, for instance, Nigeria is not a nation, it's a country of nations. The British created three regions. But due to the coup by the East, they destroyed the region. The Fulanis, I would say Fulanis, they took over this fraudulent uh, constitution, promoted it to favor their people. And then force it on the rest of Nigeria, especially the Yoruba people. Don't forget, the Yoruba people are the only people that have never uh, carried out any coup d'etat in Nigeria. We have never. We are the people that have not used any violent means to impose any constitution on any part of Nigeria. Yet, we are the people that people still believe that we can still be. We are the. We are the. Uh, we are the kind of the. The, the sacrificial lamb for the fraudulent Nigerian constitution, or Nigerian nation. For Nigeria to, to, to survive, it is either the South conquers the North to impose this way of life on the North, or the North imposes its way of life on the South. How is the Yoruba, how is Yoruba land under internal colonization? I've been to different countries of the world and I've seen one thing in common. Where you have indigenous people, heterogeneous nation, the people control their resources. Yoruba land, we don't control our seaports. It's under the, the feudal federal uh, Fulanis in the north. The Yorubas, we don't control our airports. It's under the federal, it's under federal control. Yorubas does not control its mineral oil natural resources 
The Yoruba people do not control our internal police system. The Yoruba people does not control, we do not control our economy. The Yoruba people do not control our educational system. The Yoruba people cannot control what we have as our own identity. We cannot. This is a siege. People are imposing their way of life on us. We cannot continue to tolerate this imposition. Also, I also want to talk about Ruga. Uh, one thing I've seen about black people is that we forget things a lot. I'm sorry to use that general statement. Especially Africa, we, 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 we have amnesia. We forgive easily, we forget our sorrows. What exactly was the, what was, if we think Ruga is dead, Ruga is not dead. Because they know that bringing, bringing Ruga through the political wing to emasculate Yoruba land, to see the way our land, to full any aliens, people that destroyed your, your empire, is, uh, they know we are going to retaliate through enemies to resist them. So they came through political means to take ancestral lands for their people. As it is now, the North still believes that Ruga is their birthright. Honestly, I have never seen where it is done in the world. Where these people we eat this kind of shit in our face and still expect us. Because I'm a little bit angry to continue saying one Nigeria. This is colonialism. Internal colonialism of the highest order. Then the last point I also want to talk about is geopolitical fraud. What am I talking what, what am I trying to say about geopolitical fraud? If you notice anywhere you have any Aousa Fulani population, even if they are just 500,000, that particular place in Nigeria is called North. That is why you see almost six to eight million Yorubas are geopolitically classified as Northern Nigeria against their will. Anybody, because I believe democracy, uh, democracy should be the will of the people. As uh, my, that, that's my way, uh, somebody said earlier that Nigeria does not have any democracy. What we have is a unitary dictatorial government meant to destroy ethnic identity so that is where because nigeria is a contradiction there are so many contradictions within the nigerian nation so uh, that is where we need those are the points i mean we need to start talking about and lastly this my message goes to all yoruba people listening to me yoruba people yoruba intellectuals yoruba citizens i don't care maybe you are in apc maybe you are in pdp because that is what some people cannot reason beyond party affiliations Maybe you are in a Christian, you are a pastor, imam, if I worship, I shall go worship. I don't care. What I want to say is this. The Yoruba people must dump political correctness and put it inside the dustbin. Because some of our people have so much invite deceit and trickish attitude to the essence that we try to be politically correct with truth. We say, okay, let us go for a regional system of government. Ah, and we know the North are bad. Don't let us say that. And then uh, let us say it's small, small. We have gone beyond that level. The Fulanis went online, called the Yoruba race primitive people. So it's, 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 they see us as infidels. It is the truth. We cannot continue to say nothing will happen. Something has to happen. Because as it is, they will continue to feudalize our life. And in the next 10 years, I repeat, in the next 10 years, if the Yoruba nation does not get out of Nigeria, the Yoruba civilization will be destroyed. Look at the Aousas, they are gone. Do you know the number of ethnic minorities that have been destroyed in the North? They is uncountable. So many ethnic minorities. That is why those of us that are trying, that is why the Fulanis will not restructure Nigeria. Let me be cheap in this point. The, the Fulanis will not restructure Nigeria. It will never happen. Because if they restructure Nigeria, they will not be able to control NMPC again. They will not be able to control NPA again. They will not be able to control the military again. 
they will not be able to have the unfair majority when fearers they are less than four percent of the nigerian population these people are less than four percent population of nigerian population because the nigerian system because we all know that anywhere the minority rules the majority is an apartheid system of government and nobody should dare tell us that we do not have the right to discuss our future and before i finally um, leave yoruba people have some major internal problems i will not be afraid to say this we have some people that they are bearing yoruba names with yoruba caps with yoruba agbada but they have no trait of yoruba uh, reasoning in their in their mindset with our presidents political leaders in from the book say they are yoruba people but they are they've all throughout their tenure they've destroyed yoruba intellectuals and yoruba nationalism so what my sister was saying the other time that some people might come around and hijack this movement for their own uh for their own selfish aggrandizement because they have no loyalty to the yoruba race and if anybody tells you it's tribalism please take it as tribalism tribalism is very cool tribalism means having loyalty to one's roots and culture there's nothing bad in it so we should be very wary we should be very careful of these fifth colonists who will come in ships closing even though they are wolves to tell you stories that was how the 1999 how does how the 1999 election was hijacked and the nadeco nationalist movement was crushed when colonial bourgeois who called themselves yorubas came around and destroyed yoruba nationalism we all know between 1999 and 2007 hundreds of yoruba activists were killed Bolaide was passed to Leah, he was many of them were assassinated before you know i don't want to mention names so we on and in nigeria yoruba people are the most assassinated people in that contraption we will continue making lists from delegate uh, we love a lot of people that have been assassinated because we are a people that are bold who fight for what we believe if we don't leave nigeria that is how they will continue to kill your right intellectuals one after the other as i have said because I, I don't i'm not trying to be emotional tinubu is not a problem atiku is not a problem buari is not a problem the unitary system is the god is the problem that is why anytime the south the southwest the southeast the south uh, south south or the middle belt tell the north we have to change this constitution the north says they don't understand restructuring because they know the moment the Nigeria is restructured, they are finished. Because what they believe is they are born to rule. That is why Nigeria will get, they would rather balkanize Nigeria than restructure it. I'm not for restructuring. I believe self determination is a right for the Yoruba people. Thank you very much for bringing me to this uh, platform today. Thank you. I'll stop hey, here. Thank you very much. Uh should i let you go now because your time is up like you said yes okay yes, sir. i would like to say a very big thank you uh like i said uh maybe i've managed to modify uh frank billow's uh followers on this channel they, they they're not aggressive like they used to be anymore and they actually civilized which means my training is actually working i would like to say a very big thank you and can i tell you one thing these people gave you standing yeah. ovation and they were clapping and clapping and clapping. Even our lady complaining that the emoji is too much. She's doing her highs in because the emoji was just flying by. And I've wow. never seen much dislike today. Everything about today is about love and love and like and like and like. The man from Europe, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you. And I hope next time we yeah. call you, you will turn up again. Thank you very much, sir. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. Okay, guys, yes. I want to thank that gentleman from Europe. Uh, that was a gentleman from Europe who was on the program to discuss what we're discussing and partake in the program. I'm going to give it to my sister again. I've managed to do something fantastic today that I've not done ever.
I've never managed to do that. But today, I've managed to silence Frank Bello so cool. Ah, that was good. Maybe that's why his followers are actually hiding under the canopy today. This man has, has, has caged us. Uh, some people said they cage uh, Shore. They can't cage Shore. Shore knows what he's doing. He's not caging him. They're not good enough, man. Shore is brilliant at that. He's better than that. They can never cage him. I, I, won't, I won't buy that. Who's going to cage Shore? Before I go to my sister, let's hear from Ban Pelo a tiny bit. We won't give him much because if we give him much, he becomes a pastor that wants to take. You give him a yard, he take a mile. So let's give him just about an inch. We won't give him a yard. <laughs> From below, over to you. Yes. In fact, I've never seen such a fantastic um, summation uh, outside uh, most of us that can we've I, can been I talking say something about. Quickly before you continue, yeah? You don't give submission no, because all the people today they've done philosophy and sociology, so they don't they know what they're talking about. I'm even panicking here because their submission today is Esclabata. Mm, Go ahead, Father. It's a, you see, it, our man, the, the last speaker from Europe. To be honest with, with you, I was gobsmacked and I was watching what was happening. On my left screen here with all the comments it's like they don't really want him to go and i don't want him to go as well because he presented the case for our agitation eloquently superbly and i think we need more of such people to continue to appear on this program so that this program is not just only limited to frank Bello. See, you have just brought in one hidden talent, just like Jocelyn Noah was discovered from the Biafran uh, uh, Republic. Now, I won't, I won't be too surprised, Mr. Moderator, that we've got countless of Biafrans at, as well out there that can present this case for our agitation eloquently the way the last speaker presented this you see i'm always fascinated when people are good at what they know how to do best i don't know what his profession is but to be on to be very honest with you he's proven this scientifically with facts with everything and he flowed perfectly look my hearts and my salute to you you've done a good job and a lot of all those viewers are fascinated and they're gobsmacked with you now the only thing i really want to hammer in and i think this was actually uh brought out by dr omoye akaba on the issue of the jinx that is hanging on nigeria she made mention of the jinx okay We've got too many of those jinx. Anyway, what is jinx? Jinx is a curse on the nation. The last speaker touched on some of the jinx and the molds that we have in our in our in our Yoruba land. Are we going to break them up? Yes, we will break those jinx. Referendum, too late. Omoyeleshoware agitation for 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 a revolution last year, just immediately after that fraudulent 2019 general elections. I picked up my phone and I called Ayogundimu from Citizen AY and I said to him, I predicted on my live stream, I think this was about three or four years ago that revolution is, in a, is inevitable in Nigeria. It will happen because I saw clearly the direction at which this country was piloted, the way this country has been going. Now, on a personal level, I think um, I had um, some, few, some few rapport with uh, Dr. Akagba on the other side. 
when she was uh, at um, well, when she was uh, an associate lecturer uh, at Lagos State University in in Lagos, in which she invited me to actually deliver a lecture to some of the mass communication students, to which I did, and it was a fantastic presentation. Brilliant students, but the question is. The Nigerian government, the Lagos State government, Bolatinumbu ruled Lagos State for eight years. Like I always say, what was his legacy? What legacy has he created after him as a public office holder in England? Boris Johnson, as the mayor of London, created the cycle superhighway. And that cycle superhighway reduced the total number of deaths that were killed on London Road by trucks, vans, and cars. Tony Blair came to power. And before he came to power as the Prime Minister of this great country, the United Kingdom, to which you and I and many people are free. That we can talk and we can express our opinion and her majesty's government will not even be bothered because it is our right tony blair came and then said the british people should trust him with a mandate and that mandate and what he wants to come in to serve is to educate the british people education 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 Tony Blair came, delivered. I'm, look, I'm not a Labour person. I'm a very, very strong conservative. But as at that time, knowing fully well that Tony Blair was equally born a conservative, for him to get that power because he spoke my language on education. And obviously, having been born by a father that was, an edu that was an educationist and an engineer. To me, education was paramount. I flowed with Tony Blair and he came to power. Tony Blair delivered his promises on education. Tony Blair reformed the educational system across the entire United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, not just London, the entire United Kingdom. Tony Blair came with his own vision of how he will create the academies. All the failing secondary schools that were under the Conservative Party, to which I, I well, I was one, reformed all those failing schools, brought those schools. To stand. Tony Blair pumped money into all the educational sector in the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. And that's why a lot of people, the Chinese, everyone, they want to come over here to the United Kingdom to get their children educated because education is one of the greatest strength of the United Kingdom for export. And that is why anywhere, anywhere in the world, you tell people you've got a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science degree from any of the UK universities, especially the Ivy League, they consider you as one of the finest, one of the best. The Americans will say to you, this guy is English major what else do you want what exact i've got dr omoya kaba listening she knows exactly what i'm talking about you get you get institutions in nigeria let us ask that jagger bandit who claim he is a leader how much has did he pumped into research into many of the universities in the old western region lagos state university to which 
Omoye Akaba lectured and was a product of the same uni. How much did Bola Ahmed Timobu pumped into that institution for research work? How much did his government pumped into Lagos State University for those aspiring academicians with the first class like Omoye to say, okay, this is how much we want to allocate for your PhD for those who want to pursue their PhD, whether in Nigeria or whether in abroad. That happened under the old Western region when Chief Obafemi Awolo. Can, can I come in quickly? Can I come in quickly? Uh, sorry, yeah. Did he give, uh, uh, Sister Amoye, did he give this man chance to be calling your name and calling your name? <laughs> Did you allow that? Or why is it? Why is he calling your name? Your name, my name. It's just keep repeating your name. I don't understand him. I'm Frank, why are you calling this I, I can name? understand. You know, is it the passion you have, or what? What was this? Tell us about it, Frank. Yeah, because I want to know. You just keep calling this. this maybe, this maybe, 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 maybe Omoya wants to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, let's bring Omoya into line because so that in. Oh my, why, 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 why would you allow him calling your name? You should have stopped him and said, hey, leave my name out of this. Go ahead, my sister. I, I think he was just using it as a point of reference where he's, you know, trying to give instances and all that to some standards in which, um, um, you know, the Nigerian structure has uh, maybe failed, uh, failed to do and failed to recognize uh, people who are passionate about what they do and how the structure ought to be, you know, in terms of comparison. I think that's why uh, Frank Biller has been mentioning my name and um, having worked together so while in Nigeria, so it's, you know, just easy for him to easily relate and we're on the same platform here to say that, uh, you know, this is how things should be and this is how, you know, people should be, um, you know, recognized in terms of providing structures and in, in terms of providing support system that would allow people like you and I, um, you know, to, you know, think of going back or think of um, restructuring the society in the way it should be and, you know, how the system has failed, uh, uh, failed us in terms of, uh, you know, how um, we, we actually have the passion to do certain things. But when you see how things are being run nowadays and how, you know, everything has fallen in and how, our leaders like our law uh namdi azik we have uh, you know put certain things in place for this nation to be built uh i think that's you know what uh, frank Bello is actually saying and you know in terms of comparison i'm mentioning my name so uh maybe frank Bello at this point stop <laughs> mentioning my name here this you know you know why i, I did that this, yeah? uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just yes. want frank, <laughs> frank Bello to smile a little bit that's why i have to bring that one because he was getting angry yeah. if i don't bring that one mm -hmm. he's gonna start pulling his hair how? Even though it has not. <laughs> and that was a good one, yeah. Frank, continue your song. Don't don't get angry anymore, yeah. If you get angry, yeah. Yeah, I'll come and get you. Yes. So now, now we have a situation now in our hand that I think we've we've had enough. Yoruba land. We've had enough. This time around, it is not the Igbo or Biafra that wants to retaliate. The Odudua Republic is going to retaliate. And I told some people, the Yoruba race, the Yoruba tribe, are one of the most sophisticated race on the planet. Like engineer, Adebayo Adam Adamolekun said, a war that the Yorubas will fight in seven days must have been planned seven years. The Hausas, the Fulanis, with their cha 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 keep talking, keep talking. And they were consultative, keep talking. Ruga, they kept talking. Headsmen. They kept talking. Ta, 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 the Yorubas, we kept our cool. We continue to plan our strategies. And these strategies 
that we've been planning for a long time. Make no mistakes. I am bold to tell the whole world as a very proud conservative Yoruba, Yoruba man and from Akure in those in Ondo state. Oduduwa Republic wants to retaliate. We will adopt three methods. I'm assuring them. We will apply the peaceful way. Referendum is too late. We don't want referendum. We're only left with two options. The two options is to allow us to go peacefully and let them hold on to their cow colony. In an event, they don't want us to go peacefully, then I'm afraid when we retaliate, we will retaliate big time. And I told someone, I think it was Ekanem Robertson, that I was on her show sometime. And this was about a year ago. I knew today will happen because I got completely fed up with that contraption called Location 9. I told Ekanem and I said, when we are ready to act, Ududua Republic will act and we will act in a dangerous way that will scare the whole world. It is coming and we will get it. I'll hand over back to you in the studio. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate your the way you're putting things. You're seriously putting things the way they're supposed to be. And we're moving on gradually. We're getting there bit by bit. I'm going to bring someone back again. Uh, this person has got something very important to say. Uh, and I've sent a link to someone online as well. So uh, hopefully I will get that person to speak, to join us very soon. Hopefully that is going to happen very, very soon. Girl, you are on now. Go ahead and speak Hello. to us. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, can I just say something very quickly? Yeah. It's more something like like a question, really. Can you turn your system down? Your name, where you're calling from, yeah. and go ahead. All right, okay, all right. Hello? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to ask, because I'm just going on what Frank said with regards to... Um, uh, the Otutua people um, retaliating and, you know, certain methods. The question I want to ask is, how can we, because there are so many different clusters of um, this Otutua movement, how can we sort of come together as one umbrella? You know, because I think if we come together as one umbrella, and as I said before, with regards to, you know, we with the Biafra people, feeding off one another because I, I've not heard anyone actually make reference to what I said what what's what's your um, your thoughts on that because like I said there's power in numbers you know if we do it alone like if we do it as a divided um, thing I don't think it will have more power because it will be like the Odutuwas are going in separately and then the Biafrans are going in separately but if we think of like just it visualize the map of Nigeria. If it's divided, it's, it's already divided in two. So if we think of those two together uh, against the one on the top, because we're two, there's more power. But if we go in like separately, it's not that we're going to join countries. It's just that we're just going to be feeding off one another. So, but we're we're we're, we're singing from the same hymnal. So, but in order for us to um, join together as two, we Yorubas, we can't continue to work um, as like, as a divided people. We have to, those clusters need to come together as one force, with one leader, which I think Chief Akitoye would be our main spokesperson. And then we can now join together with the leader of the Biafra and then sitting on conferences. I think if we do that, there won't be any bloodshed because now we're using um, the might of diplomacy and also um, the the might of the voice. So, um, because I think what what the the Fulanis have is they're thinking that okay, there might be bloodshed because they have the power of the gun. But no, we're, we we are educated. We have to use our brains. We have to use. 
the wisdom that God has given us to fight this evil. And the only way we can do it is we come together as one. So it's a divided force at the bottom against the, the force, the evil force at the top. So I don't know what people think about that. Thanks. Okay. okay. I'm going to okay. answer a little bit. And probably, uh, probably let Frank uh, answer a little bit. You can go back to your system now and listen to that. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Before I go ahead, uh, one of the things I would like to say for sure is this. One, retaliation as a way. Yoruba people are very patient. And when I mean patient, they're very, very, very patient. Uh, if Yoruba wants to do something to retaliate for what you're doing back to them, they look at you and they walk away. What they want to do is inside their belly. They're not going to carry it on. You're not going to notice. But when it's going to hit you, it's going to hit you very, very hard. <laughs> and when I mean hard, it will hit you very, very, very hard. Oh, dear. Uh, I will say something to you. Obasanjo is a typical Yoruba man. And if you wrong him, he will let you go so many years. He won't say anything. You keep wronging him, he won't yeah. say anything. Yeah. Yeah. You keep wronging him, he won't say anything. But the day he wants to revenge, he will sweep you off your feet. You will not be able to stand. Uh, uh, Mr. Femi Babalola, could you come in, please? Yeah. Uh, it will sweep you off your feet and you won't be able to, to stand because it will have studied you. It will look at your right. It will look at your left. It will look how you maneuver your hand when, you're, <laughs> when, you're, when your left foot is in the front. It will gauge how far your left hand goes to the back. You know where you're walking? When the left goes forward, the other side of the hand goes backward. It will actually measure it will not look alone. It will measure how far your hand goes to the back. back. And what's the different, difference between your full step, the right step, and the left leg? What's the difference between the distance they covered? It will study how bigger your left leg or your right leg is different from the other one. It will study you completely. Trust me. We've been studying all these things. And we know. Someone said, IBB said, if Yoruba is drumming a drum of war and it comes out and it sees it, uh, you know what it's going to do? Because it, yeah, Yoruba, I'm going to go back to bed. Because Yoruba will warn you and 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 then go quiet. And then when it wants to get out of you, uh, are you saying sad at me or what? Oh. <laughs> Oh, what are you doing? What, what, what was that red one in the mouth? Yeah, yeah, don't say it all, okay? I'm not saying it all, yeah? Okay, I know it now, yeah? <laughs> it. it doesn't matter. Look, it's gotten to that stage now that what we want to do is what we want to do. I told you guys the other day, I, I put a proverb on the ground. Do you know who chose the logo for APC? Do you know who did? Frank? The logo, for, the logo for APC. Do you know who or orchestrates that logo? What's the what's logo? No, I don't. What's no, I don't. Logo? I just saw them with the with the with the magic sweeping broom. Okay. Uh pa or uh, engineer of Panuga, do you know why APC was using broom? <laughs> you know the reason why they brought their rubbish broom. Yeah was to make us feel that uh, they wanted to sweep away sweep the, uh, oh, the, the PDP. God. These people the are PDP abroad, abroad Yoruba. You are too abroad Yoruba. Where are you from in Nigeria? <laughs> Ijebu. Okay, you're not a yacht, so you don't know much. The so means a lot. The broom, the, broom, the broom was to, they use it as a logo to um, to, to bring a kind of uh, identity to the people broom, that they are broom, bringing broom. to sweep. 
no, I, I, no. I, bro, I think I, I think I, bro, I, can I come in a uh, moderator? Yeah, come in, come in. I okay. think broom in, in relation to um to the adjust because you you see they they use broom you know to they, fly they the witches. Slave APC enslave everybody and everybody become momo. Because <laughs> do you know that APC and PDP are the same? They are. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me get. Let me come in. Let me come in. Okay, come in, sir. Come in. Let's hear your APC. These people initially, online, if you know how, this, if you uh, how engineer, APC. engineer, hold on one second. These people here, they've been very quiet. They're not functioning since. If you tread it wrongly, <laughs> they will kick you out. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> and everyone they kick out lately has been very, very angry. <laughs> they kick Femi, Femi okay out. He's still angry with me. They kick uh, uh, Li, uh, Azu, Golden Azu out. He's still angry. They <laughs> kick Doctor out. He's angry. They kick Femi okay no, out. Femi Babalara out. He's angry. So, Femi say Babalara. what you want to say, but tread it carefully. Go ahead. Because they're you warning know, me now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm speaking, yeah. I'm speaking on, a, on the on the rudiments of, of history. I don't, I don't just talk because I just want to make some people feel happy or whatever. I tell you how it's all built up so that you know exactly where you are going. PDP was in the power. There was no APC before. There was ACN, there was a CRC, and there was another party, all those things. Indeed. When they did their convention, they brought all these people, they found that um, there was no way AC, AC, not AC and then, or wait, was it ACN or something like that, whatever about. They knew that they could not penetrate the north. So they invited some people from the north to come and join them. Sarah, some people brought their money in, Saraki, uh, and the money that they were stolen by uh, the new minister for transportation now, which he got from the oil deal. Uh, I've forgotten his name now, if you can remind me later. That money, instead of him giving that money to PDP, CBN, he went and put it into the, the party that uh, Tinubu was working with. Now, you have to ask yourself, how come Tinubu was not their presidential candidate, even though he was part of the people that originated it? That is the, what we are talking about. That's how, how stupid we Yorubas can be. They gave us out completely. Tinubu was left in the back. And Tinubu was he started looking for a way to put somebody in if he wins, if they win the election. They won the election. They won the election. Then people came KPC is part of PDP. But they were not the PDP was not the one holding they, they APC. You, wrote to me, I met you. I wrote to my message, God bless you. That I Not was looking for it. Now, they, were, they were awake. They listened to you. Thank you. Now, eventually, <laughs> if, <laughs> now, eventually, after the convention, that's why the whole Yoruba people, we you know what? We are real all of this. Saraki could have been used. It could have been used for emancipation of a big uh, Yoruba, a, a big uh, power brokers within Yoruba. But because of the fact that we love power and authority, and we don't even have any of these things that we are looking for. We game that guy out. I'm not. I'm not. In, I'm not a fan of any of them, uh, Charaki or any of them. But they were the one playing the game. Then he put money down. Amechi put money down. How come Buari and uh, uh, the other guy, PDP guy, was in uh, Atiku? How come they are now the one people are going to collect five hundred thousand dollars from? To now subjugate the election during the com so that people are stealing uh, are selling their soul for money in Yoruba land. Look at look at how I'm so, looking at you. Did you see how I'm looking at you? I saw you, I saw you, but, uh, <laughs> but you know this is just this, this I, I saw you. I well, you, know, you we need to can I are you can you see the comments? <laughs> what, what comments? What is this? Did they, did they say I'm lying? Maybe they are the <laughs> Maybe they are the AFC. I haven't, even, I haven't even looked. I haven't even looked. I just know these people will start with you. They are already warning you. They are already warning you. They're already no, warning no, they're you. Warning. Okay. They're saying kick him out. 
Okay, let them let them come in with their own uh, answer. I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll stand by. Okay, let, let me let me try to give you quickly before it gets controversial. Okay, I'm still waiting for number three screen to come in. Someone has got a link to come into number three link, uh, an invitation to come into number three. Let me tell you one thing, right? The same method Tinubu used to kick Jonathan out. The same method we will use to sweep every enemy of the land house. The <laughs> antidote, the antidote Tinubu used is in, on my roof. What he put in the liquid, they put the broom inside. The things that will turn it round is on my roof. And doesn't only stay on my roof. The way to make it is in my head. So I don't have to write it down. I can make it anytime. If he's listening, he can listen. It's not a problem. The way to do it, the antidote to neutralize the nonsense it did when they dip all their stupid broom in that, in that concussion, the antidote is still there. We can bring it out and use it and neutralize it and kick them out. It's either they start behaving themselves and just pack their load. Je -je. Can I tell you one thing? I don't think we're going to go to war in Nigeria. We don't need a war. War is not an answer. War kills innocent people. War destroys people. War dis displaces people. So we're not looking for war. We are totally against war because there are better ways of doing things than going to war. So what uh, IBB can start listening and waiting for a drum of war from now till next year, we will come out from the back door. <laughs> they don't know. Let me give it to my sister, uh, doctor, uh, and then we hear from her because ladies has a lot of wisdom, especially when it comes to managing yeah. your home. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> But maybe you can make it easy for us, Doctor. Thank you very much. Um, regarding when you said APC is the same as PDP. Yeah. Well, let me, let me put one honest uh, fact. I mean, yeah. I'm not on the side of anybody. But the original ideology APC created has been defeated. Can I say something before you continue? I know, I know. you see? They were not embezzling money the way they want to embezzle money. They want to mm. embezzle money in with aeroplane, with a gigantic thing. And it was not free for all during Jonathan's days. They want even fear. They want more. Because they mm. knew Jonathan was going to close the door at them. Because he rumpled his mouth stupidly. Everything I want to do for my people in the South, I'm going to do it now. I've pleased you guys in my first time or in my first period or when I was doing the first one I was there. Now it's time to do, do this one. And they say, hey, okay. You think at it to Jibolo Shalawala Mashini? We're not going to do that. So, my sister, carry on. I'm listening. Yes. So, as I was saying, I mean, the original ideology that PC had was not what is operational now. If you take Lagos State as an example, what was going, let's forget that Tinubu even came to Lagos State to do anything. The last development or infrastructural development that happened in Lagos was during Boba Marwa. During the era of Tinubu, nothing happened. It was just, you know, a massing tout and a massing tout to structure them in a particular place and sharing money and all that. Infrastructure development came thereafter with Fashola. We give it to them. I'm not saying that they did not embezzle money or they did not do anything or they didn't, you know, but the thing was that everyone saw the model legal state used as a structure for development. And all other states, including Ogun State, including all other states in the south, in the western part, copied and, you know, aligned their developmental structures with that of Lagos State. 
which we all saw. But coming to the political, the national power and everything, coming together with uh, APGA, APGA, um, what's this party that aligned with, uh, uh, um, uh, with uh, Buhari's party, and then aligning with them, coming together and everything to be in control because they saw that the Southwest was doing well and, you know, they gained uh, 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 power through the Southwest and then the North, there's a bigger alliance than the Eastern part of Nigeria, all of that. But now everything is totally crumbled. We've been sold out. We've been sold to the evil powers. We've been sold to people who have enslaved us. Even right in Lagos State, nothing is working anymore. Maybe this coronavirus actually happened so that we can even see the worst of everything. Bad roads, they changed the way Ambode to because he was not dancing to the tune of the party, because he was not allowing them to, you know, bag him and to control the way he's supposed to, you know, distribute money and then share everything and abandon, you know, so many projects that he was supposed to do. They didn't allow that guy to do anything. They said, oh, his, his style of um, working with Lagos State, he wasn't favoring the party, he wasn't doing anything. Having said that, I mean, then you can now see how the main idea that the main ideology, the main philosophy behind the party died. I mean, everything actually crumbled because of one person's selfish interest. You want to be the only one who your family is, you know, con you know controlling resources in terms of um, allocating funds, in terms of uh, uh, construction, in terms of your putting your family member in, t in uh, signages, in terms of another family member in, um, you know, House of Reps, Senate, and you know, structuring and positioning people like that. We don't need that anymore. Even in Lagos, we need to even start breaking the jinx from this so called political powers, political system, political structures that will not allow development to take place. How can people calling themselves um, uh, road transport union workers, you know, controlling how to distribute or to work with uh, uh, COVID 19 a relief system? Nothing is in place. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you can see the way everything is now being turned into, um, should I say, um, uh, uh, one man agenda, one man being in control. You want to be the person, you know, getting resources for 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 uh, for the national at national level and also controlling resources at the local level. Look at what happened with the uh, uh, primaries in Lagos. Nothing. I mean, it was such a shame that even within the same party system, you know, Governors and aspirants were just, you know, uh, 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 um, washing their dating linings in the public. I mean, everything has become a mess. You know, the zeal for power, the zeal to be in certain structure, the zeal to become uh, the one who is controlling budget, the one who is controlling finances in, in certain areas as, you know, overtaking the actual true essence of what the political party should be doing. Um, I'm not a party member of APC or PDP or I'm not uh, aligned with anyone, but I'm only trying to point, point that the whole um, agitation, the whole essence of everything, you know, has failed in terms of how, um, how politics is being run. And that may even happen even after, after we say we disintegrate from the so-called Nigeria. If we decide not to politicize the disintegration, it will be better remove politics, remove political structure. If you go down, like uh, engineer said previously, if you go the traditional way, the natural way it should be done, if it goes that same way, fine. But if you politicize everything in terms of your disintegration, and then um, talking about the last caller, we mentioned that uh, we should align with Biafra and, um, and uh, you know, dividing it in terms of the south, the down part and the, the top part, which is the north part, and just having the two systems. Uh, the two the two geographic areas it's a welcome idea but to be honest i don't see it working even among yoruba people themselves there is no unity there is no uh one voice by the time you're agitating for something by the time you're doing something one person will be the traitor one person will still be the person going back you know to do things that were left behind and how can we align that with other ethnic groups? If we say ethnic groups, nations should stay alone and be of you know, their own um, independence, I, I welcome, let's leave it only at this level. 
but not to align with any other ethnic group. If the Dua um, um, nation wants to rise up, let it be only the Dua. I mean, because this would also come later on as another kind of um, uh, uh, conflict of interest, conflict of uh, 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 intentions, conflict of resources, and um, let nations build themselves. Let's build internally, not aligning with anyone or depending on any other nation or depending on any other structure to be able to make your own work. So if we as the Dua group nation, rise and work within what we have as our own structures, our own system, use what we have to get what we want right now, fine. Uh, I'm not uh, against or mm -hmm. I'm not uh, being tribalistic or being, uh, you know, um, uh, on any ethnic group, but it's a way to look inwards because even among Yoruba, we have different um, groups, we have different ethnic groups, we have different societies, we have different languages, and then it's how to make one voice work. That would actually happen if we decide to bring the biafra society the biafra nation you begin to have different conflict of interest you know where it comes to oh are we going to be sharing money okay what is in it for us how would we share resources that is what people start to talk about so but if we talk about how to make the structure work itself from the from the beginning then you can get ahead with but if you decide to start thinking about sharing resources how do we who is going to be in charge of which resources and all that i mean I don't see that um, coming the way we should. We should. Uh, we would be planning, or we should be restructuring the nation itself. So this is my own take on everything. Coming together as field, uh, staying together. There's no way out. And moving together is not longer. You know the the way we should see it. So if nations would um, would rise and say um, they they. They want to build their own nations themselves. Why not? I mean, then we spend less time trying to please one ethnic group, trying to please the other societies, trying to build any nation or trying to say, um, bring your own resources together, bring your own resources together. There are some countries that don't have oil, that does not have anything called mineral resources, and they still do well. So why not? We have agriculture. We have uh, our own uh, way of uh, ruling and whatever education, whatever structure you want to build, let's use whatever resources that we have instead of waiting to say, okay, until we have oil before we develop. Now there's global pandemic. Do we need oil to do anything now? No, we don't. Nobody's mind. Oh, nobody's in anything. So if, if we decide to use what we have to get what we want, why not? So that's not paid off in the, in the end of it. So I don't see us coming together with uh, any other nation other than building internally our own structures how to get each boost to agree with those, how to get security people to agree with cookies to agree with uh, Lugosians, I don't see where they belong to, how to, you know, bring all these other ethnic minority groups together. I mean, to have one voice, more representation. I mean, that's what we should be looking at instead of, um, you know, trying to align with another ethnic group and, and then we'll go back to the same point where we started from. Yeah, that's my take. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. I really appreciate you. Somebody is asking me that we should answer the lady's question. Sometimes it's not all questions that people ask. We answer online. Some few questions, you reserve it and speak to the person, person uh, in private, either in private or in a way, because you cannot play all your card in one go. You need to wake up. If you want to leave this platform now, you can leave. If that is because of that, I answered the question. I think I made reference to the question that yeah, you, uh, you did. You did joining the Yeah, I yes. guess you did yes. make reference, mm -hmm. to and I tried to the, the people in my point. that were saying that are not for us. Ah, okay. They were against us because all they want to do ah, is okay. actually to come and break us. They can't break us. It's too late. We're united, united with that, united, uh, united with the dua. All right. So uh, it's a shame we 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 we. We don't play party politics, but we, we play. We don't play with our brain. We, we use our brain. Mr. Femi Babalola, you will do. I don't know what happened to your vehicle. Your vehicle must be driving at about five miles an hour. That's why it takes you so long to show up on my screen. Uh, welcome to the show again today. I want to say your opening submissions. Well, thank you very much for having me back today. Thank you. After the, they give me right card yesterday, the truth is bitter. <laughs> I will continue. I thought you wouldn't talk about my that own. <laughs> and then uh, I believe on that word my sister is saying. We don't need to affiliate ourselves with anybody. Let Odudua stay their own and fight for their 
what they believe on and we will get it before anybody i can bet you it's the truth nothing by the truth not about racism here because it seems that some of the people uh, the other ethnic that are going they, they want to go out of nigeria they they feel so i'm sorry to use this statement i'm not going to apologize in anybody they feel so superior and they feel so that they know more other ethnic in nigeria i have to be sincere to you even i've said that i want to come here I will not speak English, I will speak Yoruba because in the constitution of the United Nations, what makes you to be a nation? Where is your mother's language? Where is your heritage language? Okay, where is your heritage? You know, can you defend your heritage? That's what makes you to be a nation. Like in Catalonia, they speak Catalonia and they speak Spanish as well, but they don't want to hear anybody speaking Spanish as well. Only Catalan. Okay, and then what I'm trying to say here is reality. If they like it, they should stay. If they don't like it, they should not stay. I don't care. But any money, you pay your money. Me in Kotomo, me last of Koki, me if I buy our I buy Shimonia, we don't want to live with these people. And they book my mother, don't be see abroad, don't be see UK, don't be see US, Canada. Come back, see my car money a day. Yoruba, they should be teaching their children Yoruba language because to my ya to my bad boy, Yoruba, one in the passport, Kima Kurotoni, oh my debe, and my car money. You should teach our children Yoruba. I mean, I take it aggressive. I'm not joking. Even say if you if you want to live, you have independent Yoruba, independent today. If you don't speak Yoruba, then if you don't speak Yoruba, you cannot do any good thing in Yoruba land. Yeah, we should we should give ourselves we should we should very aggressive what what we are talking about here because the whole world is listening to this TV is a very standard TV all over the world and the people are watching online as well. If you don't speak Yoruba language, you cannot get a good job. It's rather you. As we come to Europe, some of us uh, come to Europe, they start cleaning toilet like what my sister is saying, then we put them on that shoe as well. Okay, thank you very much. Even if you want to contest in your language, if you don't speak your language, you, you, you will not even have the position. They should go and learn our language. They should go and learn our mother's language. That is why the these people are using to be able to oppress Nigeria. That is what they are using to divide Nigeria. I'm telling uh, you the truth. Nothing by the truth. Mr. Femme Babalola, can I ask you one question quickly? Because yeah. I like to always put things uh, straight and make sure that everybody understands what we're doing and everybody understands what we're saying. I'm going to put yeah. an argument forward to you. I'm just looking for a screen that's going to be me and you quickly. Uh, okay. okay. Let's get this one so that we can both look in our face and ask ourselves questions. And if you answer this one correctly, I think you're going to be having a, an easy night. If you answer it badly, I'm sure you're going to get yourself into another mess. Uh, quickly, <laughs> the, the, the Deltas, the, 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 the people from Benin that doesn't speak Yoruba, where will you put these people? Because this is something the people, the, we need the, to the people in the... Uh, I will give you a, some, I will give you a very good answer. In Catalonia, which I lived for many years, let me use it for example. In Catalonia, there's some part of Catalonia that uh, they don't speak the same language with Catalonia and they're living together. They are family. Okay? Then we can have a second talk of it, a second thought of it that, uh, okay, we speak Pidgin. Okay? Or we have another language. Okay, let, let, don't, let me, don't let me go there. Let me go to Holland. Holland here. In Holland, I live very close to Holland here. In Venlo, in Venlo, eh, they speak their uh, mother language and it's different from the Netherlands language. We can manage that, and that is not going to be a problem for us if the Edos want to go with Yoruba. Hello, I can hear you. Oh, I no, can hear because you because I, I I wasn't talking so and when I want I'm not talking I sometimes mute my microphone so continue sir. yeah yeah in Netherlands here I live very close to the Netherlands here Vendo the border town here the I don't know is it is only last year that I tried to discover in the office I went to one office and uh, in the bank and they are trying to speak. I said, which language is this? He said, yeah, that's their mother's tongue. I said, but you are from Netherlands. How many languages do you have? He said, oh, we have many languages. Okay. And then they, 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 they learn the, they learn the, 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 the Netherlands language and they're they still speaking their own uh, uh, tribal, the, 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 um, their tribal language as well, which is, I love it. The same thing in Catalonia. We have 
We have Lerida, we have uh, Gerona, we have Catalonia. The, 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 if, in fact, the place I live is the capital of, if Catalonia don't have their independent, I live in big then. And in that place, the Catalonia they are speaking there is different from the Catalonia they are speaking in Barcelona. Is different. And in, in Lerida is different in, as well. Can I come in for a second, right? This gentleman yeah. that we know, I don't care what you do, I don't care what you say, mm -hmm. you only join Facebook with your account in the last few days and you want to come and uh, cause trouble here, you can't. You can't. I've told you before, if you want to leave about 10 minutes, leave! We're not tying you down. You cannot keep saying, ah, they're not saying what I want to hear, I'm leaving. This is rubbish, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Uh. You're leaving since. Who is tying you down? You only got 23 friends. You didn't share the program and you're making unnecessary noise on my platform. Did I invite you? If you want to leave, man, come on, leave. Be a man. Don't be like that. Look, the people here are here to learn. We think, we reason, and we work together. We don't work like a one-man band. We work together here. We reason together here. We do things together here, right? You can't come and be saying, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. If you want to leave, leave. You can you can't stir up things here. Because the people here are wise people. We are learning. I'm learning, they're learning. Every one of us is moving forward. So I don't know why you keep coming here and saying you're leaving, you're leaving, you're leaving. Go, go, go. And anybody that wants to follow him can go as well. Because let me tell you one thing, we will step in each other's toes sometimes. But how we deal with it is what matters. Yoruba will step on Igbo's toes. Igbo will step on Yoruba toes. It's not the end of the world. We are bound to. But can I tell you one thing? This platform is going to bring those two people together. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what any of this platform... Because I said to you, I'm not in for war. I'm here for reconciliation. That everybody, the right will be happy, the left will be happy. I'm not talking about the North. The Southerner, I'm talking about. But the Igbos, the, the Yoruba, the Niger Delta, the BPO, uh, the, 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 the others will be happy. <laughs> That's what concerns me. It doesn't concern me if you, as an individual, want to get angry. Uh, one minute. Okay, thank you. The, the reason I'm saying all this is because of the way we want to do things. We want to, this is why we gave the platform to the, 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 the Bear Friends on Thursday. Because we're fighting the same cause. And then on Friday, we bring to work together. We're planning something different tomorrow. We want to speak to Niger Delta and see what they want. Because we have to resolve that issue. We have to know what everybody wants. We have to know how to go about it. We, know to know, we have to know where to go about it. We, we have to know what to do about it. We can't just ignore it. We can't just forget about it. Because it's not going to go away. It's going to keep popping back. <coughs> Don't come and cause hatred there. Because I'm not here for hatred. I'm here for love. Love of our southerners. Because the southerner and the southerner are too much interwoven. The only question I'm asking Mr. Babalala tonight is that, okay, if you say Yoruba, Yoruba. The Yoruba are not the only one who's going to be on this part of the world when we finally leave. So, are we going to say because you don't speak Yoruba, you're not going to be entitled to... As long as you speak your mother language. If the if we have region on, in regions in uh, so many regions in the new Odudua nation, because you know in Bini they have Oba of Bini, and, yeah, Oba, and speak Yoruba. Oba is a Yoruba language. Yeah, and and they relate with Yoruba. And they relate with yeah. Yoruba. They are Yoruba. They, they, yeah, they, are, they Yoruba. are Yoruba. Yes, in Wari they even have even even even, even Wari. the Lagos state Bini are the people that discover Lagos state. In Lebino, yeah. in Lebino. So yeah, I, I want you to 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 learn something. We we're going to have to work together. 
if we're making yes, mistakes, we work if, together. If we, 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 we are going, we are going to work correct. together. I have every but one right I want to correct it. Yeah. This is why I put my back yeah. Mr. Afe Babalola there to say, okay, you're saying Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba. What about the Benin people? What about the people in Benin yeah. that doesn't We are together. We, we are together with Benin people and nobody will take their territory. Where if we have independent with by the grace of God, more than even anybody, nobody is going to take anywhere in Benin land. Nobody will, they are, they are, nobody will take it. Is the, we, nobody we both, both, both anyway. both we not the land. Well. Because what we don't want yeah. to happen is when we finally leave, we don't want anything. This is what this platform is all about. We don't want to strive yeah. for anything yeah. I, 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 that will cause promotion you, or unnecessary yeah. hatred for one another. Even Absolutely, with yeah. I, I do it before they get to Lagos, and they cannot do without coming yeah. to Lagos because they have their team. Absolutely, there. like in Europe, like in Europe, you have said it yesterday. We are going to work together. We are yes. going to work together, but 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 for us to be able to get the team done, let Yoruba fight their battle by themselves. Let them fight their battle. Let them fight their own by themselves. And let's know who is not in IQ no, and not what I who said is not to a you, coward. Sir. What I said to you the mm. other day is that when two people are being enslaved and they want to mm. break out. If one wants to break mm. out without the other one, it might be zero thing, zero chance. But but if but, but, but let's cut together. It will be better. But, and I'll tell you why it will be better. The reason it will be better yeah. is because when the slave master wants to chase two mm. people running in two different directions, it's very hard. Mm. And but but, but let their leader let their leader stop saying that Yoruba are coward. Let their leader stay, should stop saying Yoruba a coward. There is not any Yoruba man that ever worry. come up. Any, anybody can and say anything. Of Yoruba. Let him stop that idiot me, that you say. Let me, or let me tell you, Mr. Babalala, let, let me tell you one thing. Who is they it? can say they have a right of expression. They have a right to express themselves. But, 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 but we never offend them. They are the ones that even betray us. Don't worry. They about never, betray. That they is are the ones that us. Let's look for the future, man. Come on. Let's... Yeah, I, I agree with you. Sure I, I, agree I agree with you. Everything. I agree with you. You understand? Yeah. Anything yeah. they say against us, I'm, I'm sorry, I will try and translate this if I can. Uh, my Yoruba might not be that deep, yeah? I'm a little original. We have to chase the foul eaters away before we come and make the foul and say, why did you have to come out of yeah. the cage? You understand? If they have problem with the northern people, if they have problem with the other ethnic, but they should leave your by alone. We are one, don't and then worry, you should stop calling about that. Bad people they coward, have a right they coward, they are being, they are leaders, blah, blah, blah. blah. We're fighting the same cause. We're going to move out. We, I will make sure that the Biafrans and the Yoruba move out together at the same time. Because that is it possible? Yeah. Is, is, is it possible? It's going to happen. Because is it possible is for the same happen? day Yoruba and Yoruba and the Biafra go the same day? They will, they will pull each other's hand out. I, I'm guaranteeing you that now. Is we be I will tell you long, after 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 the interview, I will tell you something. After okay. the interview, I will discuss some issues yeah, to a diplomat. Can I tell yeah. you how it works? Yeah. They might be planning yeah. more for Yoruba now. But when it gets to yeah. that point to say, ah, oh, you can't leave me here now. You can't leave me oh. here. I don't want to be here. Mm. Then something will enough, be done. Man. Trust me. It will happen. Uh, 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 they, they, are, they are not patient. They are, they are always aggressive. They always talk something that uh, each time they insult. Instead of it to uh, let's talk together, they will always abuse you. They will always talk what is not even. Uh, it's not normal. They don't. They don't want to learn. They don't want to learn, and that is what is killing the country. Okay, I want you to leave the beer friends alone. Don't talk about beer friends yeah, alone. Thank you. Leave them alone. Yeah, right. thank Everybody you. Everybody can much. talk about beer friends, but don't talk about beer friends. Right? Don't yeah, talk thank about you. Friends. It will. It will make life a little busy. Let's go to doctor because she's put a light on and i've brightened her camera before so i'm going to turn <laughs> her camera down a little bit so that her face stops shining and people will saying did you use too many ideas but to rub your face go ahead <laughs> <laughs> you see i know how to make people laugh because it's the best <laughs> therapy they said god bless you go ahead yeah thank you thank you very much i'm really enjoying uh, this discussion and this um, whole program. Um, the last person who just joined, I really appreciate the fact that uh, you did not make some kind of blunders because uh, uh, when you know your history, when you know where you're coming from, you know where you're going to. I mean, taking the adults along and taking the Bini people along in Yoruba culture is actually, is not 
I, I don't see any way out. I mean, the Edo's are Yoruba as also, if you know your history, if you know where you come from. I'm Edo. Um, my name is Omoye. Omoye, if you would say it's the same meaning you have in core Yoruba language, the same you have in Benin, the same meaning. So thank you for not making that blunder and saying the, the Edo's. And I was actually reading the comments in one of the segments and saying, why don't you take uh, the Edo's, uh, the Bini chants with Amoteku? You know, if you say you are taking the Benin's along with you and I mean that's also true. I mean, if you if you know history and um, if you if you read more about the the Benin Empire, uh, you know those empires that existed in those days, you will find that the Benin Kingdom is the strongest, and it still remains the strongest in 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 in, in Midwest as it was called then, uh, and even till now. I mean, you cannot rule that out in terms of. Um, the forces, the security, and everything, the powers that the Benin's have. And, you know, uh, the, the Benin Wall, I don't know if people remember that was, there was a great Benin Wall then in, 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 in many centuries ago that is likened to the, China, the Great China, the Great Wall of China. I mean, that is how formative the Benin structure is. And I'm, 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 I'm proud to say that, uh, I mean, Bini is part of Yoruba. If you want to, there's no negotiation with if they want to go with us. I mean, this is we should work along, along and align with um, the structures of the Bini Kingdom, the Bini, the Bini structure, the Edo people, and all of its uh, entirety, and also people from the South South and um, uh, all all Midwest region. Before, I mean, everything was just divided and politicized. Uh, um, you know how it's, it's all became state and where regions we can say, okay, we are Deltas, we are Yoruba, we are Ligotians, we are all of that. No, I mean, this is this is what we are looking for. This is the formation we are looking for. We are looking for the formation where um, um, people of this heritage and not regarding the language and not regarding, like uh, our brother just said that, you know, it's one umbrella body, but you know, you have um, the sub, sub um, um, language where uh, the Edo language comes in, um, the Fon language comes in, uh, all of that sub subsect of this uh, main uh, um, dialect of Yoruba language itself, so or in Yoruba culture, the Yoruba identity itself. So, I mean, I can agree less to what you mentioned and um, to, to what you've just said. And uh, let's think about uh, even the security of uh, 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 Motekun, including Bini chant also. I mean, it's also powerful in a way that uh, if you're calling on your own identity, your own um, traditional way of um, governance, your own traditional way of setting up your own security and everything, there's nothing less to what we should we should agree on in terms of formation. And um, we're not preaching a trade, we're not preaching um, any tribalism in terms of Biafra and all that. Let's leave that aside. That's what I'm saying, like, uh, if you go to the market, it's the person who you are bargaining with that you should look at. You're looking at internal structures. Leave those um, external noise and external uh, factors that will disturb your, your focus and things and um, uh, the place you're going to. So this is my own submission um, towards what you just mentioned and towards this discussion because um, there is no way you want to uh, 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 fight your own battle and then you start thinking about somebody else's headache or somebody else's problem. No? If you want to break out, I understand also the fact that um, if uh, uh, the master is trying to chase two slaves, um, which direction will he be able to go to? If they are also forming and also aligning, we're not in competition, we're not in any uh, uh, war against any other ethnic group. But if we all agree at the same time to live at the same time, form the same kind of structures, but just you know for different ethnic groups, I think that would be better because if we have similar structures, if we have a motel and they have the other kind of ones for their own ethnic group, it's fine. If we are all living at the same time, we can also agree at the same time that um, okay, on so, so appointed date, we all want to form our own states. If all nations in, in Nigeria also say that, yes, this is when we want it, we want to have this uh, uh, um, uh, 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 liberation, it's time for us to all liberate. Well, it's, it's all perfect and it's all good for us. Um, I mean, this is just my take on, on the discussion. Thank you very much, sister. Well said, well spoken. Uh, should I go to Mr. Engineer Femi Panuga because he was saying something? Or did he force himself out again? I think he's going to go. Let's go to uh, this man that managed. Uh, my my, my food is working today. He managed to keep himself quiet today. I don't know how I did that. 
Fantastic. Rembrillo, go for it. Yes, um, thank you very, very much, Mr. Moderator. Um, my own little contribution to this is that, um, number one, I can see that fire in Mr. Femi Babalola. Obviously, um, Mr. Femi Babalola is so passionate about the Ududua Republic, and I think for now, that anger and exactly what happened in the past, especially between founding fathers, mistakes were made in the past. Yes, we all agreed. Had Namdi Azikiwe and Obafemi Awolowo reached an agreement and they formed a formidable force against the Fulani Caliphate. Perhaps right now, you and I, we won't be sitting here talking about how we're going to break up that nation. Perhaps the entire old Southern Protectorate, as it was called then, would have been a paradise on earth. Perhaps, as at that time, these two leaders who were learned, were educated, and obviously, Zeke being the most highly educated amongst them and the oldest, had they spoken with one voice and they agreed with one another, perhaps these two leaders should have formed a better country, even if we have. This is the formation of Nigeria. All countries, because it's three, been divided from the Niger and the River Benue. It is there. All the nation. All the states under the river Niger to the west, starting all the way from state down to Lagos. River Niger, Benue, all the countries under river Benue are all Biafran territory. And that was why. It was physically there. If you Google the map of Nigeria, that is there. You can see River Niger and you can see River Bene. It is there. So when we have all those countries on the River Bene, what, what was this called? Eastern region. River Niger, River Benue, they met eventually at Lokoja. And then they flowed together and then emptied to the Atlantic Ocean. When you look at that point where they met together, you'll find out it is Jeppa. Jeba was that, that particular area. Uh, now, now, Frank, when you look at the demarcation today, what's happening to your internet? You, you keep, we keep losing you and coming back and losing you and coming back. But oh well, maybe, maybe, we maybe, 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 maybe it is bad connections. I don't know. Maybe. Am I? Uh, is it okay now? Don't worry, continue. I will lower your bandwidth, so that would be good, yeah. Oh, okay. And then, when you look at how those two rivers, Niger, Benue, flowed together, now, look at those states underneath. Edo State was part of it. And then, it comes down. 
eastern region starts on the eastern eastern block of that river the demarcation is there the that demarcation is already existing in the formation of that country but who truncated everything the moment Awolowo decided to work with Namdi Azikiwe and Dr. Mike Opara decided and advised Namdi Azikiwe wrongly not to honor the invitation that Chief Obafemi Awolowo stretched to him so that the entire southern Nigeria can defeat the Fulani. Zeke decided obviously to pitch his tent with the Fulanis because guess what? He was not born in Biafran land. Zeke was born in Zungeru and his blood was rooted to the Fulanis. Have you all forgotten that the same Nkemba of Inewi who fought for the liberation of Biafra even respect respected our own Awulowo far more than Namdi Azikiwe of his own and will rather Ojuku will rather listen to the late chief of Bafemi Awulowo because he knew Ojuku knew that Awulowo will not negotiate any bad deal for the yoruba land and obviously ujuku himself having educated at king's king's college lagos before his father sent him to eton and then on to oxford so it is clear there but for now don't forget the the same feudal system to which you and i and many Igbo people in Biafran, Ududua Republic, are fighting themselves over was the same problem Go on created. Who destroyed the three regions? Uh, Western region? I'm, I'm going to come in there, uh, uh, Frank Bello. I'm so sorry to come in, in the middle of your uh, presentation, but the best way to go forward is to move on from this and i might have to be forced to turn the comment off this uh mm -hmm. broadcast if you don't stop it guys in the next five minutes i will turn the comment off uh what we want to do is to break away and break away safely uh you yes. cannot pinch me pitch me against the biafran because i see biafran as my blood i'm a yoruba person but the yoruba and Igbo will come a long way we come a long way, not just a long way, we come a very long way, right? And uh, I love to be our friends, right? People can say, sometimes they said, if two family goes, if, if brothers and sister, brothers and brother goes into the same room and lie to one another, they come out with a smile. But then when they tell each other the truth, sometimes they come out with a front face. Sometimes the truth might be bitter. Let's take with a pinch of salt and move on with it. Sometimes you come out from the same room after an argument, you come out, you don't discuss, you just don't want to talk about it. You just want to move on and do what you want to do. Guys, uh, uh -huh. you're so brilliant. Maybe APC is having, has given a battle. Oh, oh, sorry, hey, everybody. Who is that? I said, don't say things like that anymore. If you say that again, I will bite you. Behave yourself. Let's be friends. We're, we're friends. We don't care what has happened in the past. What we want to do is to move on and makes a lot of sense to what we want to fight. Okay, Almanjiri coming down south. They're here, they've been here before, they're still here. Uh, we just need to advise our people how to deal with it. The best way to deal with it is to make sure you inform your family, be very vigilant, be very vigilant, be very vigilant. We're gonna create a new reporting system for Nigeria. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a WhatsApp group and I will share the number very soon. If you see anything suspicious about these people, please don't go to your police station and report it because they will infiltrate it. 
and it will be a bad thing for us. So you report it to us at Heritage Television and we will pass it to the right channel. Uh, tomorrow, I will announce the number. If you see anything suspicious in your area, you tell us in England by WhatsApp. When we get a WhatsApp, we will deal with it. We will investigate it. If it's true and if it's reliable, we will follow it up. Because if you go to police station these days, in most cases, the boss is uh, full of oh, oh, oh. We don't want that to happen. We don't want... Uh, 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 let me read some few comments and see whether people are behaving so sad themselves. Uh, okay, let's take it from uh, Jimo Akim. Me and Josephine Noah fight just started. Don't fight my sister, otherwise, I will send the full of to you. And they will come with their uh, Dogo Yaro and feed you with uh, Goro. You won't hit for the next one month. You will only be eating more. We respect so much our leader in Americano so much and what respect him too. Yeah, we respect him. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Moderator. No, you yes. can respect the Yorubas as well. You should respect uh, other ethnic as well. Uh, you know what you I'm going to do? I'm going to turn these people's voice really up so that they don't interfere with what I'm doing. Yeah. All of them are Mr. just... They just adults. They still be even like uh, primary school children. <laughs> Mommy, he pitched me first. Daddy is right. <laughs> no, we don't want that here. We need to do our business. Um, Buki, Justin, Noah, Buki, Taiwo, you are right. I said it to you, but seems that none. That's not the case. We keep going back and forth, and that is not good. Uh, if you are Biafran here, please let us ignore Mr. Femi. Oh, very Odile Richard, very sensible. Uh, on the program, Mr. Frank Evangelist, something. What time is the program coming up tomorrow? We're trying to fix it for four o'clock. Mr. Osa, inbox me quickly. You have my number? Inbox me. I need you for tomorrow. Osa, I need you for tomorrow. Uh, Okay, Kayo Day, we Yoruba and Igbo are not matured. I was a Fulani, I'm more mature. Yes, that's true. You see, this one, yes, it's Yoruba, but it's telling the truth. So we just need with it. Me, I don't fight, I don't take petty petty fight though. This is why I turn everybody's microphone on. <laughs> so that they don't interfere with that. Uh okay, Justin, Mr. Femi, please relax. Thank you. Mr. Femi, listen first. Thank you. Mr. Frank Bello, you are so cultured and well bred. Thank you. Yeah, well, if he said that, I don't know about that. But he bred you guys wrongly, though. You guys be behave something like a pack of wolves when, when, when he says something that you guys like. Uh, I like I like your consistency anyway. Mr. Morikura, how did they how you day, my brother? Tony got so no, I'm cool, you cool too. I think Femi is too brilliant. Yes, he's very brilliant. Please, uh, that's from Olaiwala Matthew. Uh, only put your leg out for from hiding place. Ah, Akim. Oh, he's saying Mr. Femi should just uh, take a cup of cold water. That's dry, dry, dry. He said, Mr. Femi, take cold water. It will be good for us. We are trying to, we're trying our best to work with us with with our brother but we are taking these two personal oh yeah that's true mr frank please educate everyone on this platform you know, that kind of education that you give sometimes is bad or to my max we want to work with their friends but on the mutual respect everybody is respecting everybody we won't accept insult because we want to be mature everybody is mature i told you guys you guys are not pure your or to my max you're not pure your as well how could you be saying that? Eh? You are Tumba now. You're supposed to know how to organize things. I told you earlier on, even if someone is doing something to you as a Yoruba person, you remain. Ah, please be calm. Yeah, you be calm, man. Come on. You just need to be calm. When you are calm, everything will work well. Okay, let's go back to this one. Uh, my brother engineer is frozen out. Should I replace him quickly? Ola Yomikoeki, I'm waiting for you. Are your Ogundimo? I'm waiting for you. If any of oh yeah, Ola Yomikoeki, I'm gonna send you a code now. I've just seen him there. He's waiting in line for me, my wonderful brother. I love that. Uh, okay, let me let me deal with Koeki first, and then we continue because we just want to have love. 
You know, you know this song. You know Barry White song. Maybe I should play it. Love. Boo, 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 boo. Love. We need to love one another, brothers and sisters, because that's the only thing. We are for reconciliation, and that's what we're gonna get. No matter what anybody says, we are reconciling, we are going to reconciliate all of us. Don't make music out of my speech, oh, because I know you Nigerians, when someone makes mistake online, you come up with some music and say reconciliation. Mr. Everything, you can see. <laughs> okay. Allah, your code is on the way. Your link is on the way to you. Okay. Let me just send it to make sure I might be living in. in yeah, okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, one second. As if I know your time is up, young lady. I'm going to give my sister a final submission for the day. Before the final submission, everybody wants to give you a standing innovation because you are very lovely, you are very wonderful today, and you've done some good work. You know what you're going to do for me? The, head, the top of your laptop, pull it down towards you a little bit. The top of your laptop. Okay, that is it. Yeah, that's it, my sister. This is how we want to see you today when you're giving your final summer. You go as long as you like. Your song, your song. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this platform to, to give my own opinion, my own voice to the issue at hand, the issue on uh, Algeria's invasion in Lagos, in the southern part of Nigeria, uh, the spread of COVID-19, uh, disintegration, to do a nation and everything. I mean, it's been a wonderful discussion. I really um, appreciate this effort. I never knew something like this was going on at the background, like some people, you know, uh, working at the background to make things work at the forefront. Um, I would like to join <laughs> some other time if you invite me. <laughs> and I'm sorry about the, my my late coming to the show, but um, thank you very much for having me and uh, for allowing me to just give a little bit of my own uh, view on the discussion that we had today. Thank you very much, and um, I hope the struggle continues and we do relent. This is this is the only thing I have to say. Thank you very much, my wonderful, beautiful sister. Can I tell you one thing? You got two better things in your score. We will have to keep bringing you back. As long as you have our time, we will keep bringing you ah. back, and nobody can stop Okay. That. Because the love no between problem. us has to grow. You know why we bring you back again? Hold on. No. You are from. Edo State. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow, four o'clock? Um, for nothing. I'm I'm actually free. Okay, so okay. you're on the program tomorrow with Osas as well. So tomorrow oh, is okay. Edo's day. No beer friend. Yes. No Yoruba. It's only Edo. <laughs> we want to hear the yes. Day. If anybody's gonna be there, it will be Frangulo because it takes over. We run the show together apparently. And uh, the reason oh, we're okay. running the show together is actually to get him to the point whereby I can wash my hand and say, Frank, <laughs> because when this struggle is over, I will be mm. over with this political thing. I'm not a politician. I'm just doing this mm. to make sure that there is reconciliation between everybody because I love mm. peace so much. And uh, <laughs> peace is my only agenda in life. Uh, I might be brutal, though. I might be very brutal. I might be brutal. But I love peace. And I will bring peace to every level. You know what? Mm. I'll tell you a story before you go, yeah, so that you guys can know exactly what's happening, right? I used to work in Tesco's in the early 90s, and I was the night manager in Tesco's at that time. And uh, every time, they call me Eddie. They didn't know my name mm -hmm. is Adi, because the first lady I work with, she's in there. So she doesn't know how to pronounce Adi. So she called me Eddie. So because she called me Eddie, everybody keep calling me Eddie, and I just accept it. <laughs> and... It gets to a stage we employ some Nigerians, both Yoruba and Igbo. And these people will curse the hell out of me. Because they're lazy. They will curse me. Every day they curse me. And I don't say anything. I just get on and work. I don't say anything. They will call me stupid. They call me name. They will even be giving code when they want to make something on the shop floor. They will give themselves code that is coming. It's coming. So... <laughs> And they didn't know I know all this. And when they're taking things, I put a deaf, uh, I just turned a blind eye to it. And they didn't know I hear and see 
Well, I just pretend. Because at the end of the day, they're my brothers. So their life must continue. You understand? So one day, they messed me up badly. Uh, I supposed to open a shop on a Sunday night for them to come in to work. And I, f I fell asleep. I didn't wake up on time. When they don't want to come to work, they know how to call my number. But this day, because I fell asleep, they didn't call my number. They all run away. They run away completely from me. And then when I happen is that I woke up, I get there, they're all gone. So I went home, picked up my family, some of my brothers, I picked them up, and we went to Tesco's, and we walked all night long, and we still filled the shop before Sunday morning. So the following day, then my brother started working with me there because of what happened. I employed him to say, this, at least this will not let me down again. So we started working together. And one day, we were on the shop floor, me and my brother, we were talking. And he called me, but that day, not knowing another staff is on the other side of the house. And that one, Mr. Eric, he had him calling me Bodadi. And he come around and say, who is Bodadi? And he looked at me and said, Oga, you are Adi. And this man is speaking Yoruba to you. So you understand Yoruba all this why? And we were crossing <laughs> you. You didn't react. You didn't get angry. You must be a wicked man. And I said, Mr. Man, why should I be wicked? Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. You can cost me from now to tomorrow. Does it diminish my status? Does it affect me? Does it, does it do anything bad to me? No, I don't have to answer you. They all got cold because they panic. But after some few years, they realized this man didn't use this to hurt them. So they were worried about me. And then they said, were you born here? I said, no, I came from Nigeria. I only came about two, three years ago. And you behaving like this. Where are you from? I said, I'm from Abeokuta. I'm Ugu like Obasanjo. And they were shocked. So this is the way I want us to live our life. It's not everything you take to heart. You take good things to heart. Anything that's bad, put it in the bin. And move on. You know, you will have a longer life. Sister, I would like to say a very big thank you to you again for coming on the show today. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that was my wonderful, beautiful sister there. She was with us. Doctor, uh, I'm not going to mention her name because I don't want to pronounce it wrongly. So, <laughs> even though I know how to pronounce it. Well, she educated us. She actually said, Edo is Yoruba. But she's not the only one who would decide that. The Edos will decide where they want to be. Everybody decide where they want to be. We're not going to force anybody to be where they don't want to be. Because where they want to be, where you want to be is what matters. Where you are is what matters. And where you want to be, what you want to do is what you want to do. Nobody's going to force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. I really thank everybody on the panel today. And it's been a wonderful night. Because we've managed to crack so many things tonight. And I really thank everybody that's been part of the show tonight. Including those people that have come and gone. Including the new one that are going to come. Including the new one that just joined, we're moving on now. Let's move on in peace. Let's move on together because togetherness as one is better. It doesn't matter. We can have our differences. Differences, there will always be differences. But when we, how we resolve the differences is what makes us a man. If you cannot manage this kind of a platform, it will be very hard for you to manage your own. Right? But that is not our bone of contention. Our bone of contention is that we want to preach love. Thank you, Mr. Papalala, for agreeing to come back. Because if not for love, you won't come back. You will tell us to bugger off. I don't want to go back because you guys are idiots. That's what you can say to us. But you didn't say that. I just sent, I didn't even beg. I just sent you the link and said, Mr. Papalala, we're waiting for you coming. And uh, because the people that knows how to do their stuff knows how to do their stuff. And there's nothing anybody could do about that. I really want to say a very big thank you to, all, to you guys again. Should we go to from Belo for some time? Frank, educate us. Yes. Are we are we closing down for the day? You want my final no, submission? No, not your final say. This Alimanjiri problem. We know they've always been there. Oh. We know they're there. We know they're there already. We said we're going to have to arrange a number that people can use to report things because that will make life very, very easy for every one of us. Uh, I'm going to send yes. another quote to somebody else that will be coming in. In the meantime, you now, go on and tell us things. 
Yes, I think um, uh, before we the, before the deviation in our our in our topic tonight, we started off with um, what we needed to trash, and I think um, uh, somebody uh, amongst our guests uh, actually did make mention of Islamization that the Fulanis wanted to Islamize Nigeria. Now, I think I want to correct correct that um, that um, statement by that caller because I don't really think Islamization of uh, the southern part of Nigeria was the agenda by the Fulani and the Ruga and the Maeti Allah. No, because the same Maeti Allah and those Fulanese in the north, guys, make no mistakes. They don't even recognize those Muslims down south in Yoruba land. They still see them and they perceive them as the infidels. Don't look, let's get it straight. Fulanese are descendants of the Arabs. So tell me, how do you expect them to carry along Yorubas that are Muslims? They call them infidels. So this is not a matter of or the question of Islamization. It is a question of Fulanization. They want to Fulanize the entire Nigeria because they thought that Nigeria is their God's given country. And that started all the way from their father, Utman Damfodio, that spilled later to Amadu Bello. Who was Amadu Bello? Go check the history of Amadu Bello. Amadu Bello was, was according to the maybe the grandson of Utman Damfodio. And Amadu Bello never made, never, never, never hid his own intention to rule from the Sahara and then bury the Quran in the Atlantic. That was not the Quran he wants to bury. He wants to bury the Holy Quran because they were descendants of the Arabs in our own Atlantic Ocean. That was not about Islam. It was about fulanization. They want to take over the entire Nigeria. It is not about Islam. Now, make no mistakes. Even within the Yorubas, you will find Christians. Don't let us even go to, to Biafra, where there is huge intermarriage between uh, one, one, a man marrying from the from the east and a, a woman from the east marrying from the the southwest. Let us look at our own in Yoruba land. Christians getting married to Islam. A Christian man getting married to an Islam woman. An Islam woman getting married to a Christian man. It is in my family. I was a product of one. I was, I was, I was born into both Christianity, Islam, and traditional religion. Do you want me to discriminate with my father's root, knowing fully well that my grandfather had migrated from Ilori to Akure in Ondo State as an Islamic scholar? Do I want to reject that route that I came from? It is hap it happened. I was a product. I've got brothers who married Christians to Islam. So it is not about Islamization. I will continue to correct that. It is about a Fulani agenda over Nigeria because they want to take over my land in Yoruba land and they want to take over Biafra. And that is where we have them. Let's get it straight. I don't believe that Islamization. They're only using Islam as a cover up. 
they've got a diff it, it's a totally different agenda go back read the history of how they, the first thought they are smart and intelligent people i will agree with femi babalola there they think they are smart but they are smart because they are four percent of the entire population of nigeria the same fulani took over control of all the land that belongs to the houses in the north and the minority the fact that they are the majority and the land owners that is exactly what they want to do to us in the south should we allow them no that's why now in 2020 they are now having to import into nigeria all their bloody alangeries that they refuse to educate from Nigeria public, from Mali, and from all other Fulani, Fulani countries to come in into Nigeria. And now they want to transport them down to both Biafra and Odudua Republic. They're packaging them in cow trucks, 40 foot cow trucks. This is how heartless these Fulanis are. You can now see it is not about Islamization. It is about fulanization. Why are they bringing down those two? Okay, let us assume at this stage that they are not even those Fulanese that they imported from the other countries, Niger, Mali, and the rest of them. Let us assume they are the Almanjuris in their own Northern Caliphate. What, what is my business with their children there? It is their responsibility. Why should they push push them down south? It is not the southern problem. It is not the problem of Biafra Republic. It is not the problem of Ududua Republic. Let them sort their own problem because Biafrans, they looked after their own problem. They looked after their own children. They were only able to provide and then bring to this world the numbers of children that they know they can cater. Let me tell you a little bit of a story to tell you how stupid those people are in the north. I repeat, and I'm not going to I'm not going to retract my statement. They are stupid up in the north. In one of my interactions, which I'm not going to mention the name, with one of the top well order well the line of order in the north, prominent a man walked into his office to tell you how stupid and how unethics and vulgar these people are they're totally different from you and i in the south the man walked into ibb's office i was there i was talking to him as a friend guess what the man's wife died just a few weeks and after burial he wants to marry the junior sister to the wife he doesn't have money and he wants to marry walked in and then only to come you see just ordinary you see ordinary beggar walking into babangida's office that's what they do but people cannot just walk in but ordinary beggar can can do that on the street and then was begging ibb to give him money that he his wife died and that he wants to go and marry the the wife's junior sister you see but ibb thinking very straight then spoke to him in hausa not because i i never i don't understand what they were talking about it was the top man that interpreted this to me after their conversation ibb said do you know exactly what this man was saying the wife died a few weeks ago and now he wants to marry the wife's junior sister he doesn't have money and he wants to give him money to go and marry the wife's junior sister and the next thing ibb asked him said yes if he gives you now to go and marry that woman you see enlightened you see where education play if i give you money to go and marry your wife's junior sister if your wife's junior sister get pregnant after the marriage 
is going to take care of that child or the children you are going to you are going to bring to the world are you going to come back to me to come and give you money that you want to send the child to school so i be rejected and then said no he's not going to give you money that, that money he won't give that if some of his children that the wife left behind wants to go in into school and he he's there to beg him for school fees i will give you but not to give you money to go and marry another woman see that was how i learned my lesson on how these people are so stupid in the north we've got few people as well in the south like that It is prevalent. You see, trucks of Almanjiris roaming the streets with their food pan begging. They know all them governors in the north. They know that we are very sympathetic in the south. They are not sympathetic up there in the north because they don't give a damn about those children. They don't. They know we are sympathetic. Other than the fact that those children. Uh, they've been infected with COVID-19. They are sending them down to us in the South so that they can kill us in our millions. Let's ask ourselves, could this be one of the plans that Bill Gates hatched to tell the whole world that when this pandemic strike, that Nigeria will not be able to cope? Is this the beginning? of that problems those alamanjiri children they're not just coming down south were they coming down south a year two years three years four years ago the way they're now having to come down south my advice now is to all those governors in the south sonwulu You've seen exactly what Wike is doing in River State. Wike is not sleeping. He patrolled River State with the police all night to make sure Almanjiris are not imported in cows, 40 foot trailer cow with humans and animals stuck together. He's patrolling. Fire me, copy Wike. Some will look your advice, benchmark from Wiki now. Well, I trust the Oyo State Governor. I'm not too sure of Ogun State. On those states too, I'm not sure. I'll hand over back to you, studio. Yeah, studio. Am I? Continue, would you like continue, me to carry continue, to continue? Carry on for some time. Oh, you want me to, yes, you want me to fire on. Oh, that's good. Um, oh, I love this. I love this. Now, we now find ourselves, guys, in a situation whereby we've got what somebody described earlier on as self selfish maggots, unless and otherwise. The governor of Lagos and all those governors in Yoruba land who want to be tapped as selfish maggots act now. We don't want Alamanjiris in Yoruba land. All of you in Biafra land, all of you that are sell out to the Fulani government of Nigeria, we're watching you. Our eagle eye is on you. We don't want Alamanjiris in Biafra land, and I mean it. Because if they get into Biafra land, they'll get to Odudua Republic. If they get to Odudua Republic, they will end up in Biafra land. We don't want them. Cross either the River Niger or the River Bedouin. We don't want them. Hold them. Treat them. If they've got COVID-19, your government, your Fulani government, were they given salutatives? 
Satan has never got palliative in COVID-19. Shadia Farouk was giving you a lot of money. They were giving you food in bags. The only thing the Southern has got from Fulani government of Nigeria was ant infested rice and rice, grains that were unfit for human consumption. And now, these people in the North, the Northern leaders, they've got the audacity, I repeat, they've got the audacity to import, to bring in Almanjiris to the South. We don't want that. If you don't want problem, stay. Let your Alamanjiris stay in your north. We don't want them in the south. They are your properties. You fail. Nasiru El Rufai, all of you in the north, you fail to educate them. Awulawa was warning you a lot. You never listen. He told you, those children you never educate today will never let you rest. You fail. 20 years, 1999 to 2019. You should have achieved a lot. Have had you developed the willpower, I repeat, the willpower to educate, not that rubbish and mushroom education that you were given to your children, that you keep on and you kept continuing to advise them, to encourage them, to come in into classroom, that stupid classroom that you all made up just because you want to fit them. And you had the audacity, you budgeted 500 billion naira to fit them. I'll hand over back to you in the studio. Thank you very much for that. Uh, sorry, we have to deal with some few things there quickly. Ola Yomikweki, welcome to the show today again, my wonderful brother. You know what? I'm going to team you and Femi Bapalola together to actually grill one another. I want you to grill Mr. Femi Bapalola a little bit. Uh, that will free me a little bit to do some other things that I was trying to set up for tomorrow. So, Mr. Femi Bapalola and Ola Yomikweki, you're going to take the floor for some time and discuss. And then we'll take it from there. Uh, yes, okay, you people are not putting your name when you sign in. That was making uh, I think I did with mine. Okay, go ahead now. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, my brother, how are you? Good evening, <laughs> like that. Yeah, good evening, uh, you know, Mr. Babalola, and good evening to uh, I've been following. I think we've run almost uh, close to five hours. Uh, of conversation that has been quite heated, quite interesting. And also, uh, I'm sure um, if we continue to all have an open mind, we will eventually arrive at the bus stop. Um, I've been following the, uh, you know, the, the, the comment, and I'll go from one of some of the comments and be able to use that to address Mr. Fembebalala. But the question on the, uh, from what I've been listening to and what I would like to also clarify, I think a um, couple of points were raised uh, from your conversation in terms of uh, the, the language barrier that, uh, you know, a lot of Nigerians probably forgot that also when you travel to Germany, uh, like I have a few friends there, you also have to learn that language before you can also uh, be able to participate and engage in there. I think for benefit of those of us in like United Kingdom, we get away with it, but we also can see that even immigration now says you must partake in an English language uh, before you finalize your document. Mm -hmm. So my question now is, um, as we, as this, uh, you know, imagine or do do that has been a kind of now serious conversation. Do you think that um, those expatriate or those that will be coming to work in nigeria well i mean you know dudua should uh, by the time dudua comes into place would also then have to learn that language uh before they can work and participate in the dudua uh, republic okay that was the question you're trying to ask me thank you for yeah 
uh, this question is very important. This is what I, my feel is this. Uh, my idea and what I believe should happen is this. Not compulsory that you must force people to learn your language. You must adopt my system. You must adopt my system. You must go for integration course. If you don't speak Yoruba language, you must. It must be compulsory. It must be compulsory. We can give you a second chance on if you are in Yoruba territory, eh? if you are in Yoruba territory, we can give you an English job. Okay, that means you have to manage it, at least to help, to help your family. But if you want to have a, a good standard living, then you must learn the Yoruba language, which Yoruba constitution will make it compulsory for you. You must learn our language. Maybe you will do some what we call a mini job, then the other hours you will use to go to school so you can be able to perfect your in your language. Even if you are graduate, you are from US, you are from Cuba, you are from wherever we come from, anywhere you come from in the whole world, you must learn that language. If you don't learn the language, there's never going to be an opportunity for you, my brother. That's my own suggestion. That's what I believe. I must protect my image. I must protect my interests. I must protect my incoming generation. I must protect my heritage. And they wish the all the Yoruba leader must listen to what I'm trying to tell them now. We must make sure that we protect that language. The language is almost gone. And then the constitution of Yoruba will make it for you, will help you to learn the language. There must be a school for that. Even say if you come from Ghana, from Senegal, from Biafra, I don't care, then you must come and learn the language. If I want to go and live in Biafra as well, I must learn the language. If I want to have a better job or better business, doing the air. I must. What is the, yeah. Have you have you have you complete that? Because I have another question yeah. to to ask you. Yeah. The, the question I want to ask is um. As much as a lot of um people are now either waking up or thinking about the Biafra mm -hmm. and the Odidua, what could be the disadvantage of this? There's not going to be too much disadvantage. The disadvantage on it. We're going to have an app. The app, uh, there must be, you know, if we employ you, uh, there must be a translator on the, maybe in an industry, because I'm telling you the truth tonight, Yoruba is going to have what we call a skis, a, 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 what we call industry. Industry is coming seriously, aggressively. And the people will come, the Western world will come as well. They will program their team on, their, on the Yoruba language and everything. So what I'm trying to let people know tonight is this. The, this, 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 there's not going to be too bad or too good. You must, you must, you must try. Maybe I'm answering the question. I don't know, but I hope you understand what I'm going to say. You, I don't want to. I, I'm be diplomat here because I want to make sure, or I believe. Because look, you are in the UK. You are in UK, isn't it? You live in UK. I, I, you, I, I'm very happy that you you live in the United Kingdom. You have a better chance. I'm here in Germany. Before I can set up my business, I must there must be a, a, a percentage of the schools that I must go to before I can register that company. Even I won't have a better chance in Spain. It's not compulsory, but later on in Catalonia, it was compulsory. If you go to French country now, if you don't have a better language, they will tell you. Even in Germany, German will tell you that why do why are you in their country? You must learn their language. So my two, that's what I have been in my mind now. That anybody, if you're about half independent, anybody, either you are British or either you are British Prime Minister, I don't care. Either you are President Trump, you want to come to Nigeria, you will speak your language. Yet yeah, you must translate. If we go to the United Nations, the head of the Yoruba must speak in Yoruba language. And the governor in the parliament, in the, any kind of setup or the police we have, or military, Yoruba language. If you want to have an international relationship with them, then they must learn our language, or they will come, they will come and learn the language. Why, why has this, um, you know, the Odudua and the Biafra, why has it taken so long till now before? Uh, I mean, I know there's a progress, but why has it taken so long? I mean, people were aware that this uh, intermarriage that we my wallet was not working, but what mm. has been the reason behind the the, 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 the prolong of this, you know, uh, uh, you know, nail bat of uh, the Odudua and the Biafra? Because uh, the, the generation that are waking up now, 
uh, are probably losing it, but there are still some generation they are thinking, well, I think uh, you know it's a cause that we must bring to reality. I've listened to Inam Dekano, I've listened to um, uh, you know so many other, I mean, Adeinka grandson, I've listened to uh, the other people that are agitating in different forms and ways, but why has it taken so long uh, you know, since the, 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 the time of uh, up to now, before this push, what has been the reason behind it? Because uh, we've had in the kind of kept saying uh, it could be the media, but I'm sure there must be something holding it up to this time. Can you tell us what you understand? Why has it taken so long till now? The, the only what I can say here is why it takes so long. I can talk about Yoruba. I don't know much about the behalf. I don't know. So the Yoruba are just, uh, the you know, Yoruba don't work on, the, they, they work on ideas and the strategy on the ground to be able to achieve what they want to work. They cannot, the Yoruba people don't just fight like that. They fight uh, on the ground, you know. So I believe that the right time is now. And then the, 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 the time is now because, uh, Maybe before, what I suggest is, what I'm thinking before is that maybe there is a problem somewhere. I think that maybe they have already solved the problem. Maybe it is because of the divides, division in, among of the leaders, among of the Yoruba leader. I think now they are all come together. And I wish I would see, uh, advise some of our headers, some of the other organizations in Yoruba land to come together as one block so this thing can come fast and fast and more than even what I people even expected in the Yoruba land. So that's what I would just say. I don't want to talk much about the, the, the Biafra. I don't know anything about Biafra. I know much about the Yoruba. That's what I would say here. The reason why I ask that is, um, as we all know, there's a lot of stakeholder in the country at the moment. And when I mean yeah. stakeholder, not just uh, you know, Nigerians in the country, who we also know that we have a lot of foreign interest in Nigeria. Yeah. Are we yeah. really going to say uh, you know the birth of this new nation. That's number one. Yeah. Exactly. With this, well, I'll, I'll let you answer that. Are these external people that are interest and they have always been interest in the situation that we are facing and the country right. at the moment? Are they going to allow this to work? Well, it will work for their own good. It's going to work for their own good, for our own good as well. We need to work together for their own interests. We, we cannot just tell them because we, that is what we want. That's why I'm saying, saying that we should continue on our language, on Yoruba language for the United Nations, the people that really want to make this thing to happen, that they, these people really believe in their heritage. They have come back to their senses because we have lost it before and then wish we have to protect it because if we don't protect it, for sure, our, our secret is going to be exposed again that Yoruba, who are those people who English, what is English? England, where is they are still under the British colonization, okay? But but I'm a Yoruba man. I've got my independent, okay? So that is my belief that uh, I believe that uh, these people that in Nigeria, either you are German, you are this, you are that, then we have to adopt you. You have to believe our own constitution. We have to believe in the, what we believe. If you don't believe it, then from there you can find other way to, you can find other place to go to. That is it. Like in Germany here or in Spain, if you want to bring company, they must follow. You must follow the protocol, the protocol, the system, the ideas, the system, the system. The system is the one that will detect if you want to work with us or not. That is it. If you like the system, you stay. If you don't like the system, you go. It's not by by force. Going back to the um, the mm -hmm. Algeria that are uh, uh, moving uh, at this very difficult time because uh, you know the coronavirus. Um, is a very uh, bouchy. There's a lot of, um, you know, also so many uh, reports coming out through the wire that, you know, over 100 people have been buried. Uh, you know, we don't know the cause of it, but we do know that there's coronavirus already around mm. the whole of the country, almost all the states. Mm. But mm. one of the speakers during the conversation said, I mean, these people have been, I mean, they've been coming into the country, I mean, into each of these regions without anyone mm. looking to it. Also, some of them might not be the real Alimajiri and there might be another reason for it. Why is it that um, measures were not put in place <laughs> in time, uh, you know, to curb this? Why now are we overreacting? Like I said earlier, uh, do, are we overreacting because um, we've seen 
the coronavirus or we are seeing beyond the coronavirus either they are bringing the coronavirus or they have another agenda uh, because uh, I, and I'll give you an example in a local government like um, you know a Limosho local government there's quite a lot of um, you know the people uh, you know majority of people from the northern part of the country uh, but it seems now that so many people are skeptical that maybe they are not the real Ausa, they are Fulani. What is the main thing that we should be worried about with this kind of, you know, uh, you know, exodus of movement of people? What is something that we should be worried about? Um, thank you, Mr. Quick. I've told people before, and I will say tonight again, I think I've discussed a lot of things with you before. Uh, and uh, I've said here on the media that what is going to happen in Nigeria is going to be surprised with my own, uh, what I try to analyze. The COVID-19 is there for sure, but one thing is this, there's foul game going on, okay? There's foul game going on there. Uh, those people really, there's two things could happen in Nigeria. One is this, it could be a clash, okay? Number two, those people that are coming into this country, they are coming from southwest, they are coming to the east or wherever where they go to now, they are missionary, okay? They are missionary for a mission, okay? Which I believe 99%, 99% of a mission, which the Yoruba people, I will talk about the Yoruba people have to be very alert and they have to be very careful, which I will call, they use this media to call the governor to protect their territory, to protect all their farmers, because let me tell you the truth, the Fulani operate through farms. They have their machinery in the farms. The Yoruba people in the farm as well should protect their farm as well. Who are those people inside this forest? Who are those people in the around the corner, in the place that you're hidden people, that place that uh, 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 there's not too much car going on there, okay? The Yoruba people should be prepared to protect their territory, okay? To protect their territory. Our most important for me today is the Yoruba people should protect their territory. That's what I would just say here, you know? And again, in COVID-19 as well, anything that the governor can be able to do to the Yoruba people as well, please try and do that. And then uh, uh, the people in the diaspora as well, please try to make sure that uh, you uh, help. We, we will try our best to be able to help because here too, it's not easy for us. But one thing is, is I will still go back to that point again. I've said it before and I will say it again. The Yoruba people should protect their authority. Protect all your border. The border that go to Kutonu, Idiroko, the border that come from the, from the other side of the uh, uh, Jibu area, protect it as well. The other border that enter Yoruba and protect your forest. Protect Ore Ibadan Road. Eh? Protect, the, ne, 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 protect the Kogi forest between Ekiti State. You have to protect as well your, what you call it, the, the Kwara area. You must protect all this area. Okay, if you want one of you more uh, a very good snap picture. Well, I'm going to do that. I will, uh, but I'm on the social media. I want. I can. If you have a resource, we'll give them. These people, they have nothing. Their their brain is empty. We know the people behind it. I'm not afraid to say we know it. We know the Western world that's trying to back them up, but they will fail. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm proud to be a Yoruba man. I, I'm proud to be a Yoruba. This is a time of civilization we're into now. We will give them, our uh, people home, how, what is going on on the territory. We will tell them, this is what is going to happen, this is where they are. And then they will go there, they will meet and they will flush them up. So they are, a, they, they, they are coming in for a mission. A mission. This is not about just COVID-19 alone. They are coming in for a mission, which Yoruba people have to be very, very, very careful. Governor Inwosu is very good. The governor of River State, uh, the name, is very, is, very, is very intelligent. Maybe he's watching some of my video. Maybe he's watching some of my posts. Maybe someone giving me information. You know, please, uh, the Yoruba people as well should be very, very, very careful to protect their territory. They, they, they want to collect Lagos. They want to take Lagos from us by force, by fire. But one thing is this, the Yoruba people should protect their territory. The Yoruba I'm talking about here, protect your territory. The diaspora um, seems to be the one, uh, you know, I mean, they feel that quite a lot of Nigerians are told as well, uh, you know, doing the talk and doing the work. But it seems the diaspora are more involved in these, um, you know, the, the, the reality of bringing these two new nations. Um, could it be because a lot of them have traveled, they've been able to see the experience and uh, what they're, they've been able to enjoy outside the country? 
or is it because um, they are not in Nigeria and they have more say uh, as um, one of the bloggers, uh, I will get the name in just about a minute, I've just been told uh, was picked up by the DSS. Could it be that, uh, you know, so many Nigerians outside uh, using the opportunity of being outside the country to come online, uh, you know, and say as much as this uh, conversation, maybe they might not be able to say that back in Nigeria. Uh, so is the role of the diaspora very key in this uh, battle of this two new, two new nation? Yeah, the role in diaspora is very key. I know much about I know much about Yoruba, the Yoruba. What I know about it, what I will talk about here, the Yoruba people in diaspora should come together and trying to make this to happen. And then, how can we build the people down home there to be able to more involved? Then the strategy we can work it on the ground and it's going to come to reality. Yeah. What? What? Before Before I go back to to the studio, uh, one more question to you is. Um, how, what kind of currency are we going to have? Uh, because if we're going to have a new nation, uh, we definitely will be engaging with a lot. I know, uh, you know, the, I mean, these are just some of the thoughts uh, at the back of the mind. If we're not going to be spending the Naira, um, what are we going to be spending? Yeah, it depends on the it depends on the, the uh, leaders that uh, on the process is going on and uh, when the process uh, is going on to where we finish the process by if they, if they finish the process by the grace of god everybody will know the currency we are going to use as well last one how do we split the debt that we are in at the moment uh as a country by the time mm. uh these two nations birth into another uh one what I believe in that era is that uh, if the country holds the debt and they split, for sure, there must be a diplomacy game there. There must be play out for people to, for them to be able to agree on one thing and other. So that is it. Who are those people that put the debt there? So what do they have? What is the agreement? They have to review all these. Uh, they are, they, this, all this thing must be reviewed. So they, maybe the, who are those people that will hold them accountable for them to face the, 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 the panel on the, how uh, are they going to settle all these uh, debt they put on the on the on the on the maybe in nigeria or whoever that uh, they're going to call them later yeah okay uh mr ade thomas i'm gonna send you a picture um through the whatsapp in a minute and this was one community that um uh, during that election last year um i i stumbled through that uh community uh, during one of the polling units, and I was surprised. Um, this, I mean, I don't speak Kausa, but this particular uh, family that have settled into that community, uh, uh, you know, it's very difficult to indicate whether they are Fulani or they are the northern part of the country. But uh, some of the questions I put to them is whether they've even engaged in any kind of voting. You know, as that day, this was the governorship election, though. Uh, in 2020, I'm just looking at the picture in front of me, and I hope we can be able to get that picture by the time I send it to the studio. But we have clusters of these uh, people across the country, I mean, across the southern part of the country. And when I stumbled about uh, across them, I asked a few questions. Uh, it wasn't interested in my conversation, but how did we get to where we have so many of them around each of the southern part of the country they are not living in the city we have left the village for them while we are looking mm -hmm. for opportunity outside uh, lagos or within the other part of the city but they have kept themselves uh, in a very remote rural area uh mr Babala, just last one on that what could be something behind people wants to live in that kind of setting knowing that uh, you know life there might be very difficult but yet i don't know how long he's been there but you can tell that um you know he's got family there already and by the time you know they will grow into that community and um we might not really know their identity okay this is it uh in the last election i think i remember uh, i said this to public that uh, we don't have a country calling nigeria any country in the whole world they, can, they don't have a system what i know i'm not talking about database a system a value system that can detect 
how many people will live in each community, the local government chairman are the people that we have to hold accountable for this because Nigeria don't have a value system. A system, we don't even know how many population we have. We don't know how many children was born yesterday. We don't, how many, we don't know how many children was born to this night. The local government chairman or minister of education or this people, they don't even know how many people eh, are going to school, how many people have job, how many Alamangari coming in and through our border. We cannot control it. There is no value system. Any country in the whole world that cannot have a value system, it cannot function. So Nigeria is not functioning. Okay, the colonial master came, the British, they put all these things in place, but later on, they destroyed for their own selfish interest. There is the mystic somewhere. There is a big mystic somewhere. Can we still ratify the mystic now? No, it's too late. The only solution is this, Yoruba must go. Yoruba must go out of Nigeria, so then Yoruba can do their own system and control what they believe that is going to favor them for their own future and protect the incoming generation lives. You live in UK, for God's sake, my brother. You, the house you are living, the, the Nepal people know how much point you have in your house. They know how much water you use. Eh? They know everything you are doing. So in Nigeria, do we have this? So we don't have a country. I don't, we, we, we don't have a country calling Nigeria, for Christ, for God's sake. We don't have. So something is missing somewhere. What do, what, this is a good question you ask me that, how come, how, how do we reach this point? Because these people there, they don't know what is, they, 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 I can I put, they don't, they, they, they don't understand. They don't understand the me between w w what is the president, what is the court of the president. The president, I think they have eight court of the president. You, what you must do, the government as well. They don't understand the portfolio what they have in in their hand. And the Fulani, they are still they still have the the what we call the 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 the, the, the mentality of the the Bellamy of Sudan. Then that holds entirely some of the. Uh, Africa then okay some of them are still there and then they are still having their game going on the ground who are those people backing them up is it not from the west they are backing them up and the people from Saudi Arabia and Turkish people go to Sephora state and see what happened then when governor Yare was there see what governor Yare see what they do to one man the Sephora state they destroy all the refinery we know all lot of things that I cannot say here but what I just believe that my own now my focus now my belief now is Yoruba must come to reality the Yoruba, and I beg the people in the everywhere in the whole world, if you are Yoruba man, please let's come together, forget about past, maybe this person is good, this person is not good, maybe one king is good, maybe one king is not good, maybe you are you are Afeni Ferry, or you are Yoruba World Congress, let's, one voice, one voice can make us to achieve what we want as early as possible. With the Edo have to learn Yoruba, yeah, I, maybe the uh, Edo people, they are Yoruba. We love them. They are very nice people. Okay, they are very nice people. There's no place we are going to put them where the, the, the that's what I'm trying to say before. I, I've said to one of my sister there before that uh, in, in Canada, they have a, the, 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 in Canada, they, in Canada, they, they speak a uh, true language in Canada. And it's a Canadian, they, they, they are Canadians. Okay. In the, in Cameroon, they have bilingual country. They, they, they are bilingual. They speak uh, some of the parts of French area and then they said so we live together we live together we know how to how we're going to solve the problem the problem out we can easily solve it out because it, it, it's just our family they are our family they are brother they are our sister you know and a lot of Edo people marry yoruba people a lot of the you know, the yoruba people marry Edo's. we they are our family they are our family anybody that want to be part of our family and wish not ever not everybody that want to be part of our family they are our family they are kingdom they are they, they, they are kingdom it seems that the nigerian government don't understand the meaning of kingdom Kingdom is just like a nation that the government have already abused. They abuse Bene people. They took them mm -hmm. for granted. They took them for granted. They took a do state for granted for God's sake. A kingdom for God's sake. A kingdom like what we are saying in England. Just like England. Just like Omar. Just like a Marseille. Okay. The, the Nigerian government took a do people for granted for God's sake. They should give them a break. Okay. So if they want to go if they want they can be a nation as well because we have a, a country in america that they, they are not up to one thousand one, one million people and they, they are they are nation of their own as well wow well i've sent the video to you uh back in the studio there and that particular uh polling unit was well uh good afternoon right now is about 12 or five minutes past the hours of 12 p.m as nigerians around the country continue to engage in the governorship election that is happening in almost 29 states. 
We've just arrived at another polling unit as we are moving around the state uh, where we are bringing the 2019 governorship uh, special broadcast right here from Abelkuta in Ogun State. Uh, this will be you know, almost the ninth or the eighth unit that we have been visiting. And this particular one is Ward 09, Unit 004 at Kimbiye, right here in Abelkuta. Uh, very peaceful as well. Zero, 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 005, uh, pardon me there, you know, zero, zero, 005, I've been told. And also, uh, just as we left, uh, you know, the zero, zero, 004, which I think, uh, you know, the uh, is not too far away from each other. Very peaceful, I'm told. Uh, Okay, that was that video we've just watched from Uncle yeah, The Alaya second one, Queen. I think I will be ready, but let me quickly explain what is happening at this particular polling unit. Um, this okay. polling unit, I've mentioned it a few times when I was on the yeah. on air. Uh, this particular polling unit indicated that almost everyone there is uh, is on one direction because uh, corruption was already taking place by the time we got there. Uh, but one thing is um, uh, we have a lot of... Uh, issues at hand uh, i mean i've had engineer panuga said election i think you asked me whether election will, will ever be 100 percent free uh but from what i witnessed uh at almost 11 polling unit i visited at that election i could say that we will have a very very long time if we believe that election will be free and fair in nigeria i wanted to play the second one because that second one will really show uh you know that okay. particular yeah can I can I say something there? Yeah, the the INEC the INEC have committed a lot of big either Nadeko INEC. They have told with Nigeria lives. They make Nigeria life miserable. They destroy Nigeria. I bet you, if happened that maybe Nigeria one of these days or maybe second maybe or uh, maybe I'm talking about let, let me talk about maybe uh, perhaps. Uh, we are going to reconcile with Nigeria, not for independent, or maybe I'm talking about plan three or four here. If happened that I became a Nigeria president, all the INEC chairman must go to jail. At least give them all, at least 100 years imprisonment because we don't need a voter's card in Nigeria. We don't need voter's card in Nigeria. No vote, we don't need voter's card in Nigeria. Even the PVC is the second, is, is, is to be opposed the it should it should be it should be the it should be the what we call a number one but as we don't they don't have pvc they don't have a control system in nigeria if we have a control system in nigeria we have our national id card we have everything control you know it's, it's easily for you know how you live in london they will post you a letter you have to choose the person you want to vote for even the politician cannot have access to you you know you are the one that will say okay this is the person i'm going to vote for you can easily go to post office and vote or in the day of election, they don't know who are you voting for. These people, they don't have something in their brain. I don't know where they get it from. I have said before, they are sick. They have mental problem. Mental problem. They, they need to go back to psychiatric hospital. So that is why we cannot be together with these people because they are playing, they, they have made a lot of Nigeria life miserable, which we need to get away from there. We need to get away from there because we cannot work together. It will not work. If it's 100 years, we'll still continue because the mindset of people now, some of the politicians in Nigeria believe, some of the community, some of the, 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 the war leader believe, or in, what I mean by war leader is this, what, what, your war shaman, state shaman, believe the time of election, that's the time they are going to make their money. If you don't give their money, if you don't give money for, if you don't give them money as a candidate, they will not, you know, campaign for you. They will not do this for you. Even in the night, they will just come, hey, well, hello, we, please give us money. We will have to go and see, uh, see our people, buy them torchlight, give you 10 million era. For torchlight, you have to go and knock their door, go to super person. If you say the time of election day, you will see them, they will say, okay, look, we have to settle the people that will be in the polling vote. That is nonsense. That is, uh, a, 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 that is a corruption. A corruption, you know, understand me? So Nigeria cannot work. Even if anybody that came from diaspora that I want to go and be Nigeria president, let me tell you something, they will make everything, for, they will frustrate the person's life. They will frustrate the person's life. Even if Papa will not wake up today, he want to come and rule Nigeria. As for today, eh, it will not work.
Mm. It will not work. And then see what happened in 2020 election. The election has already voted. They have already they have already voted. They have already voted the, the, the thing already. They just bring it to the share it to the all the software. The one that you people voted, they just tear everything and destroy it. I show you something there. I show you, I, I told you that I, we are control, we, we monitor everything that time. I told you, you know, even say I went to our party office, I showed my, my, my national chairman, so my national chairman was shocked. They, who, who are you, Mr. Bola? I showed them everything, all the plan, all where they go to vote, everything. I showed them to I showed it to them. And they were surprised. Oh, who are you? I said, don't worry, sir. We are just, I'm just here to be able to, you know, try my own best. But if they don't want, then let's do what, you know? Okay. Can I play the if video them, now? Then, then I'll take it away from yes, you. Yes, go, go ahead, please. I want us to watch that second video because that second video is very, very important. And this is part of what the community uh, right here in Akimbi in Abelkuta of the state. Today is the night of uh, March 2019. And as you can see, you know, a community where, you know, they're having, you know, maybe not the city life, but they have, you know, their own lifestyle and they are enjoying the lifestyle. Uh, but one thing is, uh, you know, we all have a role to play to make this country a better place. Uh, there are Nigerians from every part of the 36th state that are going out to cast their vote to who becomes the next governor. Uh, this community, I've been told, uh, have also casted their vote. Uh, and also, uh, as you can see, you know, still, you know, the culture that we talk about. We also look at the, you know, the authenticity of this, you know, calm environment where Nigerians uh, continue, you know, to live peacefully, uh, you know, from every part of the country. Once again, my name is Ola Yomi Koiki, reporting from Akimbi, right here. In oh, okay. Yeah. Back with uh, you. I, I, I say, uh, you know, I told you before. Uh, we, we, when you talk about the 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 Fulani people, the Almangi, they are bringing to the mm -hmm. southwest now to everywhere. I've told you that the Yoruba people should control their territory. I've told you people that Yoruba should control their territory. Hello. I can hear you. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I've told you before that your people should control. Your people should control their territory. In the the Fulani, they are in, in the, the, the they operate from the farm. They have farm. Even say if they want to keep all Nigeria today, they are in the farm already. You saw those farm you are looking at now. They have agenda. They have agenda in the. They, it's not only in Ogun State. They are everywhere. They are everywhere, everywhere. I, I've said before, maybe Mr. Frambilo can remember what I'm trying to say here. They are everywhere. They are in everywhere, everywhere. They are in everywhere. I, what I will just say here that my Yoruba people should try and protect themselves. They should use the Amatekun if they can use Amatekun. If they cannot use Amatekun, they should form a committee by themselves in their each community and then try to protect their own, to, 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 to protect their self. Because what is coming, what I can analyze, what is coming here is beyond what we people are saying here. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much for that. that. Uh, Mr. Lamb, okay, okay. Let me take it away from you quickly. Yeah? Um, yeah. I have a gentleman online who wants to contribute a little bit to what we've been talking about. I'm not sure if he's still there or whether he can hear me. Go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Oh, I kept him very long, so he's probably away. Go ahead, sir. Sadikule, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, my name is Sadikule. Uh, I would like to contribute uh, quickly, and I'll be very brief. Firstly, I want to talk about the economy, the type of economy that uh, Odudua Republic... Odudua should run, adopt three types of currency at the same time, three types of uh, legal tender. I believe Odudua should adopt uh, the gold standard, which is practiced by countries like UAE in the world. And if we, if we practice the gold standard, that our currency is backed by gold, that means that every gold um, um, mined in, in, the, in the West African region will have to be traded in in, 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 in Odudua mm -hmm. Republic and that will make us very, very uh, put us in a strong economic position. 
Then we can also run a, a fiat and a currency as well, which is backed mm -hmm. by gold. Uh, the world is moving towards a cryptocurrency. It will be very, very, it will be a very strong point for Oduduwa Republic to equally adopt their own uh, uh, cryptocurrency. And the three currencies can be used side by side. That is one about economy. About security with the present situation and the present threats that we have now, we have youths. Mm. We have youths, we have adults, we have farmers, we have hunters. The security, as I speak now, the security in Oduduwa Republic, in Oduduwa land, in Yoruba land, should no longer be trusted with the Nigerian yeah. security apparatus anymore, right from now. What I'm trying to say is that in towns, in villages, in cities, our youth should take up the responsibility of a watchdog to watch over mm -hmm. their entry and exit roads, to watch over every public gathering place, to watch over every street, every ward, every local government. And if they see anything suspicious, any trailer, funny looking trailer carrying these mercenaries, because those guys are not Alemanjir. I don't believe they are Alemanjiris. Those guys are mercenaries no. and they've been sent well, yeah, to come and cause an havoc in Yoruba, in Yoruba land. The youth can send them packing. If the youth comes out en masse, like 200, 300, 1,000, 500, 5,000, I don't think the Nigerian police can arrest all of them. After all, they are only protecting their land. Nigeria, because Nigeria is dead. Nigeria is no longer functioning. Even the authority, we don't even know who is giving orders in Aso Rock anymore. So, the youth in Yoruba land should come out now and start taking the responsibility of the security of their land now. It's highly important. The youths, the hunters, the farmers, the citizens, there's something we call citizens arrest. We have the responsibility. We can, mm. we have, we can, that, this can be deployed. Um, about the voting, I will come, come down the voting. I will, I will end it on the voting. The voting system, technology has made life easier. We, there mm -hmm. are so many technological uh, systems of voting that can be adopted. For instance, there is e-voting. Now, because of coronavirus, mm -hmm. MPs are now voting right from their bedroom. Mm -hmm. On In the UK, MPs are voting. They are, they are, they are giving their contribution via the uh, video link. So, mm -hmm. e-voting is an easy way that if it's adopted, it will make life, e electoral process will make it very easy. Number one, it will be verifiable. The result will be instant within nanoseconds. The result is available, and the server there's not mm. nothing like somebody is looking for server. This <laughs> result will be in every server that is connected mm -hmm. to it. Okay, we're Easier. gonna take that one away from you quickly because thank I you very much. Let me thank you very much. Let me good job in analyzing things. Can I say something? Let me quickly. Uh, one second, yeah. Uh, Steve Osage, uh, will uh, you please inbox me, please, Steve Osage? Inbox me as soon as you can. I need to have a word with you urgently. It's very, very can important. I, if you're please, still on board, Mr. Wasage, please inbox me as a matter of urgency. Or I think inbox me will be better. I've actually sent you a friend request as well. Please uh, respond to it and inbox me as soon as possible. I need to have a word with you, sir. Thank you very much. Give it back to you guys. Who is... Okay. Yeah, let me quickly give us, uh, before I take it back to Mr. Frank Bello, this is part of the conversation tonight. Uh, this I'm just uh, picking up from panel. On though Federal Road Safety Intercept Truck Conveying 13 Youth. And it goes like this. The Ondo State Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps on Saturday today said it intercepted a truck conveying no fewer than 13 people of northern extraction. The visitors were hiding in the midst of goods in a truck entering the state capital before they were intercepted at Futa Junction, the FRS, he said. 
according to Mr. Oloshegun and, and signed by the state command, the sector commander, Mr. Rotimi Adelaye, in a statement, Adelaye explained that the patrol team of the command who promptly responded to call of a sensitive member of the public, which our last caller was just telling us now, uh, that the member of the public will have to also be playing a role now, intercepted the vehicle at Southgate Junction of the Federal University of Technology Akure on Saturday today. The statement reads, in part, today, Saturday, the patrol team intercepted a truck conveying about 13 male youth from outside the state into Akure, the capital of Ondo State. I will hand over now back to Mr. Frank in the studio. Frank Bello, they have hand over back to you now. I'm sure you're very happy. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is part of what um, I have been saying. We've got a situation in our hands at the moment that um, the COVID-19 pandemic is biting hard and we've seen situations whereby Northern governors are now incapacitated and they are unable to cater for their own citizens, their own people. Now, classic example today, I've just made it known a few minutes ago that the Undo State Governor and the rest of the governors in the Southwest must have to emulate Governor Wiki of River State, who does not tolerate sense. 